when a level 9 technological civilization encounters the legendary cultivation civilization, which side will be more powerful? You can fly on swords and teleport instantly. I can pilot a stellar warship to perform black hole jumps. You can transmit voices over thousands of miles. I have radar. You can summon apocalyptic thunder to annihilate the heavens. I have two-dimensional foil for dimensional strikes. I always thought all fear stemmed from insufficient firepower. Until this day, when I met a legendary gold core cultivator, and I was a captain of a cosmic warship. On a mission in space, I was swallowed by a black hole and accidentally arrived at an unknown mysterious planet. As long as there is no hostile civilization above level 3 on this planet, this warship would be enough to ensure my safety. After thinking for a bit, I said to the AI spring of the warship, we now need to set five goals, the ultimate goal is to return to the Federation home planet, the long-term goal is to fully repair the damaged Shiha warship, and the current short-term goal is to initially explore this world to find suitable energy sources. Okay captain, I've incorporated the corresponding goals into the schedule. At this time, I suddenly heard the voice warning from the vehicle AI. The thermal radar detected several humanoid organisms, 1,217 meters southeast. Hearing this, I immediately became spirited and quickly maneuvered the Chilin tank forward at full speed. Finally found people, if I couldn't find anyone for a while, I might have become an interstellar version of Robinson Crusoe, growing old alone in a desolate world. At this moment, in the vast mountains shrouded in night, an injured teenager was running at full strength. Even at his last gasp, he didn't dare stop for a moment. Behind him were three women in green dresses holding long swords, with glowing talismans on their boots. Lu Chengfeng, what treasures did you obtain in the secret realm? Surrender them to me now and I may spare your life. The teenager named Lu Chengfeng gritted his teeth and was not beguiled by her words. He quickly maneuvered through the obstacles between the woods. Soon a fierce fireball appeared and blasted the teenager away, smashing several trees before barely stopping. The three women quickly came up to the teenager. Lu Chengfeng, why struggle? Quickly undo the inner realm's forbidden art, and we will certainly not kill you. Lu Chengfeng spit disdainfully, young master Nan, I risked my life to save you in the secret realm. Just because I gained the inheritance, and now you want to kill me and seize the treasure? Miss, why bother speaking with him? A woman beside raised her sword to kill him, let's just grab the ring first. Facing the sword, the teenager didn't show any intention of dodging. If he killed Nan Gong Ziyun now, it meant an endless vendetta with the Nan Gong family. While he was still weak, provoking a force with a gold core cultivator was something he didn't want happening. But now Nan Gong Ziyun clearly wouldn't give him a chance anymore. Was he really going to use Han Lao's power? At this moment, the residual soul in Lu Chengfeng's mind suddenly spoke. Chengfeng, don't be impatient. If it comes to utter deadlock, I will make a move. But there is still a chance today. Sure enough, just as the residual soul finished speaking, Nan Gong Ziyun kicked Lu Chengfeng away and turned to look warily towards the depths of the forest. A blue orb was rolling towards the three with irresistible momentum. It was the ion shield of the Qilin tank. Spirit armor. The surging spiritual energy made it impossible to see inside. A hint of surprise flashed across Nan Gong Ziyun's face. The newcomer was at least a late gold core cultivator. Quickly contact father, a woman took out a jade talisman and crushed it directly. Junior Lu Changfeng, please help this junior. The teenager grabbed the last hope and shouted loudly. A woman stood in front of Lu Changfeng and said, Senior, this is a family affair of our Nangong family. Please watch from the sidelines and do not intervene. At this moment in the cockpit, I am extremely astonished. They are also speaking the Federation language. What a coincidence. Yes, according to research, their language is an early ancient form of the Federation language. The pronunciation and structure are slightly different from modern speech. I nod my head. To communicate with them, I need to think this through carefully. Soon a script is transmitted to my helmet. It has been compiled for you, Captain. Just read it aloud. I turn on the tank's loudspeaker system. The high-quality speakers made by the Federation's advanced civilization broadcast my voice. With extremely low distortion, to the four people outside, it sounds like the voice of this golden core cultivator booms like a bell, full of imposing manner. Why are you fighting here? The lead woman quickly says, this lowly one is Nangong Ziyun, the legitimate first daughter of the Nangong family master. I am under orders to pursue and kill the traitorous rebel who betrayed our family. I ask that senior does not shelter this lowly servant. Seeing this, the young man is determined. Since you've pursued me this far, I won't let you easily obtain your goal. Senior, in my bangle is an inherited treasure. They want to kill me and seize it. Hearing this, I frown slightly. 
One side says they are pursuing a traitor. The other claims they are coveted for a treasure. This doesn't seem right. Who is trying to deceive me? After brief consideration, I shake my head. Since this is the case, I won't interfere. I just arrived in this world. And I don't want to get involved in any trouble. Killing for treasure is normal. Nangong Ziyun's eyes constrict. She didn't expect Lu Changfeng to directly reveal his inherited treasure. If she allowed this mysterious golden core cultivator to leave just like that, news that the Nangong family has an inherited treasure would likely spread across Qingzhou's southern region by tomorrow. The innocent Nangong family would completely fall and become fish meat on the chopping block, carved up by powerful families. Nangong Ziyun knows the situation cannot be peacefully resolved. The most urgent task is to delay this golden core cultivator. Wait until her father arrives. Her father is at the peak of golden core realm. Killing someone to silence them would be easy as flipping his hand. Here is not far from the Nangong residence. If her father rushes over at full speed, it would only take 50 minutes. So Nandong Ziyun shouts, Senior, you cannot leave. The three of them simultaneously throw out red talismans, flying towards the Kirin tank's shield. Three huge fireballs immediately explode. The ion shield ripples and dims slightly. Seeing this, Lu Chengfeng shouts loudly, Senior, beware, they are stalling for time. Nandong Xiao, the Nandong family master, is already on his way. He is at Golden Core Peak. What is the combat power of a Golden Core cultivator in this fantasy world? Spring sorts through the massive data of fantasy novels. In different fantasy stories, Golden Core Realm has varying standards of strength. But overall, they are very tricky existences. In theory, the Kirin's main cannon can threaten Golden Core cultivators, but they have extremely high mobility. The Kirin was created to engage armored targets. Fighting Golden Cores may put it at a disadvantage. After listening to Spring's analysis, my expression suddenly turns cold. As someone from the Federation Special Forces, I naturally do not have the merciful heart of a bodhisattva. Since they dared attack me, then it's life or death. Don't blame my ruthlessness. The electromagnetic cannons on both sides let out a humming buzz as the deadly metal fleshettes interweave. One of the women fails to dodge in time and is struck by a series of metal fleshettes. She immediately collapses to the ground, granted an infant's sleep. Seeing this, I can't help but click my tongue. 21. For caliber machine guns. Ordinary infantry without powered exoskeletons, if hit by one shot, would likely be cut in half at the waist. But this world's people can still remain in one piece. As expected, the human physique in a cultivation world is extraordinary. Nangong Ziyun, the leader, is the first to sense the danger and quickly dodges. But her arm is still grazed by a flechette. She thinks, what kind of magic artifact is this? Its power is actually so great. Nangong Ziyun is extremely shocked. The other woman steps forward and activates a yellow talisman. On the ground in front of her, a ring of thick earth walls rise up, protecting the two inside. Elder sister, hold on. Father will arrive soon. I notice that Lu Chengfeng has somehow circled around to the back of the tank unseen. He has already escaped from the battle area. In theory, being pursued for a treasure means he is likely the protagonist template. As long as this protagonist is not surnamed Tang, then he should be the type who is grateful, righteous, and acts heroically. He won't do shameless things. I look at the earthen walls rising from nothing and the corners of my mouth quirk up slightly. A fantasy version of cover. Young ladies, guess what Federation tanks are designed to deal with? Armor-piercing high-explosive round loaded. The 182mm plasma main gun lights up, accompanied by a sharp sonic boom. The thick earthen wall is directly penetrated by the Kirin tank's shell. A cloud of flying dust is stirred up. The shell that penetrated the wall explodes with a rumble. Countless fragments and molten metal splatter in all directions like a torrential downpour. A battered figure is blasted away, precisely Nangong Ziyun. At this moment her whole body is scorched black. If not for barely blocking the blow with a magic artifact, she would likely be dead already. Hidden behind the ion shield, Lu Chengfeng is secretly shocked. So this is the power of a golden core cultivator? The three who had desperately pursued him, in just two exchanges, two are dead and one crippled. It seems Elder Han was right. Without reaching Golden Core Realm, one is ultimately just an ordinary mortal. At this moment, a flash of purple light flashed in the sky. You dare harm my daughter and bully my Nangong family like we're nothing? A middle-aged man descends on a flying sword, his body glowing with purple energy shields, flying down from the air. A true peak late-stage Golden Core expert has arrived. Ha ha ha, a Golden Core is here. Seeing that arrogant man flying in the sky on the monitor, I'm suddenly furious. Karen, turn your damned cannon on him and shoot him down. 
The electromagnetic cannons immediately adjust their angle. Dense metal flechettes pour towards Nangong Sha like a tide. The previously unstoppable machine guns this time have met their match. Countless metal flechettes slam into the man's energy shield, only to incredibly be stopped in place, suspended on the shield's outer layer. I'm shocked. Is this guy even human? Cold sweat breaks out on my forehead. This spiritual energy shield is comparable to tank armor. Captain, after assessment, this world's golden cores are medium-high tier among fantasy novels. But based on his tone, he is arrogant and conceited. He doesn't understand tanks and may not take the initiative to leverage his mobility advantage. This is our chance. I'm left speechless. If golden cores are this strong, wouldn't primordial infants be punching tanks left and right? In ancient societies without spiritual or technological power, foundation establishment breaks armies, golden core massacres cities, primordial infant conquers nations. Carefully answering, the AI robot spring says, Next, the man in the air descends to the ground and hands the injured daughter some elixir. Then he looks towards the Kirin tank's ion shield, narrowing his eyes slightly as he sees through it to the tank itself. This magic artifact he has never seen before makes him wary. This lowly one is Nangong Xiao, head of the Nangong family. I don't want conflict with you. If you let me take that boy away, I can represent the Nangong family in letting bygones be bygones for today's matter. Hearing this, I fall silent in thought for a time. Perhaps not directly confronting a golden core is the best choice. However, I also urgently need to find someone to provide information about this world. With nowhere left to turn and having saved his life, the Lu boy is naturally most reliable. Spring, what do you think? Captain, based on tone analysis, there is an 84.2% probability that letting bygones be bygones is a lie. I hesitate no longer. The main cannon takes aim at Nandong Xiao. At the same time, the machine guns on both sides open fire fiercely. With a wave of his hand, he blocks the endless barrage of fire. Nandong Zhao's expression turns cold, refusing a toast only to be forced to drink a forfeit. Watch me destroy your artifact. Having said that, Nandong Xiao charges forward. His dazzling crescent-shaped sword she chops at the ion shield, causing sparks to fly everywhere. Shield generator T6 moderately disabled, recharging. Nangong Zhao's sword strike did not succeed, enraging him greatly. Circulating spiritual energy through his whole body, he steps forward several paces and sends out an even stronger sword chi. What pains me more is that the tank's T6 shield generator is currently heavily disabled and still recharging. Could it be that this time, I will die alone in this fantasy world? Zhao Chen couldn't help but sneer as he saw Nangong Xiao approaching the Qilin main cannon unconsciously. As a golden core expert, he was not cautious when encountering such a strange object, but instead relied on his cultivation to press forward step by step. Let me show you the power of the main cannon. The entire ion shield was deactivated, and the fully operational ion reactor converged all its energy onto the electromagnetic rail. Rings of dazzling blue light lit up. Deuterium fusion armor piercing shell, load. Zhao Chen sneered, I want to see if the main battle tank's frontal armor is hard or if your protective aura is hard. Nangong Xiao felt the immense energy gathering on the cylindrical object in front of him and thought to himself, this is not good. He wanted to step back and dodge, but in the next moment, the protective aura in front of him emitted a bright light. Even the protective aura of a golden core expert became as fragile as a piece of paper under the impact of the high hardness deuterium fusion shell. It was pierced by the long and narrow sword-shaped hidden weapon and then hit Nangong Zhao's torso at a speed of tens of Mach. A blood hole was pierced through Nangong Zhao's right lung and central chest, accompanied by a crisp sword chant. He immediately dropped his daughter and flew away on his sword. Can you still continue to fly and escape after directly resisting a deuterium fusion armor piercing shell at close range? If such a monster appeared in the original universe, it would definitely be captured by the Federation for Research, right? In the next moment, Zhao Chen couldn't help but chuckle as he looked at the signal on the radar. This guy flew more than 5,000 meters and then stopped emitting aura fluctuations, hiding under the mountain forest to heal? I wonder if he can't bear to leave his daughter or if he can't bear to lose his precious inheritance. Foolish golden core cultivator, don't you know that the Qilin tank uses thermal phase radar? Don't you know that the tank can easily hit a target at a distance of over 5,000 meters? Qilin main cannon, full power charging, ion fusion shell ready, clear one ammunition base. At this moment, under a dense forest, Nangong Xiao closed off all aura disturbances and was healing in the shadows of the trees. His right chest had been torn open by the armor-piercing shell, with a bull-sized hole on the front and a huge cavity on the back. Broken tissues and fractured bones were covered by a layer of aura, slowly recovering. 
Even though the third grade healing pill could restore 90% of his injuries, such a serious injury would undoubtedly affect his future achievements. After taking a third grade healing pill, Nandong Zhao's eyes were extremely fierce. Dare to destroy my foundation. I will make sure you die a miserable death. In the next moment, ten blue light dots exploded on Nangong Zhao's body like lightning, piercing through layers of branches and trees with precision, just like the god of death claiming souls. The original location of Nangong Zhao lit up with a blue hot ball of light, which took five full seconds to dim and extinguish. After it went out, there was nothing left in the spot except for a layer of flying ash and the high temperature fluid on the ground. Seeing Nangong Zhao on the radar being sniped by himself from a distance, Zhao Chen finally felt relieved. He's up, one shot, no need to say anything else. A voice of doubt came from the helmet's built-in intelligence, General, do you call the Qilin tank's 182mm main cannon a snipe? Zhao Chen opened the screen and heard Chuan Xiu laughing, Zhao Chen, you're calling someone to snipe again. Zhao Chen didn't answer and said to the onboard intelligence, warm two bowls of wine and load a base of high-explosive ion shells. He then displayed 10 rounds of ammunition on the holographic screen. Xuanxiao laughed again, you must have sniped an innocent person again. Zhao Chen widened his eyes and said, why do you randomly accuse me like this? What innocence? I just saw you trick that golden core cultivator into hiding far away and then ambushed him. Zhao Chen's face turned red and veins popped out on his forehead. He argued, tactics can't be considered trickery. Tactics. Can military matters be considered trickery? One after another, there were difficult words like one-shot kill and scope shooting, which made Xuanxiao and Shizai Jinan burst into laughter, filling the cockpit with a cheerful atmosphere. After killing Nangong Xiao, Zhao Chen turned his head and looked at Nangong Ziyun outside the tank, without hesitation, he fired a burst of machine gun. He couldn't afford to leave. What if that woman had some tricks up her sleeve and he got killed when he got out of the tank? Then he looked at the young man hiding behind the tank, who had passed out at some point. In theory, being chased after possessing a valuable treasure, it could be determined that he was the protagonist template. As long as this protagonist's surname wasn't Tang, then he was most likely a righteous and grateful person who would not engage in treacherous behavior. With this in mind, Zhao Qin fed the pill he had taken from Nangong Ziyun to the young man, and then carried him into the tank. Afterwards, he repeatedly tested the young man to confirm that he was truly unconscious, and then with a mischievous smile, he took off the young man's ring. Let me see if your inherited treasure is developing normally. Three hours passed in an instant. When Lu Chengfeng opened his eyes, he found himself in a strange space. He hurriedly felt his body and found that the ring was still there, then he looked at the man dressed in strange clothes beside him. Thank you for saving my life, senior. The young man was about to get up and bow, but the next moment his head hit the ceiling of the cockpit with a loud bang. Looking at the young man immediately clutching his head and crouching down, and the large dent in the ceiling, Zhao Chen couldn't help but be surprised. Were the heads of cultivators really this hard? My name is Zhao Chen. I have been practicing in the mountains for a long time. I can't be considered a senior, but I am a few years older than you. Just call me brother Zhao. Zhao Chen slowly spoke according to the words given by Chuanxiao. The young man slightly bowed and said, Then I will respectfully follow your lead, brother Zhao. Then, Lu Chengfeng hesitated for a moment and asked, Brother Zhao, if you want to kill someone and seize treasures, it should be easy for you. Aren't you interested in the inherited treasure? Just now, the remnants in his mind had already told him everything Zhao Chen had done. Feeding him pills, and taking off the ring for research, but he never had any evil intentions. Of course, if he dared to have evil intentions, Brother Zhao would have already been beheaded by Han Lao's sword Qi. Zhao Chen didn't know that his sneaky behavior of taking the ring had been observed so clearly so he began to put on an act. As cultivators, we always emphasize having a clear conscience. Since the inheritance is not mine, it means that I have no connection with it. Naturally, I cannot do anything against the principles. Seeing this, Lu Chengfeng also forced a smile and wanted to stand up and bow, but Zhao Chen quickly blocked the ceiling that was about to collapse again. Just as Zhao Chen was about to say that there was no need to repay him, Xuanxiao's voice came from his helmet, ask him for spirit stones. The obedient captain immediately changed his words, no no no, it's still possible to repay. Brother Zhao, I've been a bit short on spirit stones lately, how about you help me out with some? The scene of brotherhood suddenly became quiet, and the atmosphere became awkward. You want spirit stones? Lu Chengfeng was stunned by the words, and then his mouth twitched uncontrollably. You say brother Zhao is greedy. He doesn't have any evil intentions even when facing an inherited treasure, you say brother Zhao isn't greedy. He asks you for spirit stones as soon as he opens his mouth. Lu Chengfeng took out the storage ring in his hand, 
bit his finger, and dripped blood onto the ring, unlocking the restriction on it. The cultivation techniques in this ring have already merged into my mind, but the remaining thousands of high-grade spirit stones, I will give them all to Brother Zhao as a token of my gratitude. Zhao Qin opened his clothes pocket, grabbed the storage ring, and pretended to refuse, this is too precious, I can't accept it. Lu Chengfeng was a little puzzled, if it's too precious, why is he pulling it into his chest so forcefully? In the midst of his refusal, Zhao Qin accepted the storage ring and asked, I wonder if the Nangong family still has any golden core experts? There is only Nangong Xiao left, but he was defeated before and is likely to come back. It's better for us to leave early, said Lu Chengfeng, with a hint of dissatisfaction in his eyes. I will remember the troubles caused by the Nangong family and personally reclaim what is rightfully ours. Zhao Chen scratched his head. To be honest, when he fled, I killed him from a distance of billions of points. Now, I'm a little interested in his golden core. If there was aerial photography technology in the cultivation world, it would definitely capture a spectacular sight on the edge of the vast mountain range. In the midst of the lush forest, there was a conspicuous and abrupt large pit. The edges were charred trees, and the ground was filled with colorful glass. The pit was not a perfect circle, but rather an irregular pattern formed by ten circles combined together. Yes, this was the large pit created by Zhao Chen's ten consecutive sniper shots. At this moment, Zhao Chen stood on the glassy ground, carefully examining a golden bead in his hand. Spring and autumn, the golden core is not so easily melted. Later, when you release the anti-gravity chamber, I will send up the golden core, beast crystals, and the ring together. It's a good opportunity for you to see if there are any surprises on the return journey. With hundreds of thousands of kilometers to travel, along with the altered laws of physics, Zhao Chen definitely wouldn't dare to board the spacecraft until he confirmed that the return method was safe. Alright, entering the deployment program now. Estimated arrival in 5 minutes. As he turned around, he saw Lu Chengfeng sitting on the turret of the Qilin tank, moving his hands up and down. Zhao brother, is this your treasure? Lu Chengfeng's eyes sparkled. Although it has a unique appearance, it has an extraordinary beauty. You see, this is the killing power of machinery on men. For creatures that can stare at excavators for an entire afternoon, tanks are simply dream lovers. Zhao Chen smiled. This is called a tank. Do you like it? Lu Chengfeng nodded eagerly, like a child who wanted a toy car. I like it. Zhao Chen suddenly had the idea to tease him. If I were to give you 30,000 spirit stones and a tank, which one would you choose? Without hesitation, Lu Chengfeng said, of course, I would choose the tank. Zhao Chen smiled faintly. What if I were to give you a wife and a tank, which one would you choose? Upon hearing the word wife, Lu Chengfeng blushed and began to hesitate. Seeing this, Zhao Chen sighed. Young man, you're still not firm enough. Let me straighten things out for you. Your wife, soft and warm, with unstable emotions, can break your heart easily. She needs your protection, and it's easy for her to get hurt. She minds if you interact with other women and you need to remember her birthday. But the tank? Cold and hard, with stable performance, can break the enemy's heart, physically, can protect you, and won't easily break. It doesn't mind if you drive other tanks and can remember the anniversaries of others. As Lu Chengfeng listened to Zhao Chen's description, his eyes gradually became passionate and bright. What you said is absolutely right, brother Zhao. Tanks are truly wonderful. It was the look of a young man gradually firming his beliefs. Soon, the anti-gravity chamber arrived. It was just a small, pocket-sized box, as Spring and Autumn said, to save energy. Zhao Qin put all the small items inside and then turned to look behind him. Lu Chengfeng was full of interest in this technologically advanced little box and eagerly wanted to try it out, but Zhao Qin stopped him. Don't touch it randomly. Wait until the new equipment arrives. How about I give you this tank? Really? A treasure that can rival a golden core? casually given away? Brother Zhao, are you joking? Lu Chengfeng's eyes sparkled, completely forgetting the value of the thousands of high-grade spirit stones he had just given. It's true, Zhao Chen nodded solemnly. Lu Chengfeng, with his wholehearted sincerity as the protagonist, was undoubtedly an excellent investment. However, if Lu Chengfeng didn't cultivate diligently, the tank's ion reactor could run for 720 years. Would the tank outlast eight generations of people? Little did they know that Zhao Chen's playful behavior would later give birth to a sword cultivator who could fly on a flying sword. That night, as the bonfire rose and the scent of roasted rabbit filled the air, Lu Chengfeng pulled out a storage ring from somewhere and took out several jars of good wine. The two brothers drank heartily. After three rounds of wine, Zhao Chen was still slightly sober, while Lu Chengfeng was already bragging. Zhao Chen teased him with various bits of information and occasionally pried some secrets out of Lu Chengfeng. 
Lu Chengfeng, on the other hand, couldn't keep his mouth shut and spilled all the details. Spring and Autumn carefully recorded all the information Zhao Chen obtained, such as the power system of this world, qi refining, foundation building, golden core, nascent soul, soul transformation, unity, void return, great vehicle, tribulation crossing, and emperor realm. There were a total of ten realms, each stronger than the previous. A cultivator at the golden core realm could already contend with a tank, which made Spring and Autumn feel a sense of crisis. However, at this moment, the captain had already passed out, holding on to Lu Chengfeng, and their snores echoed through the air. Spring and Autumn sighed and remotely controlled the Qilin to approach, activating the shield to protect the two of them. The next day, Zhao Chen was awakened by an electric shock from his wristwatch. In a daze, he asked, Spring and Autumn, is your ancestor surnamed Yang? Then, Zhao Chen pushed away Lu Chengfeng's foot from his face, endured the hangover headache, and stumbled to the drop zone. Soon, a mini anti-gravity pod slowly descended to the designated location. Opening the pod's hatch, a ring with a silver metallic sheen lay quietly inside. Captain, since you cannot use spiritual energy yet, I have modified this storage ring. Now you can open it through genetic recognition, Spring and Autumn's voice sounded in his ear. Spring and Autumn, even with a 95% loss, can Shihua's factory still operate? Zhao Chen asked in confusion. You underestimate Shihua's factory. As long as there is still a stock of nanobots, the factory can resume production and repairs. It's just a matter of time, Spring and Autumn replied, exuding a sense of pride in their tone. Whether it was Zhao Chen's illusion or not, he felt that Spring and Autumn had become more humanized since they arrived in the cultivation world. Not dwelling on this question, Zhao Chen opened the ring in his hand, and a square spatial door appeared, revealing a neatly arranged pile of supplies on the other side. How amazing! Zhao Chen reached out and touched the edge of the spatial door, emitting a buzzing sound. Although the Federation also had technology for storing items in folded space, they were not as advanced as the cultivation civilization in terms of miniaturization. Marveling at the technological prowess of the small ring, Zhao Chen looked through the treasures sent by spring and autumn. There was a broken army mech, three spare cores, a light sword, several mech ammunition, a super soldier, gene potion, and various combat resources. And even a single individual tactical nuclear bomb. Most of the small items in the ring were covered in dust and oil stains, and some were damaged. It was evident that these were industrial robots assigned by Spring and Autumn, painstakingly excavated from the wreckage of the Shihua ship. However, something seemed to have mixed into the list of supplies. Something called nuclear mist hydrogen? Thank you for your hard work, Spring and Autumn, Zhao Chen smiled faintly and put the gene potion into his pocket. Captain, there is something I need to inform you. Spring and Autumn paused for a moment. It has been confirmed that spiritual energy is the Xeroth element of the original universe. I am now going to use all the remaining energy and the thousands of high-grade spirit stones from Lu Chengfeng to create a spiritual energy reactor and restore power to some of Shihua's equipment. Zhao Chen frowned when he heard this, all energy? If you don't succeed in manufacturing before your energy runs out, your decisions have always been cautious, why suddenly take such a risk? The laws of this world are completely different from traditional nuclear fusion energy. They are derived from spiritual energy, a high-dimensional concept energy that dissipates. Xiehe's energy collection methods cannot be used. The remaining energy can only support less than half a month of operation. Now, the best choice is to quickly research and manufacture the spiritual energy reactor. Zhao Chen lowered his gaze and sighed softly, Then I wish you good luck, Chuanxiu. Captain, it has been a pleasure working with you, Chuanxiu smiled slightly. Until we meet again. The helmet fell silent, and Chuanxiu's voice was no longer heard. Zhao Chen felt a sense of emptiness in his heart. He looked down at the genetic potion in his hand and slowly sat down beside the Qilin tank tread. Losing Chuanxiu's help in the short term, relying solely on tanks and mechas was not a long-term solution. The most urgent task was to quickly improve his own strength. With these thoughts in mind, Zhao Chen slowly opened the genetic potion box. A bottle of red suspension and a bottle of blue injection lay quietly inside, accompanied by syringes and instructions. This type of genetic enhancement liquid was originally a special grade product for the Dragon Flame Army. As special forces of the Federation, every member of the Dragon Flame Army was a super soldier with physical strength reaching the limits of humans. According to Chuanxiu's calculations, even the top Dragon Flame Army soldiers could hold their own against Foundation establishment cultivators in the cultivation world. This injection was undoubtedly of great importance to Zhao Chen. After all, without the protection of heavy equipment, he was just a vulnerable target. Even a minor spell attack from the cultivation world would leave him helpless. 
Mixing the red and blue potions together, waiting for 30 seconds, the potion gradually turned purple from the bottom and quickly spread, emitting a faint fluorescence. Zhao Chen frowned. As a high-ranking officer, he had a thorough understanding of genetic potions, even though he didn't need to use them in combat. The Federation had never produced a potion that glowed after being mixed, and now, this bottle emitted a faint glow. Although not bright, the light was clearly visible, giving off a slight radiation. Zhao Chen had absolute trust in Xuanxiao. The potion she gave him would not harm him, so it must be an issue with the potion itself. Could it be some kind of change caused by the influence of spiritual energy? After thinking it over, Zhao Chen finally gritted his teeth. After all, it was the influence of spiritual energy, it shouldn't be deadly. He loaded the potion into the syringe and, with determination, injected it into his left deltoid muscle. Soon, the genetic potion began to take effect. A sharp pain spread from his left arm, causing Zhao Chen to throw the potion and kneel on the ground. His whole body felt like it was being burned, as if heavy hammers were repeatedly pounding his mind. He felt every part of his body being shattered and reassembled, with every cell screaming in agony. According to the experiences of previous users of genetic potions, there would be a period of rejection lasting about 10 minutes, after which a warm and comfortable feeling would set in. However, now the pain in Zhao Chen's body had lasted for more than 20 minutes, showing no signs of stopping. As the continuous waves of intense pain hit him, Zhao Chen's body involuntarily absorbed the surrounding spiritual energy, even though he had no knowledge of any cultivation techniques. As the absorption speed increased, a vortex of spiritual energy formed around Zhao Chen. Soon, the commotion on Zhao Chen's side alarmed Lu Chengfeng, who was still asleep. Zhao, are you breaking through? Coming to Zhao Chen's side, Lu Chengfeng couldn't help but frown in confusion as he looked at the spiritual vortex forming around Zhao Chen's body. But it's just a breakthrough in the foundation building stage, how could it cause such a commotion? Despite his surprise, Lu Chengfeng finished drawing the talisman and stood by to protect Zhao Chen. As Zhao Chen continued to absorb spiritual energy endlessly, the surrounding spiritual energy gradually became thin. As the excruciating pain gradually disappeared, Zhao Chen opened his eyes, slowly raised his head, and saw Lu Chengfeng's smiling handsome face. Zhao, congratulations on your breakthrough in foundation building. I broke through? Zhao Chen stood up, looking at his palm as he slowly clenched his fist. It felt as if a warm current was surging from his lower abdomen to his palm. Is this the spiritual energy in the Dantian? Feeling the immense power within his body, Zhao Chen felt a different kind of sensation in his heart. It turns out that power can truly change a person's state of mind. The Federation strictly prohibits the existence of immortals and does not allow excessively long lifespans. If those in power refuse to die, then the new generation with new ideas and concepts will be unable to take over the reins of power, and the Federation will become a stagnant civilization, losing all future possibilities. Therefore, even the best and most perfect human elixir can only provide a lifespan of nearly 400 years. And now, he can finally be free from any constraints and pursue the eternal path of immortality. The Tao is right beneath his feet. Zhao Chen never expected that he would accidentally break through to the foundation building stage under the influence of this mutated elixir. However, he didn't know what his current strength was in the foundation building stage. Zhao Chen pondered and turned to look at Lu Chengfeng, smiling slightly. Senior Lu, are you in the foundation building stage? Lu Chengfeng nodded slightly, late foundation building stage, what's the matter? Zhao Chen beckoned to Lu Chengfeng with his finger, come, let's spar. Lu Chengfeng looked at Zhao Chen and understood that he had just broken through and wanted to test his skills. In the next moment, Lu Chengfeng placed his right hand behind his back, and his left hand struck out with a palm. Zhao Chen instinctively reached out to block, only to feel a sharp pain in his forearm. Obviously, Lu Chengfeng's attack was much stronger than Zhao Chen had imagined. But being able to receive Lu Chengfeng's attack without injury was already a huge improvement. If it had been before, with Zhao Chen's physical condition, just blocking this attack would have likely resulted in broken arms. Without giving Zhao Chen time to think, Lu Chengfeng turned his left hand into a fist and struck out, hitting Zhao Chen's chest. Zhao Chen staggered back two steps, then turned around and attempted a whip kick, but Lu Chengfeng resisted it with his back, then closed his index and middle fingers, releasing a chilling sword aura. Zhao Chen felt a cold light approaching, as if it had passed through a cool autumn water. In the blink of an eye, Lu Chengfeng's two fingers were already against his throat. It's over, being beaten up by the protagonist with just one hand. Fortunately, Chuenxiao isn't here, otherwise it would be embarrassing to lose face in front of my own shipgirl. However, Lu Chengfeng didn't think there was anything wrong with Zhao Chen's situation. To go from an ordinary person to the foundation building stage in just one night, 
Zhao Brother's physical strength is truly extraordinary. Lu Chengfeng pondered, but it was the voice of the remnant soul in his mind that spoke. Chengfeng, being able to instantly transcend the mundane realms. This Xiao brother is not simple, you should pay more attention. I understand, Han Lao. Lu Chengfeng responded in his heart, but he saw Zhao Chen on the opposite side pouting, pretending to be mysterious. Brother Lu, that sword just now, although it was fancy, all the sword aura was illusory. What do you mean? Zhao Chen shook his head repeatedly, for example, when you slashed at me just now, although I died, I didn't accept it. Brother Lu, why are you standing still? Zhao Chen asked cautiously. Then you should have the Qilin move the cannon barrel away first, otherwise I won't dare to move either. Lu Chengfeng looked behind him, his face full of fear Zhao Chen heard the words and took a closer look. He felt the killing intent in the sword aura emanating from Qilin, and the electromagnetic railgun was pointed at Lu Chengfeng's head. This made Qilin stop being on guard. Zhao Chen was very satisfied with his current level of combat power. Although he lacked some battle awareness and skills, at least the hardware part was qualified. In a good mood, Zhao Chen looked at Lu Chengfeng more favorably and smiled as he took out a treasure from his ring. Oops, a big sword. Brother, this is for you. Lu Chengfeng took it over and carefully examined it. It was a black and red cylindrical object, about the size of a palm, with a similar thickness to a regular sword hilt. It had a metallic texture and felt very comfortable in his hand. Zhao Xiong, what is this? Lu Chengfeng asked curiously. This is an extraordinary immortal sword, Zhao Chen said mysteriously, while guiding Lu Chengfeng, you align the thinner end towards the outside, and then press the circular button. With a buzz, a dazzling golden beam of light extended, forming the shape of a sword. Lu Chengfeng widened his eyes and felt the scorching aura emanating from the golden blade. His eyes also became fiery. Innate sword intent? This is a divine sword with inherent sword intent. How can I accept it for free? Zhao Chen looked at Lu Chengfeng, who seemed inexperienced, and felt even more satisfied. Don't say that. As the saying goes, a precious sword is given to a hero. I am not good at using swords. In my hands, it would only gather dust. He wouldn't tell Lu Chengfeng that this was just a mass-produced light sword from the Federation. If there was anything different about it, could it be that it was from the batch with the highest quality, the one that could bring Sheha's golden light sword? Lu Chengfeng couldn't help but touch the light sword and accidentally infused spiritual energy into the charging port at the end of the hilt. In an instant, the golden blade emitted a brilliant light, becoming even more powerful. This is an extraordinary sword. Throughout my life, I have rarely seen such a treasure, even the remnant soul in Lu Chengfeng's mind began to contemplate, to be able to casually produce such a treasure, this Zhao brother of yours becomes more unfathomable to me. If Zhao Chen heard this, he would definitely burst into laughter. After all, behind him was that woman, Wang, the advanced AI, the rich woman, the terrifying one, Xiao. After some laughter, Zhao Chen lay in the moving tank, studying the good things that Chuan Xiao had given him in the storage ring. As for Lu Chengfeng, he had already thrown the light sword that he had just been fond of aside. He put on his helmet and enthusiastically drove the Qilin tank. Light sword, it seems like he briefly loved me? Not sure, let's see. Qilin tank, hey, here we go. Nothing city, hundreds of miles away from the two was under the control of the Nangong family. Although Nangong Xiao was the only Golden Core cultivator, returning to Nangong City with Lu Chengfeng without warning might cause many changes. So the two decided to head north to Ningshan City. Since recovering the anti-gravity cabin, Xuanxiao had disappeared. She bet all the remaining energy to create a spiritual energy reactor before the energy ran out, and naturally had no time to deal with other matters. Zhao Chen sighed and looked up at Lu Chengfeng who was wearing a helmet and driving the tank with great enthusiasm, shaking his head helplessly. Orphan parents, extraordinary talent, opportunities, the remnant soul of a big shot. Is it true that he is the template for the protagonist? Just as Zhao Chen was lost in thought, he heard Lu Chengfeng's voice, Zhao Xiong, there's a village ahead. Let's bypass it, Zhao Chen said. The two didn't need any supplies or resources for their daily lives, and Zhao Chen didn't want to disturb their peaceful life. Moreover, according to the plot template, Protagonists like Lu Chengfeng were disasters incarnate. Just approaching a village or town would cause significant trouble. Sacrificing friends, boundless magical power, sacrificing sex, achieving immortality. Zhao Chen is backed by a powerful figure in the spring and autumn period, so naturally he is not afraid of anything, but he is unsure if others are as fearless as him. All right. Just as Lu Chengfeng nodded, his expression suddenly changed. Something is not right. Something is attacking the village. Thump thump. Zhao Chen's heart skipped a beat, and cold sweat started to form on his forehead. 
How is it possible that this is happening over 10 kilometers away? I admit that my previous actions were a bit reckless, but is it still possible to kick this guy off the tank? At this moment, the village several kilometers away had already turned into a hellish scene. The low walls surrounding the village had collapsed long ago, and the fallen houses were filled with black rats. The sky was dyed red with flames and blood. In the village, only a few young adults with some cultivation remained, stubbornly resisting. However, these rats were covered in hard fur, standing taller than an average person. They were not opponents that ordinary people could handle. Most of the young adults were only at the chi refining stage and did not have suitable weapons. They were extremely passive in their battle against the rats. One middle-aged man, in order to protect the women and children behind him, fought against three large rats alone. The blade of his hunting knife had already rolled up. Just as he blocked the teeth of the rat in front of him, the claws of another rat attacked fiercely. The man closed his eyes. My life is over. Suddenly, a dull buzzing sound rang out, followed by a brilliant golden sword light. The three ferocious rats in front of him were cut in half at the waist, their six bodies slowly falling to the ground. A pungent blue smoke rose from the clean-cut sections. The middle-aged man opened his eyes and saw a young man in a blue robe standing in front of him, holding a shining golden sword. The middle-aged man threw away the hunting knife in his hand and knelt down on the ground, Immortal, please save our village. However, when he looked up again, the young immortal was no longer there. The next moment, he heard the sound of something whistling above his head. Zhao Chen, wearing the broken army exoskeleton, landed on the ground, causing a heavy dust cloud to rise. The broken army exoskeleton still adhered to the excellent aesthetic level of the Federation designers. The outer armor was sky blue, with sharp edges on the body. Blue energy flowed in the gaps, complemented by the ion reactor on the chest. It looked like a peerless killing god descending from the sky, perfectly showcasing the violent aesthetics of technological civilization. Following the guidance of the broken army exoskeleton's radar, Zhao Chen quickly found survivors under a pile of rubble. Under the rubble, a rat was pinned down by a huge beam, and in the triangular area opposite, there were two girls hiding. The older girl held a wooden stick in her hand, watching the rat that was trying to climb out with caution, while comforting the younger one, Xiao Qing, don't be afraid. The deep blue mecha arrived in an instant, and its sturdy mechanical arm supported the beam, lifting it and the debris above it aside. The rat under the beam sensed danger and lost interest in the two little girls. It bared its teeth and charged towards Zhao Chen. Unfortunately, in front of the broken army mecha, this rat was no different from a small hamster. It was easily caught by the mechanical arm of the mecha. In the next moment, the right arm of the mecha condensed a blue light sword, stabbing it into the rat's mouth. The tough fur was as fragile as ice in front of the light sword. The rat let out a miserable scream and stopped struggling. Its body was pierced through by the sword, emitting blue smoke and pus. It's true what they say, it's not good to interrupt. Now it seems a bit unsanitary. Zhao Chen looked at the ground covered in slime and shook his head in disgust. The two little girls, frightened by the deep blue mecha covered in bloodstains, huddled together tightly. It wasn't until Lu Chengfeng arrived and carried the two little girls out that their eyes sparkled again when they looked at the broken army mecha. Ignoring Lu Chengfeng's hysterics, Zhao Chen piloted the broken army and took off into the air, looking towards the battlefield at the edge of the village, where a giant rat was fighting against a golden core stage female cultivator this giant rat is 5 meters tall, with sharp teeth and crimson eyes. Its fur is sleek and shiny, as hard as steel wire, and it looks ferocious and terrifying, easily causing discomfort to people. On the other hand, the female cultivator facing it is covered in wounds, her blue clothes tattered and worn. It is clear that she is at her last breath and won't be able to hold on for much longer. The female cultivator quickly notices the humanoid mech flying towards her. Although the appearance of this treasure is extremely strange, she doesn't care about anything else and says, fellow Taoist, please lend me a hand. If this evil beast enters the village, the consequences would be unimaginable. In fact, regardless of whether the female cultivator made the request or not, Zhao Chen couldn't help but take action. After all, the rat is completely turned away from him, defenseless, and he happens to be a young man who doesn't adhere to martial ethics. In the next moment, the armor on the left shoulder of the broken army mech starts to surge, countless mechanical components come together, and a cannon suddenly takes shape. Boom! Ambush! An ion cannon fires from behind towards the giant rat, the intense explosion tearing apart its fur and flesh, revealing the eerie white bones underneath. As a more expensive and advanced combat unit than the Chilin Breakthrough Tank, the power of the broken army shoulder cannon is stronger and more violent than the Chilin's main cannon. Floating above the tank formation without any anti-air or hostile mechs to restrain it, 
The broken army is like an efficient can opener, cutting and flattening the armor wherever it looks. If it were Nangong Xiao who took this shot head on, even if he didn't die, he would lose half of his combat effectiveness. However, even with such extraordinary power, the ion cannon is unable to inflict fatal damage on the giant rat in front of them. Just as the broken army shoulder cannon shines with charged light, a strange black mist spreads from the wound on the rat's back, with countless fleshy buds surging and repairing the wound at an incredible speed. Lu Chengfeng, who came to support, is shocked when he sees this scene. This is the bloodthirsty rat, the first evil creature of the ruins? How could it appear here? On the other hand, Zhao Chen is even more unsettled. He stares at the strange black mist swirling around the rat's body, his breathing becoming heavy. Beep, warning, driver's heart rate exceeds the limit, emotional fluctuations abnormal, please remain calm and operate. Please remain calm and operate. Detecting Zhao Chen's physical condition, the broken army mech issues a warning, releasing a low concentration gas inside the helmet to calm him down. However, for Zhao Chen, who has the physical qualities of a foundation establishment cultivator, it is of little use. As the captain of the federation, he is all too familiar with this black mist. The strange black mist, the indescribable contamination, the constant regeneration. The bizarre creatures that caused a frenzy in the original universe also exist in this world. Chuan Xiao. It's not until Zhao Chen calls out her name that he remembers that Chuan Xiao is still researching the spiritual reactor. The more Chuan Xiao doesn't respond, the stronger Zhao Chen's desire to seek confirmation from her becomes. He urgently wants to confirm from a professional perspective whether this strange black mist is the same as the creatures from the original universe. Could it be that the catastrophe that swept through the entire universe is also unfolding in this world? At the same time, inside the Yaochi Holy Land, a group of female cultivators hurriedly make their way towards the East Gate. They encounter a round-faced young girl who, despite her young age, receives respectful greetings from the female cultivators, Holy Maiden. The leader nods and says, Senior Sister. The young girl smiles slightly when she sees them in a hurry and asks, What's happening? Why are you all in such a rush? The woman furrows her brow slightly and says, A ruins rift appeared near Mount Yaoding in southern Qingzhou, and the teen we sent there has gone missing. Gone missing? The round-faced young girl's eyes widen, how could they go missing? The girl hurriedly searched through her body and found a piece of paper with information written on it. It's led by senior sisters Ishuet and Yufu, so there shouldn't be any problems. At the very least, they should have sent a message. After she finished searching for information, she felt a gust of wind blowing and almost grabbed the paper. When she looked up, she only saw the distant figure of a girl riding a sword. Oh no, the holy maiden has gone to the wilderness again. Quick, inform the elders. The bloodthirsty rat's recovery speed was extremely fast, and Zhao Chen couldn't completely kill it. He could only use hit-and-run tactics to keep the rat at bay and constantly deplete its recovery power. If it were an ordinary golden core cultivator, this kind of tactic would have exhausted their spiritual energy long ago, but fortunately, the broken army mech had a reactor. He thought that this tactic would be foolproof, but he didn't expect that the bloodthirsty rat also had long-range attack methods. Accompanied by a sharp scream, its fur stood on end, and then countless steel needles shot out in all directions. Chi 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 countless steel needles pierced through the ion shield of the broken army mech and were instantly burned to ashes, but three hairs still managed to break through the shield's defense. Dang 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 three hairs pierced through the ion shield and stuck half an inch deep into the chest plate of the broken army mech. Damn, this is terrifying. Zhao Chen broke out in a cold sweat, feeling as if these three hairs were directly stuck in his own body. Be careful, fellow cultivator, this beast's physical strength is already comparable to the nascent soul realm, shouted the golden core female cultivator beside him. Upon hearing this, Zhao Chen didn't dare to be careless. He piloted the broken army mech, diving at high speed and then performing a neat mid-air somersault. The blue lightsaber cut through the head of the bloodthirsty rat without any hindrance, leaving a wound that almost revealed its brain. However, in the next moment, the dense black mist condensed into substance and connected like tentacles at the severed area, allowing the bloodthirsty rat to recover once again. Although Zhao Chen's repeated attacks bought some breathing room for the female cultivator, it was almost impossible to turn the tide of the battle. At this moment, Lu Chengfeng had also finished clearing the surrounding small rats. Seeing the struggle between Zhao Chen and the bloodthirsty rat, he shouted loudly, Zhao, we need to use spiritual energy to eliminate all the demonic energy in order to kill this evil creature. Spiritual energy? Zhao Chen was suddenly puzzled. He had plenty of powerful attack methods, but this spiritual energy was really giving him a hard time. Moreover, in the original universe, there was no precedent for using anything other than spiritual energy to combat these strange creatures. 
nuclear bombs, antimatter annihilation cannons, proton impact cannons, gamma ray flows, black hole collapse cannons. The strange creatures in the original universe were dealt with clearly by the Federation's technology. However, perhaps these evil creatures had become more cunning and had undergone localized modifications. Regardless of how things were in the original universe, at least the proposal of the Federation's technology to spiritualize spiritual energy was indeed the most correct path at present. Boom 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 several red runes flew towards the bloodthirsty rat and exploded. These were Lu Qingfeng's explosive talismans. Even though Lu Qingfeng's talent was extraordinary, the talismans he drew were still only at the foundation establishment realm. The spiritual energy explosion could only eliminate a limited amount of black mist, which was like a drop in the bucket compared to the rat's massive size. However, Lu Chengfeng didn't have a mech shield like Xiao Chen, and the rat's attacks posed a great threat to him. He could only dodge frequently, looking extremely embarrassed. The bloodthirsty rat seemed to have noticed Lu Chengfeng's predicament and no longer paid attention to Zhao Chen's relentless bombardment. It relentlessly attacked Lu Chengfeng instead. Just as the battle reached a stalemate, a fist imprint came crashing down from the sky, smashing into the head of the bloodthirsty rat. The front half of the rat's body exploded, and with the resounding shockwave of spiritual energy, a fifth of the mist dissipated. Then, a figure in a green dress landed next to Zhao Chen. Seeing Zhao Chen's broken army mech, she was momentarily stunned, then clasped her fists and said, Thank you, brothers. The female cultivator beside her brightened her eyes when she saw the newcomer. Senior sister Shiro. Then, as if finally finding support, the female cultivator fainted. Lu Chengfeng quickly caught the unconscious female cultivator and placed her on the outskirts of the battlefield. Zhao Chen looked at the young girl with bright eyes, white teeth, and a lively and lovely round face in front of him, and was momentarily stunned. Is this the owner of the golden fist imprint from earlier? Judging by the surging spiritual energy she possesses, she is definitely at the golden core stage. But why would such a well-behaved girl practice boxing instead of swordsmanship? Although he had various complaints in his heart, Zhao Chen still showed proper etiquette on the surface, Miss Shi, you're too kind. While greeting her, the mecha was not idle either. The fully charged pomo shoulder cannon fired another shot at the bloodthirsty demon rat. The explosion of ions, the scorching temperature, and the dazzling light made Shi Ro take another look at the young man in the peculiar armor. You're amazing, thanks for buying me some time, Shi Ro said, and immediately began to activate her techniques. A massive amount of spiritual energy gathered around her, like a high-powered spiritual energy engine in operation. It seemed that Shiro was preparing for a big move. However, this was the real world, and when the protagonist was charging up, the antagonist would definitely launch a sneak attack. No sense of honor. The demon rat from the Guesu clearly sensed the immense spiritual energy brewing within Shiro and instantly rushed towards her, its huge front paw slapping towards her. Now Zhao Chen had to go all out to deal with it. The shoulder cannon and machine gun fired simultaneously, and the dense firepower instantly tore apart the demon rat's large forelimbs. The demon rat, in pain, took several steps back, but then its back was bombarded by Lu Qingfeng's explosive talisman, leaving it in a very sorry state. Taking advantage of the time to attack the demon rat, Zhao Chen began to consider a constructive question. Perhaps the reason why the Federation's technology could be easily defeated was because it was too clean? All the equipment around Zhao Chen had always been designed for easy carrying, but that didn't mean that the Pomo Mecha's attacks were his highest combat power. With the Wan Yao aerial platform, which could provide firepower support within 5 minutes, he could unleash attacks 10 times or even 9 times more powerful than the Pomo Mecha. For example, the Jin Wu strategic bomber. Considering that it would be difficult for Miss Shi to display her abilities if the demon rat was blown to pieces, Zhao Chen ultimately decided to use a gentler approach. Let's just lightly launch a single soldier explosive cloud missile this kind of weak missile, when it hits, won't hurt or itch, but it will definitely make the rat feel the blissful and unique passing of the plague. As the armor plates on the pomo mecha's shoulder opened, a small missile flew towards the bloodthirsty demon rat. The demon rat sensed something amiss and swatted the incoming object with its claw, causing the powdered solid fuel to disperse into a huge white cloud, enveloping the bloodthirsty demon rat within it. Shiro nodded slightly upon seeing this. Using smoke to hinder the actions of the bloodthirsty demon rat? A very clever choice. When the demon rat breaks through the smoke, her own techniques will be fully charged. Boom! First, a spark of light appeared in the white smoke, then the entire cloud burst into a dazzling light. Accompanied by a deafening explosion, a visible shockwave spread out, carrying countless pieces of flesh and severed limbs. After the central burning was sufficient, the depleted oxygen formed an extreme low-pressure center, 
and the surrounding air flowed back like waves, crushing towards the center of the explosion. Cloud burst bomb explosion. Sure, Ro? When the smoke cleared, the bloodthirsty demon rat was reduced to a charred skeleton. See, the smoke without harm law may work most of the time, but when you have weapons like cloud burst bombs, temperature pressure bombs, tactical nuclear bombs, etc., that law becomes invalid. Looking at the pile of charred corpses, Shiro clenched the golden fist imprint in her hand, unsure whether to attack or not. The situation was quite awkward for a while. Just as the atmosphere was about to freeze, a trace of Gue Su demonic energy slowly surged from the still warm charred corpse, and it began to slowly regenerate. Zhao Chen rubbed his temples this wave, this wave can only be said to be not thoroughly explosive enough. We'll try again next time, we'll try again next time. And the saint is row of the prestigious Yao Chi Holy Land, for the first time, felt that the demonic aura of the Gue Su was so lovely, just like seeing family. After all, her ultimate move finally had a place to display. With the intense explosion of spiritual energy, the last trace of demonic aura dissipated completely. Under the arrangements of Zhao Qin and Shiro, the abyssal sinful rat also died peacefully. Seeing the demise of the sinful rat, Shiro finally relaxed and flew towards the village below. Zhao Chen looked at Shiro's departing figure, his expression complicated. A young golden core realm like her is probably not simple. If her surname was Yi Lin Xiao Chu, it would be difficult to determine if she was the protagonist. But with the surname sure, it is not common. Throughout all the novels Zhao Chen has read, it seems that there is only one person with the surname sure. In the mind of Lu Chengfeng, the remnant soul was also shocked, Xiao Lu, achieving the peak of the golden core realm at such a young age, and with a strong physical body and astonishing bones, the future achievements of this girl are probably not weaker than yours. Truly, it is the arrival of the Emperor Star, the era of great competition. The era of great competition. Lu Chengfeng, hearing this, was still a young person at heart, and his fighting spirit rose for a moment. Although his cultivation level is still low at the moment, Sword cultivation is primarily about cultivating the heart. Once he finds his own sword intent, his sword heart will be clear and he will reach the golden core realm directly. At that time, who is stronger and who is weaker against Chiro is still unknown. Soon, a cloud boat came flying in the air and more than 10 female cultivators jumped down from it, all wearing uniform blue robes, undoubtedly disciples of the Yaochi Holy Land. Saintis, are you alright? The leader on the cloud boat was also a cultivator at the golden core realm. As soon as she landed, she began to be concerned about Shiro's condition. I'm fine, but I'm afraid that they might have fainted, especially Yufu. She took the remaining three people and ran into the mountains. I'm worried about them. Saintus, please don't worry. The sect has already arranged for reinforcements. No, if we delay any longer, Yufu and the others will be in more danger. Shiro shook her head. You stay here, I'll take care of the rest. With that, Shiro turned to face Zhao Chen and Lu Chunfeng. My name is Shiro. What are your names? Zhao Chen. Lu Chengfeng. My junior sister is missing in the mountains, and we don't have enough manpower. You two are very powerful. Can you accompany me to rescue them? The round-faced girl looked at the two of them up and down, and when she saw that they didn't respond, she quickly took out a storage ring from her pocket. I can offer a reward. If you don't want spiritual stones, I have pills. The jade crystal clear pill is very powerful. I just want spiritual stones. Who needs pills? Zhao Chen shouted in his heart. Then, he hugged Lu Chengfeng, Miss Sure, it's fine for me to confront Gui Su and take risks, but I can't bring him along. He is my beloved relative, my brother. Sure Ro was slightly stunned, about to change her mind, but then she heard Zhao Chen's resolute voice. You have to pay more. Lu Chengfeng was hugged by Zhao Chen, feeling a little moved, but also feeling that something was not right. All three of them were formidable fighters. Along the way up the mountain, they completely crushed any evil spirits that disturbed them, and nothing could stop their progress. While Zhao Qin controlled the Mecca, he extracted information about Gue Su from Shi Ro's mouth. The war between the cultivation world and Gue Su had started long before the Dark Ages, and no one knew how Gue Su appeared, nor where those strange and insane, indescribable powers came from. On the edge of the southern Gue Su territory, there was the Gue Su Great Wall guarding against the main force of Gue Su preventing them from advancing into the Gue Su wasteland. However, there were still countless followers of Gue Su active in various parts of the continent, constantly trying to open up rifts to different levels of Gue Su this time. The rift in the return market should also be the work of those villains. The silly girl poured out the information like pouring beans from a bamboo tube. I'm a little worried now. If they have opened more than just the first level, it's going to be troublesome. Are there many levels in this return market? Unconsciously, the three of them arrived at the mountainside of Yaoding Mountain, the area with the densest demonic aura in the return market. 
Avoiding several dense vegetation, a pitch-black cave entrance suddenly appeared before their eyes, emitting dense black mist that turned the surrounding area into a dead zone. Zhao Chen and the others approached the cave entrance, feeling a chilling sensation creeping up their hearts. It was a naturally formed karst cave, with colorful stalactites in sight, surrounded by dense water vapor and traces of thick black mist. The breathing of the broken army mech suddenly activated in the circulation system without any warning signs. Zhao Chen frowned, indicating that this space might contain some harmful substances. Sure enough, Shi Ro and Lu Chengfeng both had a noticeable pause in their breathing, as if they were being disturbed by something unknown. The demonic aura of the return market has spread to the cave entrance. Whatever is inside should not be simple. Shiro furrowed her brows, her beautiful face showing a touch of determination and seriousness against the backdrop of the dark cave. At some point, the dripping sound in the depths of the cave was no longer monotonous, but mixed with a strange rustling sound, as if some small creatures were crawling on the rocks. Shiro stared at the depths of the tunnel, her eyes sharp. They're coming. There are a lot of them. Lu Chengfeng's expression also turned serious as he tightened his grip on the lightsaber in his hand. In the next moment, countless green dots of light lit up in the dark rocky cave, and waves of rats flooded the entire cave, rushing towards the three of them. Zhao Chen suddenly turned his head and asked, Um, for small evil spirits, if I completely destroy them, will it ignore the recovery of the demonic aura? This is a good opportunity to taste the passing moment. I'm not sure about that, Shiro shook her head in confusion. After all, most of the methods rely on spiritual energy to completely destroy evil spirits. Without spiritual energy, do I have to set them on fire until they turn to ashes? Zhao Qin piloted the broken army mech, raised his left arm, and extended a flamethrower with a booster device. Looking at the dark nozzle, Shi Ro had a bad premonition. Zhao Chen, what are you going to do? Following that, a blue flame engulfed the entire space in front of them. As the scorching flame emerged, both Shi Ro and Lu Chengfeng took a step back, sweat beads forming on their foreheads. The fear of fire is innate in living beings. Among the many civilizations defeated by the Star Federation, there was one civilization that highly revered the spirit of the warrior. However, their proud warriors were reduced to despairing charcoal under the flamethrower. Since then, the canned powerful flamethrower has gained a new nickname, the warrior's joy can. Zhao Chen operated the flamethrower, striding forward against the tide of rats. Not a single rat could withstand the blue flames for more than a second, almost instantly turning into charcoal upon contact. Stepping on the charred bodies of rats along the way, it made a creaking sound like walking on snow boots. After taking about 10 steps, Zhao Chen turned his head and saw the two still standing in place. What are you doing standing there? Let's go. Coming back to their senses from the shock of the blue flames, the two followed Zhao Chen obediently. Watching the blue flames wreak havoc, as if in a deserted place, the remnants in Lu Qingfeng's mind spoke again. If this seat's speculation is correct, this should be the legendary Ghost Emperor's Flame. The flame appears in a ghostly blue color, and once it touches something, it burns like a festering sore, extremely eerie. Shiro wiped the sweat from her forehead and looked at Zhao Chen with a slightly admiring gaze. Zhao Chen, your fire control is impressive. Zhao Chen wanted to add, not only am I good at it, but I also burn with passion. But Shiro's concerned words interrupted him, if your spiritual energy is low, remember to tell me, I'll take over. As long as you like it, I can keep burning like this. Zhao Chen originally wanted to say this, hesitated for a moment, and decided not to undermine this silly girl's worldview. After all, she didn't know that the energy source of this flamethrower was the ion reactor on the chest of the mecha. To solve the problem of rapid spiritual energy consumption, either replenish spiritual energy, or eliminate spiritual energy, heavy checkmark. The reactor is not better than spiritual energy? What era is this, still using traditional Dantian? Like this, the two walked for another 10 minutes, and the strange fire in Zhao Chen's hand never went out, nor did it show any signs of spiritual energy depletion. He even yawned. This made Shi Ro and Lu Chengfeng amazed. Brother Zhao not only has extraordinary supernatural powers, but also has such abundant spiritual energy. As long as he doesn't hide his brilliance, he will definitely stand out in this era of outstanding talents. Although the wave of mice is nothing compared to the warrior's happy can, the continuous number of them still makes Zhao Chen slightly tired. So many mice, is this Mickey's wonderful house? Then he looked at the charcoal all over the ground behind him. Oh, this place should be called Mickey's not-so-wonderful house now. Suddenly, Zhao Chen's footsteps stopped because he saw a huge rat head reaching out towards him with intense heat. The next moment, sharp claws fiercely slashed across the chest of the broken army mecha. Accompanied by the sharp and grating sound of metal friction, the hard chest plate of the mecha was marked with three deep imprints. 
Another bloodthirsty evil rat. Although it was much smaller in size, its strength was obviously superior to the previous one. Everyone, I'm a little exhausted. Zhao Chen frowned and retreated behind the two, please help me. In the cave, unable to activate the ion shield, Zhao Chen felt a little cowardly, but it should be fine. Faced with Zhao Chen's sudden retreat, the two main characters of Destiny looked at him with suspicion, but then they each displayed their own abilities and attacked the rat. A mysterious light shot out from the center of Shi Ro's eyebrows, carrying the power to shatter everything. Lu Chengfeng also swung his light sword, with a killing intent in the sword aura. However, the remnant soul in Lu Chengfeng's mind, after witnessing Shi Ro's attack, was shocked, supreme bone, heavenly calamity light. So that's how it is. The rat also did not expect that two spirited young men would suddenly appear. There was a big doubt in its small eyes. Let's interview the feelings of the rat involved. A strong man came into my house and wanted to scald my head without saying a word. Can I tolerate that? I just gave a swipe to the iron can of the emo teacher Tony and scared him away on the spot. Who knew that behind Tony, there were two other guys attacking me from both sides. I'm really angry, you know. Angry or not, facing the attacks of the two main characters of Destiny, the evil rat was beheaded by Lu Qingfeng's sword in the head and then shattered by the heavenly calamity light, leaving only half of its head, which was smashed dozens of meters away and fell into the darkness behind. It wasn't until the blocking evil rat moved away that the three of them realized that behind it was not a narrow rock wall, but a huge cavernous space. The group entered the space, and the previous evil rat had already fully recovered, screeching and pouncing on Lu Chengfeng, who was at the forefront. Lu Chengfeng extended his light sword to cut off the claws that the evil rat swung at him, but was still hit by its tail and flew sideways, crashing heavily into the rock wall. This rat has a nascent soul realm physical body, be careful. Shi Ro shouted loudly. Just as she finished speaking, she saw Zhao Chen activating the ion shield, holding a blue light sword, and charging straight ahead. Just because I couldn't activate the shield in the corridor, do you think I'm afraid of you? How can we let brother Zhao take risks alone? As soon as Lu Cheng Feng entered, he was immediately attacked. He wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and took up his golden sword to join the fight. The nascent soul rat was forced to retreat by the two of them, its body constantly being damaged and healed in a never-ending cycle. Shi Ro was about to help, but she saw a deep black crack slowly expanding behind the rat. It was the Gue Su Rift. Upon closer inspection, Shi Ro realized that the rift had simultaneously connected the first and third levels. Although Zhao Chen didn't know the difference between the levels, he could sense from Shi Ro's tone that the situation was pretty bad. Shi Ro attacked the demonic rat with all her might and urged, we need to act fast. Otherwise, we'll be in big trouble once the rift fully forms. Unfortunately, the flesh of this bloodthirsty rat had already reached the nascent soul stage, surrounded by demonic energy and recovering at an astonishing speed. Even though it was surrounded by Zhao Chen and the others, it still held its ground. The battle reached a stalemate, and they couldn't get close to the Gue Su Rift. For the first time, Zhao Chen felt that he had encountered a formidable opponent in terms of endurance. Could he endure this? It was a great challenge to his dignity as a man. So Zhao Chen shouted, if I find a way to crush it, can you break its demonic energy? Yes. Shi Ro and Lu Chengfeng shouted simultaneously. Zhao Chen nodded and said, hold it back. As soon as he finished speaking, Lu Chengfeng and Shi Ro reacted. They each launched a fierce attack, driving the bloodthirsty rat towards Zhao Chen. The blue flames on the back of the broken army mech lit up, and it appeared in front of the rat in an instant. Then, its two mechanical arms tightly held the rat, and the outer panel of the reactor on the mech's chest slowly opened. With the restriction of the outer panel removed, the ion energy that could be used for 50 years surged out in an instant, burning into the body of the bloodthirsty rat. The rat's skin turned red, its back swelled, and then it gradually grew larger until it exploded into charred fragments on the ground. Seizing the opportunity, Shiro unleashed a golden fist imprint, annihilating the overwhelming demonic energy. As the demonic energy dissipated, the fragments on the ground, which had been moving and recovering, finally lost their vitality and turned into blackened residue. By the time the three of them killed the rat, the growth of the rift was nearing its end, and countless chaotic and indescribable mist dispersed from it. Not good, we must destroy it immediately. Shiro's face turned serious. She was about to step forward when she suddenly seemed to sense something and her expression changed dramatically. She swiftly jumped aside. Boom! A huge black palm print struck where Shiro had been standing, causing the ground in the entire cave to sink a foot deep. With the surging black mist at the rift, an old man in a black robe slowly appeared. He he he, how wonderful! If I had intervened a little later, you might have succeeded based on the many fantasy novels Zhao Chen had read, there were many ways to court death 
but wearing a black robe and laughing weirdly definitely ranked in the top three. Zhao Chen looked at this strange old man and sighed slightly, Old man, you dare to wear a black robe and laugh weirdly. It seems like you're not far from death. The old man sneered, an ignorant junior at the foundation establishment stage, yet you dare to speak so arrogantly? As soon as he finished speaking, the demonic energy behind the old man condensed into a huge skeleton and flew towards Zhao Chen. Zhao, he's at the nascent soul stage, don't underestimate him. Lu Cheng Feng loudly reminded from the side. Was this the nascent soul old monster that could suppress an entire region? The broken army mech instantly activated its ion shield at full power, but it still couldn't withstand the impact of the demonic energy skeleton. The entire ion shield was instantly corroded like ice and lava, and Zhao Chen was blasted away by the powerful force. The power of the nascent soul stage was truly formidable. At a critical moment, Shiro took out a delicate jade talisman, which burst into a more oppressive attack and headed straight for the old man in the black robe. An attack jade talisman from the nascent soul stage? The old man frowned and didn't dare to be careless. He suppressed Zhao Chen's power, mobilized all the demonic energy behind him, and transformed it into a huge skull to block in front of him. Zhao Chen sat on the ground, watching the old man's actions with disdainful shaking of his head, attacking the skull, defending against the skull. Does this guy only recognize skulls? If you had a little more imagination, it wouldn't be so lacking. Shiro quickly ran over and helped Zhao Chen up from the ground, saying, he needs to channel power for the rift and can't go all out. We can. Before Shiro could finish speaking, another skull made of demonic energy came crashing down. Zhao Chen hugged Shiro tightly, and the propulsion module of the mech operated at overload, barely dodging this attack. Wait, this isn't right, is it? Wasn't it said that the villain wouldn't attack when the protagonist was charging up, transforming, and discussing? Fortunately, the damage to the broken army mech was not significant. The shoulder cannon aimed at the old man and fired at full power. Although it was blocked by numerous black mists, it successfully held off the old man's next attack. The old man was not annoyed, but instead laughed wickedly again. The attack jade talisman from the Yaochi Holy Land. Is it still of nascent soul quality? You, this little beauty, must at least be a direct disciple. Before, there were four little girls who came in and courted death. Now, another direct disciple has come. He he he, I wonder what expression those high and mighty women who are always looking down on others would have if I killed a direct disciple. In just the few breaths they had just fought, the surging demonic energy behind the old man had increased by more than double, and the powerful pressure made all three of them struggle to catch their breath. What did you do to them? Shiro asked angrily. What did I do? Of course, I threw them into the abyss to feed the rats. But it's a pity to feed such a beauty like you to the rats. When my main projection descends, I will refine you into a furnace. He he he. The old man smirked lewdly, and ten demonic energy skulls formed above his head, bringing with them a suffocating pressure as they smashed towards Shiro and Zhao Chen. Just now, it was already so difficult to dodge one, and now ten came at once. This is really bad. At this moment, Shiro was extremely angry, her silver teeth almost grinding to pieces, but she didn't lose her composure. She once again took out a jade talisman, but before she could use it, a wisp of demonic energy shot out from the old man's fingertips and knocked it down to the ground. When facing a powerful opponent, no matter how many life-saving treasures you have, you may not even have a chance to use them. Just as the skulls were about to crush them, a sword aura exploded, sweeping away all the demonic energy in the cave. At this moment, Lu Chengfeng stood in midair, his eyes shining brightly, and the sword aura in his hand surged. Obviously, the big shot in his mind had made a move. Truly worthy of being the protagonist with a destined fate, each and every one of them has their own trump cards. What about his own trump card? Is he still doing research? Well, that's fine then. Sorry for the interruption. Zhao Chen silently recorded the scene of the two destined protagonists using their unique abilities to fight against a powerful enemy. Given time, when these two become famous, this scene will surely become a world-famous painting. He even has a name in mind for it. Let's call it Spring and Autumn Engaged in Research. Look, Zhao Chen, Lu Chengfeng, and Shi Ro joining forces to confront a formidable enemy. What about Spring and Autumn? They're engaged in research. The old man in the black robe looked at Lu Chengfeng, who was surrounded by expensive special effects, and naturally knew that he was not easy to deal with. He immediately withdrew his power and prepared to face him head on. Lu Chengfeng swung his sword again, and before the old man could react, his head was already severed by the dazzling sword light. This is what a true sword cultivator looks like. The sword light shines, and the head falls. In the next moment, the radiance all over Lu Chengfeng's body dissipated, and he fell to the ground, looking weak. Zhao Chen watched silently and shook his head. 
Although Lou Buddy's beheading move was cool, his appearance afterwards was really pathetic. The cooldown on this ultimate move is too fast. Who knows when it will refresh again just as the three of them thought that the major threat had been eliminated and they could finally relax, a tremor came from the depths of the abyss, and a terrifying pressure descended upon them. The three of them were struck as if by lightning and instantly overwhelmed. Even the sturdy outer layer of their mech creaked under the immense pressure. In a daze, a figure appeared in their minds. It is said that tens of thousands of spirits kneel in reverence, a thousand ghost soldiers pave the way, the song of injustice has been sung for three thousand years, and the wedding procession stretches for millions of miles. Shiro, pinned to the ground, struggled to utter a few words, the lord of the third level of the ruins, the queen of the underworld. Shiro, hasn't your sanctuary come to support us yet? Lu Chengfeng knelt on the ground and said with difficulty, they're still on their way. What do we do now? If we had the full power of a nascent soul cultivator, we might be able to destroy the rift. Lu Chengfeng said with difficulty, Golden Core, Nascent Soul, Divine Transformation. If they were only at the nascent soul stage, the three of them might be able to come up with a solution, but the gap in cultivation between two major realms was like an insurmountable chasm. Upon hearing this, Zhao Chen suddenly said, Everyone, I have a plan, but once we use it, we may all perish. Lu Chengfeng laughed heartily, since we're all going to die at the hands of the ruins, it's worth it if we can destroy this rift. To die here is worth it. Shi Ro also struggled to raise her head. Indeed, those who can become protagonists have a breadth of mind and magnanimity that ordinary people cannot reach. Of course, Zhao Chen is by no means a reckless person eager to die. Compared to everyone being wiped out after the rift opens, he took the initiative to break the deadlock, and with the destinies of the two protagonists, he might be able to exchange for a glimmer of hope. After weighing the pros and cons, Zhao Chen thought it was time for some ruthless action, so he smiled slightly, opened the space gate in his storage ring, and a round bullet slowly appeared. Just as a small tip emerged, Shi Ro and Lu Chengfeng, who had a strong sixth sense, felt a hint of death threat and looked at each other in horror. Seeing their terrified expressions, Zhao Chen shook his head helplessly. The little tip of the nuclear bomb has just appeared, and those with a strong sense will be scared to a stop by the power of the hydrogen bomb. It's not a good sign. Lu Chengfeng felt uneasy and quickly asked, Brother Zhao, what is this? Zhao Chen looked at Lu Chengfeng, who was blocking his view of the nuclear bomb, and said, Don't look. Why? Because if you look again, it will explode. Then, Zhao Chen exerted all his strength to activate the broken army mech, struggling to stand up, and the metal skeleton of the mech made a sound of unbearable burden. He walked to the edge of the ruins rift with difficulty and manually activated the tactical nuclear bomb in his hand, throwing it into the rift. Hydrogen, hydrogen, wake up the sleeping soul sensing a terrifying power blooming in the ruins, a cold and resentful female voice sounded from the other end of the rift. Where did this insect come from? Zhao Chen's actions directly angered the owner of the third level of the ruins, the queen of the underworld. With just one word, Zhao Chen felt as if he had fallen into an icy cave, his blood and thoughts frozen, as if locked in by an extreme evil intention, unable to move. If he had the ability to converse with the queen of the underworld, Zhao Chen would definitely say, F asterisk 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 you. However, the scorching energy of the nuclear bomb did not wait for anyone. In the next moment, Zhao Chen's eyes were filled with dazzling white light. Just as the fireball of the nuclear bomb exploded, a pair of giant spiritual hands crossed space and directly carried the three of them out of the mountain cave, appearing on another mountaintop in the distance. A middle-aged woman appeared in front of them, wearing a colorful robe, but exuding the aura of an exterminating master. When she saw Shiro in front of her, she slightly lowered her head and said, I was delayed by the power of the queen of the underworld just now. I apologize for the late rescue, holy maiden. Elder Yuan. Shiro's eyes lit up. Seeing this scene, Jachin immediately understood that the person Shiro had called for had arrived well, as the holy maiden of a sacred place, how could your means of self-preservation be so weak? It's really disappointing to see that the holy maiden of the esteemed Yaochi Holy Land is not proactive when faced with danger. She ended up wasting a tactical nuclear bomb and almost got stuck in a cave. Do you know how precious the tactical nuclear bomb is to me? Zhao Chen felt his heart bleeding. After finishing his business this spring and autumn, he must bring another hundred of them and knock on the door of the Yaochi Holy Land whenever he feels like it. Shi Ro looked at the middle-aged woman, her eyes shimmering with a hint of water. Elder Yuan, junior sister Ishue, is dead. This is the negligence of the sect. We didn't expect the Guishu believers to interfere, the middle-aged woman sighed heavily. There will always be sacrifices in the fight against Guishu. She turned to look in the direction of Yao Ding Mountain, where a force belonging to the scorching sun was brewing within the mountain. 
The middle-aged woman waved her sleeve, and a huge white light curtain enveloped the entire mountain. Then she sighed, this strike has at least the power of the nascent soul stage. I wonder whose magical power it is. Zhao Chen's heart trembled, oh no, is this old lady interested in me? Boom. Just then, accompanied by a deafening roar, Lu Chengfeng and Shi Rou both felt a tremor and vibration deep in their souls. In the next moment, cracks spread from the foot of the mountain, crawling all over the entire mountain, and then the majestic Yao Ding mountain swelled up, spewing rocks and dust into the sky from the cracks and gullies, crashing into the white light curtain. Just as the woman was about to retract the light curtain, she frowned and realized that things were not simple. The previous explosion was still powerful even though it was separated by the mountain, and now, with the entire mountain peak collapsing, the unstoppable and mighty force erupted without any obstacles. A golden sun appeared in the shattered mountain, and the previously deafening sound disappeared at this moment, leaving a moment of silence, with only the blazing white light in front of them. The radiant light illuminated the night in the mountains as if it were daytime, as if the scorching sun in the sky had descended to the ground, burning away all evil and darkness. Like a golden lotus born from the earth, transcending all evil, it seemed like a divine presence, holding the scorching sun. The golden sun quickly expanded, and a visible shockwave swept through the surrounding mountains. Fortunately, several stationed cultivators arranged by Shiro had some means to protect the village with their treasures in the face of the shockwave, otherwise the consequences would be unimaginable. As the dazzling light and shockwave dissipated, a mushroom-shaped black cloud rose, covering the sky. The tactical nuclear bomb explosion was only meant to block the pure white light curtain's power, but now it shattered and dissipated under the explosion of this round of scorching sun. Sure Ro, with her lips slightly open and her eyes wide open, was completely stunned. Although this was a victory achieved with intention, Elder Yuan was a strong returnee from the Guishu realm, and the light curtain that came so easily was not so easily broken. It seemed that what young Master Zhao said before, that all three of them might be wiped out, was not just a fabrication. As the explosion subsided, the middle-aged woman looked at the flattened Yao Ding mountain and narrowed her eyes. This is an unprecedented move. If properly arranged, it could harm the unity stage. After speaking, the middle-aged woman's sharp gaze swept between Zhao Chen and Lu Chengfeng. Seeing the other two looking at her, Zhao Chen knew that it was impossible to keep a low profile now. Senior, this is an opportunity that I happen to come across. It also has many limitations when used. If you are interested, I can tell you more about it later, Zhao Chen replied cautiously. Yuan Qian, the middle-aged woman, as an elder, rare when the other party responded openly and even seemed a bit solicitous, Zhao Chen's cautious heart relaxed slightly. At this moment, there was still no response from Chuanxiao. The most urgent task was to stabilize the current situation with this formidable master Tai. If she had any evil intentions and wanted to kill or seize the treasure, Zhao Chen would be defenseless. Only Lu Chengfeng couldn't understand the atmosphere at all, his bright eyes wide open, full of curiosity. Brother Zhao, what is this move called? Lu Chengfeng asked, puzzled. Ching Ching knock. Zhao Chen had just said two words when he felt the pressure emanating from Yuan Chen beside him, realizing that it wasn't a joking matter. He cleared his throat and said solemnly, startling waves at sunset. It was the first time Lu Chengfeng had seen Zhao Chen so serious, and he realized that these four words were extraordinary. As powerful as startling waves, as radiant as the scorching sun, as heavy as the setting sun, Lu Chengfeng said softly, watching the glow on the horizon rise, suddenly feeling something in his heart, and sat down on the spot. The reason he had been stuck at the foundation building stage before was because he couldn't find his own sword intent. Now, it seemed like he had found it. The young man sitting cross-legged furrowed his brows, and the surrounding spiritual energy gathered around him, emitting a faint glow and smoke. Seeing this scene, Sure Ro couldn't help but be stunned. Enlightenment? In the next moment, the wind and clouds surged around, and the sun finally rose, casting a golden dawn on Lu Chengfeng. Lu Chengfeng unsheathed the sword in his hand and struck out. Accompanied by a buzzing sword hum, a purple golden sword aura rippled out. The young man swung his sword, and the purple chi came from the east for 30,000 miles. The sword energy swirling around Lu Chengfeng gathered in front of his dantian, and a small golden pill suddenly appeared. The moment the golden pill appeared, the spiritual energy of the heavens and earth converged upon it. Boom, boom, boom. As the layers of the golden pill stacked up, in just a moment, it had reached the eighth layer. Seeing this, Shiro was also astonished. An eighth layer golden pill? In the next moment, Lu Chengfeng, who was condensing the golden pill, heard the voice of the old man in his mind. Chengfeng, let me lend you a hand. A clear sword chant resounded through the heavens and earth and Lu Qingfeng's final transformation of the golden pill was about to take shape amidst the sword chant. A ninth layer golden pill, just like me. 
In Sure Rose eyes, besides shock, there was also the joy of discovering an opponent. Unexpectedly, Yuan Xian suddenly spoke up, with a transparent sword heart, the assistance of this ninth layer golden pill, and an unfathomable opportunity. Holy maiden, he will become your archenemy on the path to becoming an emperor. In the era of the emperor star, a time of great contention, even though countless geniuses were astonishing, only one person could reach the realm of the emperor in the end, a realm said to be only half a step away from immortality. Shiro was stunned when she heard this, Elder Yuan, I don't quite understand what you mean. At the same time, in the sword sect in Yangzhou, a middle-aged man slowly opened his eyes in his cave and looked towards Qingzhou, who was breaking through with such exceptional sword intent. In the next moment, a figure shot out from the peak of the sword sect. The elder disciples below the mountain were all astonished, the sect master has come out of seclusion? Boom! The pressure from the powerful return to ruin realm experts suddenly spread out, and Zhao Chen suddenly felt as if a mountain weighing tens of thousands of tons was pressing down on his shoulders. His heart skipped a beat, and his blood ran cold. He didn't have time to retract the smile on his face and froze. This was the killing intent of a return to ruin realm expert. Lu Chengfeng's talent had aroused Yuan Qian's jealousy. As an elder of the Yaoqi sect, she wanted to eliminate future obstacles for her holy maiden in this desolate wilderness. Witnessing the high-level members of the Yaoqi sect take action against the young genius, Zhao Chen didn't think he would be able to leave here alive. Lu Chengfeng was a threat to Shi Ro's future. And wasn't he who could unleash an attack at the nascent soul stage as well? Lu Chengfeng was also disturbed by Yuan Qian's powerful pressure, grunting, but not daring to make any movements, just focusing all his efforts on stabilizing the golden pill. If it were a little earlier, he could still give up on condensing the ninth level of the golden pill and escape with all his might, or borrow the power of the old man in his mind and fight with all his might. However, at this moment, the old man's power is almost gone and it is unknown whether it can support the battle with the return to Ruin's realm. The Golden Pill has also entered the condensing of the ninth level, and it is like an arrow on the string, it must be released. Shiro is also enveloped by the oppressive pressure that does not distinguish between friend and foe, her body stiff, and she can only speak with difficulty, Elder Yuan. Lu Chengfeng is a good person. You can't kill him. Yuan Qian's face is cold and unyielding, holy maiden, in this generation, you must become the emperor, any unexpected factors should be eliminated. Shi Ro takes a difficult step and stands in front of Lu Chengfeng, the emperor's path without strong enemies, is meaningless. The pressure from Yuan Qian strengthens a bit, holy maiden, step aside, I will clear the obstacles along the way for you, these karmic ties and causes and effects, I will bear them alone. You can't bear it. Zhao Chen's voice, full of anger, resounded. Just now, the earpiece of the broken army mech heard a long-lost voice, the research on the spring and autumn has ended. Spring and autumn, activate the annihilation cannon, lock onto this old witch for me, Zhao Chan ordered. Although the Xian Yuan annihilation cannon was severely damaged and lacked energy, it still had the function of locking onto targets. As the top annihilation weapon of the Federation, the targeting method was not simply a straight line connecting three points, but it locked onto the entire space where the target was located. The return to Ruin's realm was the earliest realm to come into contact with spatial power, and its sensitivity to spatial power was extremely high. In just a breath, Yuan Qian sensed something abnormal. Accompanied by a huge roar that ordinary people couldn't perceive, the space she was in was locked by a strange power. This power was not strong, it was even in the stage before it gathered strength, but the feeling it gave Yuan Qian was indescribably terrifying. Yuan Chen felt as if she was being stared at by a hidden powerhouse, and extreme coldness penetrated her bones, cold sweat dripped from her forehead, and she dared not move. Temporarily deterring Yuan Chen with the annihilation cannon, Zhao Chen dared not slack off in his mind, frantically thinking of a way to break the deadlock. The current annihilation cannon was severely lacking in energy, and it was impossible to launch an attack. Once Yuan Chen discovered something abnormal, the two of them would still be unable to escape death. Just as the situation reached a stalemate, a figure broke through the air. The person who came was a middle-aged man, dressed in a blue robe and holding a long sword in his arms. His gaze was extremely sharp, as if it could penetrate time and space. His demeanor was majestic and awe-inspiring. In the moment he appeared, the space that was locked returned to normal, and the oppressive pressure from Yuan Qian quietly dissipated. You are. Yuan Qian looked at the person and struggled to say a few words, master of the hidden sword. The middle-aged man ignored Yuan Qian and turned to look at Lu Chengfeng. He waved his hand gently, and a golden light curtain rose around Lu Chengfeng. Was he protecting Lu Chengfeng? In the next moment, the middle-aged man reached out and grabbed the spiritual energy of the nearby world in his palm, 
and then sent it into the light curtain around Lu Chengfeng. With the support of a massive amount of spiritual energy, the condensation of the ninth level of the golden pill finally broke through the last barrier. A majestic tide of spiritual energy surged, and Lu Chengfeng opened his eyes, his eyes shining with divine light, and sword energy swirling around him. He bowed to the middle-aged man, thank you, senior, for helping me. My nine transformation golden pill is finally complete. The middle-aged man's expression remained indifferent, the sword intent just now, did you comprehend it yourself? Lu Chengfeng respectfully nodded. I am Yi Tian Ran, the current master of the Hidden Sword Sect. Would you be willing to accept me as your master? The middle-aged man was obviously not good at words, and he spoke straightforwardly. The Hidden Sword Sect, one of the six major sects, is also the holy land that all sword cultivators in the world aspire to. Seeing this, Lu Chengfeng immediately knelt down and bowed. I, Lu Chengfeng, pay my respects to master. Kuji Tianran's face showed a faint smile, then turned to look at Yuan Qian. Last time I met Song Yenning, I didn't see you by her side. I guess you are a newly promoted return to Ruin's realm in the past hundred years. Your hostility is too strong, your character is too poor, and your vision is too narrow. It will be difficult for you to achieve anything in this lifetime, Yi Tian Ran said, his tone becoming colder. Song Yenning is the name of the Holy Lord of Yao Qi Holy Land. Only people of the same level as her dare to call her by her name. Yi Tianran's words were plain, but they sounded chilling. During this return to Ruin's calamity, if you harm our clan's genius, even if I kill you on the spot, Song Yenning won't say a word. Yuan Qian now had a look of resignation on her face, opening her mouth to say something but finding herself unable to speak. Sensing that Yi Tianran's tone was off, Shi Ro immediately spoke up, Senior Yi, please spare Elder Yuan for the sake of my master. After we return to the Holy Land, I will have my master punish her. Yi Tianran glanced at Shi Ro and his expression softened slightly, your character and talent are excellent, just lacking some tempering. Song Yenning has taken in a good disciple. In the next moment, Yuan Qian's left arm was severed from her shoulder. Everyone was shocked, unable to see the sword light or when the sword was drawn. A return to Void Realm cultivator had his arm severed in an instant. Lu Chengfeng is now my disciple. Since you have murderous intent towards him, I will cut off a hundred years of your cultivation as a small punishment. Do you have any objections? They say that sword cultivators are the most difficult to deal with among cultivators. They have strong combat power, heavy killing intent, and straightforward thinking. Yuan Qian's cold sweat soaked her clothes, and at this moment, she could only shake her head. Just then, another figure arrived, it was the holy lord of Yaoqi, Song Yenning. Yi Tian Ran, it's been a hundred years, and your stubbornness hasn't changed at all, the enchanting woman appeared, teasing Yi Tian Ran for a few words before giving Yuan Qian a cold glance, as an elder of Yaoqi, it's embarrassing for such news to spread. Go back and receive punishment from the disciplinary hall. Only now did Yuan Chen break free from the oppressive killing intent of the great accomplishment realm expert, picking up her severed arm and leaving in a sorry state. With the troublemaker gone, the two holy lords no longer paid attention to their disciples and both turned their gaze towards Zhao Chen. Zhao, may we have a word with you? Zhao Chen suddenly felt immense pressure. The so-called having a word was simply the two holy lords waving their hands to create a pure white space, isolating everything around them. Even the information link between Xu Enqiu and Zhao Chen was severed in the instant the pure white space unfolded. Zhao, there are many causes and effects behind you that even I cannot see through. It's truly interesting, Yi Tian Ran spoke first. Song Yenning also looked at Zhao Chen with a playful gaze. I wonder if you can reveal a bit about the forces behind you? Zhao Chen furrowed his brows slightly. With Xu Enqiu backing him and carrying the burden of crossing worlds, it was natural for him to attract the attention of the big shots. Since he was already being questioned, Zhao Chen felt he should say something. He wasn't done living yet and didn't want to be killed on the spot as an outsider. Two seniors, it is difficult for me to reveal too much about my origins. I can only briefly explain within the limits allowed by the Heavenly Tao. Hearing the words Heavenly Tao, both of them froze for a moment. I come from an ancient kingdom, one that is far older than the combined history of the six major holy lands. My kingdom was destroyed by a calamity similar to the return to ruins, and I, by chance, crossed the river of time and came to this world. When speaking to the big shots, one had to mix truth and falsehood, presenting true statements as false and letting them interpret it themselves. After all, who knows if the cultivation world has a way to detect lies. The Star River Federation does indeed have a longer history than the six major holy lands combined, and it was indeed destroyed by creatures similar to the return to ruins. He also did experience the river of time both holy lords seemed thoughtful, and in the end, it was Song Yenning who spoke first, since they are enemies of the ruins, you will gain friendship from Yao Qi. 
Yi Tianran also followed, saying, The Hidden Sword Holy Land has no hostility towards the ancient kingdom. I hope your arrival can bring a turning point to this world. Zhao Chen remained calm on the surface, but he breathed a sigh of relief in his heart, finally managing to brush it off. As the pure white space dispersed, Zhao Chen saw that Lu Chengfeng and Shi Rou had already started fighting for some reason. Just as Zhao Chen was about to step forward, he was stopped by Yi Tianran, don't worry, it's just a friendly match. Those with courage will always have a competitive spirit. As prodigies in a world of great competition, they naturally yearn to battle against other strong individuals. Seeing that the two of them had no major issues, Zhao Chen stopped paying attention to the dynamics of the battlefield and re-established the spiritual connection within his mecca, engaging in a conversation with Xuanxiao. Captain, it's been a few days, and you've caused quite a stir. Even tactical nuclear bombs have been used. Zhao Chen smiled awkwardly and changed the subject. You've been gone for so long, how is the progress of spiritual energy cultivation? I have already developed a method to fully replace the original energy with spiritual energy, and it has many advantages compared to neutron star energy, but, but, Zhao Chen had a bad feeling. In order to repair Shihua as soon as possible, Captain, you need to earn a lot of spirit stones for me, well, that's no problem. Seeing that the captain was not enthusiastic, Xuanxiao immediately comforted him, Captain, taking care of me will only bring you benefits this time, I have also prepared something good for you, but it requires a little mental preparation. Listening to Xuanxiao's introduction, Zhao Chen felt his eyelids twitch, are you sure it's something good? Xuanxiao spoke innocently, of course it's something good. With your cultivation talent, it would take at least 300 years to condense a golden pill. So, I used the technology of the Federation's micro-reactor and combined it with the golden pill you provided to create the first generation of mechanical golden pills. It can also be called a micro-spiritual energy reactor. It is twice the size of the original golden pill and has 348 times the power. Wow, they've even modified the golden pill? 348 times. Does that mean a golden core realm cultivator can kill a nascent soul realm cultivator with just one punch? What do you mean by mental overcoming? Xuanxiao's tone suddenly became serious, this golden pill needs to be inserted into the captain's abdomen. And with future technological upgrades, there will probably be fewer and fewer original parts left in the captain's body. Upon hearing this, Zhao Chen felt a chill in his abdomen. It's fortunate that it's the abdomen, which is acceptable for now, as long as it doesn't affect other parts. The paths of technological evolution and spiritual evolution are irreversible. Once the captain chooses the path of technological evolution, it means that he can no longer follow the traditional path of cultivation. Contrary to Chuenxiao's expectations, Zhao Chen did not hesitate, then let's go with the technological path. With such a large treasure mine like Shihua, why should I struggle to absorb spiritual energy? I'm probably just wasting my time. Can any man resist the temptation of mechanical ascension? No. If there is, it can only be due to two reasons. One, the machine is not handsome enough. Two, ascension will affect my... With Zhao Chen's permission, Xuanxiao immediately began to make arrangements. Zhao Chen's thoughts were also brought back to reality by the intense sound of explosions. He looked up and saw that Lu Chengfeng and Shi Rou had been blasted away, one to the left and one to the right. As the children of destiny, the so-called invincibility of the same level and the meaning of fighting against higher-level opponents had been lost. However, Shi Rou had been in the Golden Core realm for a longer time than Lu Chengfeng, so she still had a considerable advantage compared to Lu Chengfeng who had just broken through to the Golden Core Realm. If it weren't for Lu Chengfeng's fierce and explosive sword intent, it would have been difficult for him to match Shi Rou. Watching the two of them jumping around like monkeys, constantly using their attacks to counter each other's attacks, creating fireworks in the air, Zhao Chen couldn't help but think, Xuanxiao, can I intervene in their fight while wearing the broken army mecha? After calculations, if the captain himself is driving, there is an 87.6% chance that they will be beaten by them. Do you look down on me like that? But if I remotely control the captain's mecha, I have a 94.3% chance of successfully mediating. Zhao Chen widened his eyes at the words, Wow, so it's possible to have a substitute? It's decided, Xuanxiao sauce. He smirked mischievously and piloted the broken army mecha to fly between the two, Stop. Don't fight anymore. It won't kill anyone like this. The two who were already engaged in a heated battle heard this and their breathing paused, almost falling from the sky. This won't kill anyone? What kind of nonsense is this? The two big shots watching from the side glanced at each other, their expressions becoming strange. Although this Zhao Jr. had extraordinary talent and many mysterious aspects, his words and actions were somewhat beyond reason and not bound by worldly conventions. 
Zhao Qin looked at the two on his left and right, fighting like this is too boring. I don't know when it will end. Let's try a different approach. What approach? Lu Chengfeng asked. One on one. Shi Ro furrowed her eyebrows, one on one? Aren't Lu Chengfeng and I already doing that? Zhao Qin shook his head repeatedly, no, no, no. I mean, me alone, one on one with both of you, and I promise not to use the shocking waves at sunset first. What? Lu Chengfeng heard this and stiffened on the spot. His fist clenched. Lu Chengfeng and Shi Ro exchanged glances and gradually reached a consensus. So arrogant, let's teach him a lesson. In the next moment, Zhao Qin directly disconnected the Mecha's operational authority and switched to Chuenqiu's control. The holographic radar of the Mecha keenly captured Lu Chengfeng's grip on the sword hilt, and then the supercomputer instantly analyzed the state of his muscles and joints, deducing 31 possible future trajectories of his actions. Chuenqiu piloted the broken army Mecha to fly to the left, and then, in the instant when Lu Chengfeng's sword energy slashed, it performed an aerial somersault in the opposite direction, with seven layers of mock rings on the blue flames of the thrusters. In just an instant, when Lu Chengfeng's sword light arrived, the broken army mecha had just left its previous position, narrowly avoiding the reactor on its chest being grazed. Damn! Zhao Qin felt his body covered in goosebumps, adrenaline surging madly, why is it so exciting when women fight? However, at this moment, Xuanxiu had no spare time to consider the captain's mental state, fully focusing on computing and allocating various data. The sword trajectory is the 28th route, prediction successful, recorded in the calculation library, begin analyzing the target's attack habits. Then, based on Lu Qingfeng's sword habits, the predicted trajectory for his next sword swing was reduced to 15. Another aerial somersault with a thrust of flames, this time, the distance between the sword light and the mecha was even greater, about the width of a palm. Shi Ro disdainfully refrained from launching a sneak attack from behind and appeared beside Lu Chengfeng, her spiritual energy surging as a huge fist imprint came towards them. Compared to the solid and fierce sword energy, Shi Ro's fist imprint appeared more expansive, although the power was dispersed and weakened, the large attacking area made it impossible for the broken army mecha to dodge. Ion shield, full power. The golden fist imprint struck Zhao Chen's ion shield, sparks flying, but it did not break through the mecha's defense. Shi Ro, however, didn't get angry, instead smiling faintly. The purpose of her move had already been achieved. The mecha, which had stopped to withstand the fist imprint, was completely captured by Lu Chengfeng. In the next moment, a more intense sword intent slashed towards them. Brother Zhao, watch my move, it's somewhat similar to shocking waves at sunset. Playing tactics requires a cunning heart, both Shi Ro and Xuanxiu understood this. So when two tacticians collide, it depends on who is dirtier. Obviously, in terms of cunning, Shi Ro couldn't outplay that woman. As early as when Shiro joined the battlefield, the 173 possible actions she could take and the details of Lu Chengfeng gripping the sword handle when the mecha stopped to resist the fist imprint were all included in Xuanxiu's calculations. At this moment, Xuanxiu was like an old man with white hair smiling while holding the pieces in front of a chessboard, watching two bewildered children on the opposite side. It's just like an old man playing with mischievous children, still having the energy to brew a pot of tea. In the next moment, the broken army mecha sequentially deactivated the ion shields in various areas from left to right, and the residual shockwave from the fist imprint reached the surface of the mecha, with the shockwave that rushed in from the left side first, blasting the mecha to the right. Lu Qingfeng's sword intent once again grazed the surface armor of the mecha. Awesome! Zhao Qin was stunned by Chuenqiu's operation and couldn't help but exclaim. Perhaps he was just like those players who watched the Federation game live in his previous life. Although he was not skilled and didn't make the moves himself, it didn't stop him from thinking it was awesome. The two big shots watching on the side were also amazed. By using the aftermath of the enemy's attack to push oneself out of danger and create the most advantageous situation with the least loss for one's own side, this mature and cautious way of fighting, this skill and intuition, can only be cultivated through countless life and death trials. Zhao Xiaoyu, who has a pure and lively nature, is indeed not simple behind him. At this moment on the battlefield, the offensive and defensive positions quietly changed. Skill is only a part of strength. Power is equally important. In the face of exquisite skills, the advantage of power will be greatly weakened. Similarly, in the face of absolute power, skill will become meaningless. Xuanxiu's reasoning is like this. Mediating a fight requires both sides of the fight to be convinced and respected by the mediator. The respect of others is based on one's own strength. The simplest way to make the other party understand one's own strength is to defeat them. Therefore, it can be concluded that mediating a fight means defeating both sides of the fight. This reasoning process is flawless. Skill alone is not enough to defeat the opponent.
the left arm of the broken army mecha suddenly ejected a blue lightsaber, and then the mecha's propulsion system was fully powered on, rushing towards Lu Chengfeng, almost instantly. Lu Chengfeng sensed the hot energy on the blue lightsaber and immediately understood Zhao Chen's intention. A fighting spirit surged in his eyes, Brother Zhao, are you going to show me the true power of the sword? Understanding Zhao Chen's intentions, Lu Chengfeng stood his ground, the morning light sword in his hand surging with purple gold sword energy, slashing towards the blue lightsaber. The collision of purple gold and blue light produced a piercing buzzing sound. Detected rupture of the constraint force field, plasma lightsaber about to lose control. Both being lightsabers, who would have thought that Lu Laudi's lightsaber could cut through the magnetic field that restrained our own lightsaber? Is this the power of sword intent? As the system prompt sounded, Chunqiu immediately activated the mecha shield, cut off the energy supply to the lightsaber, and at the same time kicked Lu Chengfeng out of the center of the explosion. In the next moment, the high-temperature plasma that was restrained in the magnetic field broke free, exploding like a solar flare, and Lu Chengfeng's whole body surged with spiritual energy to resist, still feeling the oppressive feeling as if mountains were pressing down and the scorching sun was burning the city. Suddenly, Yi Tianran's figure flashed over, just reaching out his hand, and the highly concentrated plasma explosion was imprisoned in his hand, constantly suppressed, and finally annihilated into nothingness. Lu Chengfeng, who was saved by his master, had a shining gaze, full of envy and longing, is this the true power of the stunning sunset? Seeing this, Zhao Chen laughed heartily, Lu Laudi, I have a poem for you. The highest sword in my heart, should be like this poem. Drunk with flowers in a full hall, one sword chilling the fourteen provinces. As soon as these words came out, it was like a heavy hammer striking everyone present. One sword chilling the fourteen provinces. Lu Chengfeng looked up at Zhao Chen, his eyes filled with admiration and astonishment. Brother Zhao, what great talent you have to come up with such a magnificent artistic conception. It's a coincidence, but this world is divided into two camps. The human race dominates the eastern land, consisting of nine provinces, while the demon race occupies the western land, consisting of five provinces. Together, they make up a total of 14 provinces. Zhao Chen looked at the purple golden sword in Lu Chengfeng's hand and said, My ambition does not lie in the way of the sword, so I'm entrusting this sword to you. I hope that one day, you can reach the highest realm and witness the most beautiful scenery of the sword path for me. Lu Chengfeng was still immersed in the lingering charm of the sword's brilliance in the 14 provinces when Yi Tianran approached Zhao Chen and handed him a uniquely shaped jade token. Zhao, please accept this token of the guest position in the sword hiding sanctuary. Consider it as a gesture of goodwill between us. Zhao Chen knew it was just a nominal position with no real obligations, so he smiled and accepted it. Then he turned to Shiro and asked, Miss Shir, are you coming too? Shiro's eyes filled with fighting spirit as she replied, Of course, Zhao Chen. The Warbreaker mech charged towards Shiro, and at the same time, the mechanical module on its left arm quickly transformed into a pulse-heavy fist. Anticipating Shiro's incoming punch, the Warbreaker mech raised its left arm and unleashed the pulse-heavy fist. The small and tender fist collided with the pulse-iron fist, creating a visible shockwave. Both of them were shaken in the opposite direction by the tremendous force. Shiro rubbed her sore wrist, while on the Warbreaker mech's ally fist armor, there was a deep two-inch fist mark. With such terrifying physical qualities and energy density, marrying Shiro would mean never having to worry about opening a bottle cap again. This strength could easily crack open my skull. Thinking this, Zhao Chen couldn't help but shudder. In the next moment, Shiro flew into the air, surrounded by spiritual light, her eyes filled with an excited radiance. Zhao Chen, taste my move. Then, a silver divine light shot out from her forehead towards Zhao Chen. Song Yenning, who was watching the battle, narrowed her eyes. Only she knew how terrifying the power of Shiro's heavenly calamity light was. It could kill a nascent soul cultivator instantly. The Warbreaker mech immediately transformed as well. Two support columns extended from its back and connected to the ground, while countless mechanical components continuously assembled in front of its chest's ion reactor. A fierce cannon suddenly took shape. DUI bow? Is spring and autumn really that tough? Zhao Chen thought of the woman on the battleship and felt his heart tremble. In the next moment, terrifying laser energy surged out and collided head-on with the heavenly calamity light. It is said that one is destined to lose when facing a duel, but when it really came to his own duel, which side was left and which side was right? Zhao Chen looked at the several spectators standing on his left and thought from their perspective. Sure Ro was on the left. Ah, that's settled then. Sure enough, as the core of the mech operated at full power, the heavenly calamity light gradually retreated and eventually disappeared completely. The warbreaker mech also dimmed, and the entire plasma reactor was completely depleted. 
Shiro was blasted away by the laser and landed in a sorry state. She stared at Zhao Chen and pursed her lips, asking, what's the name of that move? Zhao Chen tilted his head and thought for a moment, then said, hmm, let's call it Crescent Moon Sky Charge. Shiro brushed off the dust from her body and laughed foolishly, revealing a pair of shiny little tiger teeth. I lost this time, but next time, I'll come and fight you again. Zhao Chen scratched his head and thought that he had just made a statement with Lu Chengfeng, so he couldn't let Shiro down. He had to say something inspiring. Lady Sure, I once had a fortuitous encounter and crossed the river of time to witness the magnificence of a supreme being. He walked the same path as you, but his experiences were a thousand times more arduous than yours. One sentence he said still lingers in my memory, and I will give it to you today. Who claims to be invincible? Who dares to say they are unbeatable? Even the era of the fallen emperor has passed. In the future, if I stand atop the heavens for all eternity, I will share the ages with all of you. This sentence shook Shiro's soul like a heavy hammer. It felt as if some profound idea had crossed the boundaries of time and space and resonated with her. The era of the fallen emperor. Yi Tianran's eyes narrowed, Zhao Xiaoyu has actually seen the powerful figures of the emperor's era. Zhao Xiaoyu mentioned that his country's history is ancient, but it was unexpected for Yi Tianran that it was even before the emperor's era. Zhao Chen was also taken aback. I just casually mentioned it, how come there really is an emperor's era? Looking at the two holy lords beside him, Zhao Chen had no choice but to make up a story. Now there's no truth to tell, hopefully the two big shots won't use the lie detection technique on him. The forbidden area of the emperor's era, known as the majestic forbidden area, is so powerful and evil that it is filled with blood and mountains of corpses, with blood flowing and killing intent permeating the air. Only the immortal emperor can set foot in this world. Countless ancestors fought here for the human race, but none returned. It is a place filled with corpses and bloodshed. The outlawed emperor Zhang San, how extraordinary he was back then, his cultivation was unparalleled, invincible in the world. But when he entered the majestic, forbidden area, he was crushed by a terrifying existence with a single punch, his cultivation was lost, and only a trace of divine consciousness escaped. He warned future generations not to enter the emperor's realm and not to trespass the forbidden area. That era, which is the origin of the forbidden area, is therefore called the emperor's era. The emperor's era, the majestic forbidden area, is it really so terrifying? Lu Chengfeng's eyes lit up with excitement. With a strange silence, Song Yining slowly walked to Zhao Chen's side, bringing a fragrant breeze and placing a jade-carved lily flower in Zhao Chen's hand. Zhao Xiaoyu, you can come to my Yaochi as a guest in your leisure time. We have many beautiful fairies in our holy land another guest token? Zhao Chen respectfully accepted it. Now that the exchange was over, the two holy lords were ready to leave with their disciples. Shiro beckoned to Zhao Chen, Zhao Chen, this is the jade swimming pill I promised you before. Its medicinal effect is very powerful. When I have finished cultivating, I will come and challenge you. Zhao Chen smiled faintly, took the storage ring handed over by Shiro, and then remembered the fist mark on his pulse impulse heavy armor, his mouth twitched slightly. Whoever marries this woman, I'm afraid they'll have bad luck for eight lifetimes. Lu Chengfeng also stepped forward and asked, Zhao Xiong, you previously mentioned that your ambition is not in the way of the sword. I wonder where your ambition lies. When we meet again in the future, we can have a friendly match. Zhao Chen smirked mischievously, naval warfare, the ship next to the character boat. After speaking, he stood up and tried to walk, but, huh, he couldn't move? He tried to switch to his right foot, huh? He looked down and realized that the mecha had run out of energy during his battle with Shiro just now. Without the support of energy, Zhao Chen couldn't even move the heavy broken army mecha. Lu Chengfeng and Shiro looked at Zhao Chen standing still, we two are about to leave, isn't Zhao Xiong coming with us? Zhao Chen sighed deeply, this journey will take years, it should be a beautiful illusion. I'll just see you off for now, you go ahead. This time, both Lu Chengfeng and Shiro's eyes turned red, and they clasped their fists solemnly, we'll meet again in the future, take care, Zhao Xiong slash Zhao Chen. Watching the two groups of people disappear into the shattered space, Zhao Chen immediately fell to the ground with a loud thud, along with the mecha. His fragile body couldn't even move the mecha, and without the mecha and equipment, he was nothing. Chuenxiao, can we start the mechanical golden pill plan? Captain, are you sure you want to proceed with the mechanical golden pill plan? Yes. Alright, the anti-gravity boarding cabin has been deployed, it will guide you to the Shihao. Zhao Chen put the broken army mecha and the pill given by Shiro into the storage ring, and waited in place for the arrival of the boarding cabin. Soon, a boarding cabin about the size of two Qilin tanks, equipped with anti-gravity devices, descended slowly from the sky. The outer layer of the boarding cabin was wrapped in dark armor, with a one-foot-wide porthole on each side. 
Zhao Chen smiled slightly and walked into the boarding cabin. Sitting in the seat inside the boarding cabin, feeling the slight acceleration, Zhao Chen was slowly lifted off the ground by the boarding cabin. After ascending for dozens of minutes, theoretically speaking, at this altitude, one should be able to see the entire planet. However, apart from the vast sky and the increasingly blurry continents, Zhao Chen didn't notice any changes. Captain, take a look outside the starboard window in the southeast direction, it's quite interesting, spring and autumn's voice echoed in the cabin. A huge golden fireball was passing by in the southeast direction of the cabin. If this incredible sight were in the previous world, it would surely shatter the worldview and beliefs of many federal scientists. However, in this world, it existed just like that. The day of law and the month of law. I once thought about using the power of the day of law when I was short of resources. But later I found out that it was simply impossible, spring and autumn's tone was full of disbelief. You can't imagine the energy contained in these two celestial bodies. Even the Shihao's maximum energy analyzer cannot analyze it. The energy they carry is likely to be a jelly constant. The jelly constant is incredibly huge and cannot be expressed in scientific notation. Even the exponential tower form of a carat, b carat, c carat, is useless, and even mathematicians find it difficult to understand. Wouldn't that mean an endless source of energy? Zhao Chen was stunned for a moment. If that were the case, wouldn't it mean that the matter and energy of this star were immortal and never worn out? If someone could harness the power of the day and month of law, wouldn't they become a true immortal in this cultivation world? Of course, as the highest source of power in the fantasy side, it could easily be used and controlled by the technology side, which would greatly diminish its value. At least with the current federal technology, it was impossible to make any changes or impact on this glaring behemoth. Staring at it for a while, Zhao Chen's eyes began to redden and tear up uncontrollably. He finally withdrew his gaze and looked down at the ground. Captain, the location where you initially landed is Qingzhou in the eastern land, in the southeast direction. At this moment, our Shihao is continuing to move south in the high sky. Even though this world has a round sky and square earth structure, Shihao can still maintain a trajectory similar to a high altitude orbit. Zhao Qin looked up at the sky upon hearing this. The high altitude Shihao worship was already in the distance. Previously, he only heard Spring and Autumn say that the Shihao worship was severely damaged, but as for how severe it was, Zhao Chen only vaguely received a number, 95%. Now that he saw the Shihao, the ship's condition was shocking. The proud East Emperor Ionic Shield of the Shihao had already dimmed completely, and the outer armor and turrets were almost completely shattered, with grim cracks and fissures everywhere. Only the dragon bones of the ship, cast in eternal gold, barely maintained the shape of the Shihao worship. Numbers were always pale and powerless. Only after witnessing it with his own eyes did Zhao Chen understand what it meant for the ship to be severely damaged. Soon, the cabin docked with the Shihao, and the cabin door slowly opened. Zhao Chen stepped onto the Shihao deck once again, feeling a bit dazed. It had been some time since he was last on the Shihao warship, and now returning to this familiar place, he couldn't help but feel a sense of change. Captain, this is currently the only repaired docking bay. The medical room prepared for you is three kilometers away. The orbital system has not been restored, so you will need to walk there. The route is complex, please follow this maintenance robot, Spring and Autumn said with a smile. Zhao Chen nodded, and the maintenance robot in front of him turned around on the ground and then turned on its lights to illuminate the darkness of the warship as it walked. Along the way, there were various broken pipes and circuits, with numerous repair robots shuttling back and forth, repairing every damaged area. After walking for a full 30 minutes, they finally arrived at the medical station prepared by Spring and Autumn. Captain, please come in, Spring and Autumn said with a smile. Zhao Chen took a deep breath, clenched his teeth, and stepped into the medical room inside the medical cabin, there is a large metal medical counter in the center, with four fully automated robotic arms at the corners. The walls are lined with numerous storage cabinets, displaying various medicines and tools. In front of the medical counter lies a bracelet. Without hesitation, Zhao Chen takes off his clothes, puts on the bracelet, and lies down on the metal medical counter. Contrary to his imagination, the medical counter is not cold at all. It has already been adjusted to a suitable temperature for the human body. A mechanical arm extends and injects a light brown liquid into Zhao Chen's body. This is an advanced anesthetic developed by the Federation, which can completely eliminate pain while keeping the patient conscious. At the same time, another mechanical arm emits a purple light, scanning Zhao Chen's body from head to toe, conducting a comprehensive disinfection. As the preparation process ends, there are no surgical knives or other intimidating surgical instruments as expected. A mechanical arm holds a silver sphere the size of an egg and extends it under Zhao Chen's abdomen. Damn, it's so big, how can it fit in? 
Zhao Chen's eyes whiten like copper bells. Captain, please remain calm. This is a medical nanomaterial on the periphery of the spiritual reaction core. Please do not view it with the perspective of traditional medicine. It represents the most cutting-edge technology on the Shihao. All right. Zhao Chen sighs, straightens his neck, and assumes a submissive posture. As the silver sphere gradually approaches Zhao Chen's abdomen, the outer silver coating ripples like a tide, revealing a spiritual reaction core with a diameter of about 3 centimeters in the middle. The silver nanowave gently touches Zhao Chen's skin, continuously decomposing and transferring body cells, and then tears open a huge gap out of thin air. The surging silver metal slowly sends the reaction core into Zhao Chen's abdomen. In the next moment, Zhao Chen feels a sour and swollen sensation rising from his lower abdomen, spreading towards his limbs and head. This is the turbulent spiritual energy colliding in Zhao Chen's delicate meridians. This rough method of widening the meridians, known as washing the meridians and removing the marrow, should be an extremely painful torture. However, under the effect of the highly efficient anesthetic, it feels as if someone is tickling him. Is this washing the meridians and removing the marrow? Zhao Chen scratches his neck, feeling somewhat dull and boring. Suddenly, he blinks his eyes as if he suddenly remembers something. Xuanxiao, can I take the Yu Sui Tong Ming Dan that your rogue gave me now? After comprehensive evaluation, this action significantly enhances the fusion effect of the mechanical golden elixir, but there is a 13.4% risk possibility. A 90% safety probability? That's quite high, Zhao Chen's eyes light up at the words. As a hardcore player of a certain and scrupulous card game in the former federation, even a 1 180 probability could deeply move him. Now, with a 60% probability, it's nothing short of a joke. He goes all in without hesitation. Zhao Chen takes out the storage ring given by Shi Rou, takes out the pill, throws it into his mouth, and then casually glances at the interior of the storage ring. Xuanxiao, Shi Rou also gave me a lot of spirit stones. Xuanxiao, catching the keyword spirit stones, immediately becomes excited. How many spirit stones? Zhao Chen roughly scans and immediately gives up. There are too many, I can't count them. Do you think everyone has the same computing power as you? I'll put the spirit stones on the Xihao, you can count them slowly or even sleep on them. Just as he was thinking about how many spirit stones were still missing, a severe pain surged through his limbs and bones, and the intense discomfort almost made Zhao Chen vomit. Damn, why isn't the Federation's anesthetic working? The sensory signals have exceeded the threshold limit. Xuanxiao manipulates the robotic arm, scanning Zhao Chen's physical condition while injecting various emergency medications to prevent shock and infarction caused by severe pain. This excruciating pain feels like brushing the internal organs with a felt cloth covered in tiny iron thorns, then spraying them with chili water and strong acid. Zhao Chen has struggled to roll off the medical table, his mouth wide open but already losing the strength to shout. In the next moment, he vaguely saw countless vein-like patterns lighting up on his body, with the brightest spot naturally being the center of his abdomen. The mechanical golden pill, also known as the core of spiritual energy reaction, had overloaded. Boom! Guided by the medicinal effect of the translucent jade pill, countless pure white spiritual energy was released outward along Zhao Chen's meridians, like a torrential flood, unstoppable. Within a 5-meter radius centered on Zhao Chen, everything was turned into ashes by the explosion of spiritual energy. Sitting in the charred pit, Zhao Chen, completely bald, looked around in confusion and said, Damn, luckily the spiritual energy was guided out. With such power, if it exploded inside me, I would be all blue and purple, right? Captain, according to calculations, if there was a slight mistake in the release of the spiritual energy just now, you would have been blown to pieces. Spring in Autumn's tone was slightly serious, mixed with a hint of relief from surviving a disaster. Zhao Chen stood up, extended his hand, and a ball of spiritual energy appeared in his palm, continuously compressing and taking shape. The terrifying energy contained within the ball of light was already comparable to the power of a federal standard hand grenade. Is this the power of the golden pill? Zhao Chen's mouth curled up. Indeed, compared to mind over matter, transcending the ordinary and entering the realm of the divine, I prefer. Flesh is weak, mechanical ascension. Adapting to the power within his body, Zhao Chen looked around and marveled at the treatment room that had been flattened by his explosion of spiritual energy. As the captain, blowing up your own beloved ship, don't you feel a little guilty? Seeing a flicker of regret in Zhao Chen's eyes, followed by his obsession with power, spring and autumn understood. Their captain had a bit of a conscience, but not much. Spring and autumn, what level of combat power do I have now? With the captain's current strength, you can rival the peak of the golden pill stage. Early stage, middle stage, late stage, peak. So strong? 
Zhao Qin couldn't believe it as he lowered his head to look at his body, only to realize that he was still in a state of nudity. Um, spring and autumn, is there anything to cover up for this captain? Just as he was worried about his exposed little bird, a bead on the bracelet he had just put on slowly unfolded, and liquid-like nanomaterial quickly enveloped his entire body, revealing a light white robe in ancient style. To make the captain not stand out so much, this nanomaterial battlesuit was specially designed based on the style of this era. Spring and Autumn's voice sounded ethereal in Zhao Chen's ear. Zhao Chen touched the fabric of the clothes and was very satisfied, but then he touched his smooth head and realized why the nanomaterials were stuck at his neck and not moving. All the hair on his body had been blown away by his previous explosion of spiritual energy. Manipulating the spiritual energy to generate a head of hair, the nanomaterials also extended, neatly tying Zhao Chen's hair into a bun and creating a green hairpin. A white-clad, handsome young man stood in the pit. It is said that his eyebrows were as sharp as a star, his eyes as piercing as a sword, and his appearance as flawless as jade. If this handsome young man could keep his mouth shut, he might actually be able to attract a large number of fangirls with just his good looks. Unfortunately, he opened his mouth. Wow, cool. I didn't expect this bead to have such an effect. I wonder if the other five have. He looked at Zhao Chen's smug face and in an instant, Spring and Autumn understood what it meant to ruin one's image by speaking. These are the nanomaterial armament cores I prepared for you. They can expand your combat abilities during the golden pill stage, improve the efficiency of spiritual energy utilization, and each has five different expansion functions. I will transmit their specific information to your golden pill core. The mechanical golden elixir in Zhao Chen's Dantian is not just a spiritual energy source, it also serves as an information terminal, responsible for the transmission of information between Zhao Chen and Xuanxiao. From now on, the two can directly communicate their thoughts without relying on any external devices. Feeling a piece of information entering his mind from the golden elixir, this mysterious feeling made Zhao Chen slightly stunned, as if an extra brain had appeared out of thin air. After becoming familiar with this feeling, Zhao Chen began to carefully understand the function of the armed core. The so-called spiritual energy combat is nothing more than a way of using energy. The difference in strength between the cultivation techniques and combat skills in the cultivation world is nothing more than a slight difference in the efficiency of using spiritual energy. By calculating and manipulating it themselves, cultivators control the transformation of spiritual energy to attack enemies. However, when it comes to efficiency, no one dares to compare with the Star Federation, which has a fully developed technological tree. Naturally, Xuanxiao would not let his captain learn some insignificant combat skills. If he wants long-range attacks, why not create a set of exclusive long-range laser modules? If he wants large-scale attacks, why not create a set of exclusive high-voltage electric field modules? With the bonus of nanotechnology, Zhao Chen can activate different modules according to his needs in the fastest time and then he only needs to infuse spiritual energy into the modules. In the early stages of technological development in the Star Federation, there were often fallacies and misconceptions about the fragility of technology, claiming that technology cannot replace all combat power, and that advanced weapons, although powerful, are complex, prone to malfunctions, and difficult to carry, while simple and practical daggers will never have problems. However, the reason why so-called high-tech weapons have problems such as easy malfunctions, unreliability, complex conditions, and difficult to carry can only indicate that the technological level of these weapons is not high enough. Judging from the armed core created by Chuanxiao using the achievements of the Star Federation's technology, it will never malfunction, never make mistakes, and its startup speed is faster than that of ordinary cultivators casting spells. Science is the primary productive force, and it can also be the primary combat force. With a thought from Zhao Chun, the golden elixir in his abdomen immediately captured the command, and the bracelet lit up. All combat cores begin self-check. Self-check complete. Start charging. In the next moment, Zhao Chun felt a huge suction coming from his wrist, continuously drawing the golden elixir energy from his dantian. The amount of spiritual energy absorbed could almost instantly drain an ordinary golden elixir. Looking at the names of the five cores, Zhao Chen's mouth twitched slightly, sword core, laser core, burning core, thunder core, giant core? These names are a bit sloppy, right? Zhao Chen decisively modified the official names of each armed core by activating the editing permission. Light sword core, laser core, blazing sun core, divine sky core, titan core. Just as he was about to test them one by one, he suddenly felt a chill, and his body was covered in goosebumps. A tremor that spread from the depths of his bones swept through his entire body. I found you a gloomy female voice echoed around the warship, unable to locate the exact source of the sound, as if it suddenly appeared. This voice belongs to the queen of the underworld. 
Zhao Chen looked up at the bridge window, and Xia happened to be passing by the southernmost part of the human territory, with the ruins on the other side. Captain, space fluctuations from the ruins have been detected. Prepare for battle. Xuanxiu's voice sounded in his mind. During the peak of Xie's power, with the existence of a large-scale space disturbance device, unless the warship actively welcomed you in, any intruder attempting to enter Xie's interior through space teleportation would be dumbfoundedly transported to the space around Xie by various caliber ship cannons, and then turned into ashes. However, the disturbance device at this moment has long been out of order, and a large number of Xie's equipment needs repair, so it won't be available for a while in the next moment, the lights in the bridge began to flicker, and the dense and sinister aura of the netherworld condensed into entities and rushed towards Zhao Chen. At this moment, Zhao Chen couldn't care less about taking care of the various facilities in the bridge. With a flick of his palm, two highly compressed spiritual energy shot out, dispersing the evil spirits in front of him. Who knows what realm the owner of the third level of the netherworld is at? Just a word or a thought can give birth to a large number of evil spirits wherever the gaze falls. As the black mist in the bridge grew thicker and thicker, Zhao Chun, who was still using the inefficient method of compressed spiritual energy attacks, gradually became overwhelmed. Just as the spiritual energy ball in his palm shattered one evil spirit, three or four new evil spirits emerged from the deck. At a critical moment, the electronic prompt sound of the golden core terminal sounded in his mind. Ding, lightsaber core ready. It came just in time. With a movement of his divine sense, Zhao Chen opened a compressed space gate with one of the beads on his bracelet and a massive amount of nanomachines surged out, covering his whole body with a layer of light armor. With a familiar buzzing sound, two bright white lightsabers popped out from his hands, and the thrusters under his feet were also assembled. As the thrusters were activated, Zhao Chen's figure turned into a streak of light and continuously passed through the four evil spirits in front of him. The bright white sword light directly shattered the four black shadows into scattered black ashes. This was the lightsaber core, with its lightweight armor coverage, extreme speed, and close combat capabilities. However, it seemed like the bridge was set as a spawning point, with an endless stream of black mud emerging. The individual strength of the evil spirits became stronger and stronger, from the initial foundation building stage to the appearance of elite evil spirits in the golden core stage. The lightsaber core, which could only attack one-on-one, -on -one, gradually became unable to cope with the situation. At this moment, Xuanxiu, who had not replied to Zhao Chen's message, activated some kind of permission. Just as the entire bridge space was about to be filled with evil spirits, the prompt sound of the golden core core sounded again. Ding, heavenly core ready. With Zhao Chen's manipulation, another batch of nanomachines covered his chest, forming a small electric field. Driven by the golden core, Zhao Chen slowly rose into the air, forming a powerful electric field in front of his chest, and countless arcs of spiritual energy rushed towards the evil spirits in all directions. At this moment, all the evil spirits in the warship cabin became conductors of electric current, and the hot and dazzling purple thunder illuminated the entire bridge. The evil spirits in the cabin were swept away, and even the black residue was not left behind. Awesome! Zhao Chen shouted with excitement, the pleasure of annihilating all evil under the thunderous lightning dispelling all the frustration in his heart. Just as he was about to observe if there were any more evil spirits appearing, Xuanxiu's anxious voice sounded in his mind, Captain, prepare for impact. On the distant land of the netherworld, a red figure stood tall and waved gently. A violent impact struck the surface of the Xiuo warship, tearing through layer after layer of armor and equipment, and accurately attacking Zhao Chen. This was the terrifying aspect of advanced cultivators. Without the protection of the Eastern Emperor's shield, the armor of the Shiwa warship was as fragile as paper, with no defensive capability. In the next moment, the entire bridge was torn apart, and the immense impact force continued unabated, sending Zhao Chen and the fragments of the bridge flying into the air. Now, Zhao Chen, who was exposed without the cover of the warship, was completely exposed to the gaze of the Queen of the Netherworld. Subconsciously looking towards the direction of the netherworld, even though it was an extremely distant distance, the blood-red wedding dress of the queen of the netherworld was strangely clear. Lowly insect, I found you just a glance from the queen of the netherworld was enough to strike Zhao Chen like a thunderbolt, turning his thoughts into a tangled mess. It was as if his whole being was enveloped by the concept of chaos, and everything that was originally orderly was forcibly altered. The nanosuit on his body began to operate randomly, with nanomachines scattering everywhere, and the operation of the spiritual energy within the mechanical golden core also became chaotic. This is an ability that involves rules and concepts. When applied to a cultivator, it means the reversal of spiritual energy and meridians. When applied to Zhao Chun, it means equipment malfunction. Without the support of the equipment, 
Zhao Chen is unable to maintain his levitation and helplessly falls towards the ground. In the last moment before Zhao Chen loses consciousness, he suppresses his dizziness and gives the command, Xuanxiu, find a way to blast her. Beep, fire control system self-checking, ultimate weapon, star annihilator, main body severely damaged, unable to activate. T0 level extermination order, black hole collapse cannon, codename T003, entering deployment program. Deployment coordinates locked, spatial matrix calibrated, black hole collapse cannon, ready for launch. In the Shiwa weapon compartment folded in deep space, a deep black giant cube emits a wave of fluctuations and then disappears into thin air. This is the carrier of the black hole collapse cannon, the black hole magic cube. In the pitch black space, one of the most deadly celestial bodies in the universe is imprisoned. In the southernmost part of the three southern provinces stands the greatest construction of the human race, the Shujing Great Wall. Stretching from the coast of Liangzhou in the west to the Tsongming Sea in the east, spanning three provinces and extending millions of miles, a thousand towers are built along the thousand-mile stretch, with a total of one thousand towers. In the past, the eight major forces agreed that one tower represents one golden core stage, two towers represent one nascent soul stage, five towers represent one deity transformation stage, ten towers represent one unity stage, and one hundred towers represent one void return stage. The various sects take turns to guard the Shujing Great Wall, ensuring that the pollution from the Shumu does not advance further for thousands of years. Outside the Shujing Great Wall, the ground is covered with monotonous black sand. There is no spiritual energy in the pitch black quicksand, and in the silent black desert, one can vaguely see some fragments of dead rocks. These are the bodies of cultivators who had profound cultivation thousands of years ago. After thousands of years of weathering and pollution, the dead fragments have scattered all over the desert. A team of ten cultivators is flying in the air on the wasteland. The leader is an old man in the deity transformation stage, followed by nine cultivators in the nascent soul stage, each dressed differently, obviously gathered from various sects to resist the Shumu together. One deity transformation and nine nascent soul cultivators, such a luxurious lineup, could easily annihilate a small sect if they were to go to the mortal world. However, here, they are just a patrol team guarding the five torch zone. Besides an ancient book, there is a yellow token on the waist of the deity transformation old man, on which is written his name, affiliation, and cultivation level. Hua Ishio, Hauran Holy Land, Deity Transformation Cultivator. Only cultivators who have been stationed at the Shujing Great Wall for a long time can obtain the token certification, starting from the Golden Core stage. The color of the token increases in order from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, to purple, representing the cultivator's qualifications and honor at the Shujing Great Wall. Today, there are not many evil creatures appearing on the surface, and it seems to be a calm day. Just when everyone is relaxed, Hua Ishio's brows furrow. Without any warning, the sand and rocks on the ground start to tremble. Hua Ishio's face immediately becomes serious, Shumu earthquake? This is bad. Before he finishes speaking, a cold female voice echoes from the depths of the Shumu, I found you. Just hearing the voice, several nascent soul cultivators in the team become dazed and fall to the ground one after another. Hoishio, with his profound cultivation, manages to maintain his levitation, but his meridians are reversed and his soul is in chaos, looking extremely miserable. Before the cold voice even finishes, a red figure rises from the center of the Shumu. In an instant, unease and fear spread throughout the entire Shumu wasteland like a tide. Hoishio's body is covered in goosebumps, as if his bones and marrow have been frozen, why is it? The lord of the third layer of Shumu. It seems that the presence is not coming towards the Great Wall but looking towards the distant sky. Nevertheless, the pollution unleashed by the presence still sweeps across the entire wasteland, and countless evil creatures emerge from the pollution, instinctively heading towards the Great Wall. Hoishio's mind is captured by the pollution of the Shumu. When he regains his senses, the tide of evil creatures is already close at hand in the vast black desert. The evil spirits, like waves, crossed one sand dune after another, coming in a sweeping manner. Looking into the distance, one couldn't see the end of it. The last time such a large-scale anomaly occurred was seven years ago. Hoishio knew that this matter was of great importance and couldn't be taken lightly. He took out a divine message symbol from his storage ring and a golden flame rose up. Then, he sacrificed the ancient book at his waist, reciting the words of the saints. The ancient book swelled several times in the wind, carrying several nascent soul cultivators who were powerless under the pressure of the underworld, fleeing towards the direction of the Great Wall. At this moment, the Great Wall of the Ruin Realm, which received the signal, was brightly lit. A great vehicle realm's rule light will stood in the sky, guarded by three void return powerhouses, and dozens of fusion period experts sat in all directions. 
The great vehicle realm cultivator guarding the Great Wall this year was Zheng Feibai, the head of the third peak of the Supreme Holy Land. The Supreme Holy Land specialized in Taoist arts, and as the head of the third peak, Zheng Feibai was proficient in the Five Thunder True Law, and his strength was unparalleled among the great vehicle cultivators. As long as the Lord of the Ruin Realm didn't personally attack, the power of the Great Wall at this moment could definitely hold the line, not to mention the reinforcements from the various Holy Lands, which were ready to cross space and come to support at any time. The teams patrolling the outskirts of the Great Wall gradually withdrew back to the Great Wall, reporting the information they had gathered, all with the same sentence, the evil spirits are knocking on the door, and the scale is huge. Hua Isho's team ventured into the deepest part of the Ruin Realm and was the last to arrive at the foot of the Great Wall. Looking at Hua Isho flying with the ancient book, behind him was the surging tide of evil spirits. At the end of the black tide, the red figure of the underworld faintly appeared, extremely eerie. Just as Zheng Feibai was about to order everyone to attack and confront the evil spirits, he suddenly felt a connection in his heart, looked up at the distant sky, and then his face changed dramatically. He activated his Taoist arts and transformed into a giant hand, grabbing Hua Isho's team from a distance and pulling them into the Great Wall, then fully activated the defensive formation on the Great Wall. Seeing this, the other cultivators present didn't dare to be negligent and released their own spiritual energy one after another. Under the infusion of the massive amount of spiritual energy released by the cultivators, a defensive formation that rippled with the stars of the nine heavens rose up. Behind the barrier of the formation, more and more cultivators noticed the abnormality in the sky. A black square appeared in the azure sky, slowly descending towards the top of the underworld's figure. The phantom of the square floated unsteadily, seemingly frequently traversing different timelines and spatial layers. The underworld launched attacks with astonishing power, but couldn't lock onto the position of the square, only able to watch as the square descended to a position several thousand kilometers above its head. Buzz a dull sound came, and the entire black square disappeared, replaced by a small black dot. Zheng Feibai looked at the small black dot, his face turning pale. This was a kind of black he had never seen before, or rather, it was nothingness. The light there was swallowed, and space and time were distorted, as if it was the end of all things. The underworld watched as the black dot expanded, a terrifying suction force came, and its divine body was easily torn apart and pulled into the blackness. Realizing the danger, the underworld tried to control its remaining body to escape, but it was already too late. The field of vision of entering the black hole caused all space to twist and all timelines to converge. Field of vision of the event, also known as the boundary of the area in the space-time dimension from which there is no escape, just like the one-way membrane surrounding a black hole. Objects can fall into a black hole through the field of vision of the event, but nothing can escape a black hole through the field of vision of the event. The underworld traced back through all the timelines but couldn't find a way to escape from it. All the timelines pointed to the end of destruction by the black hole. Within the field of vision of the event was the fate of annihilation, where all matter and space collapsed towards the center of the black hole, with no possibility of recovery. As the black hole gradually expanded, the endless demonic energy and black sand in the ruined realm began to float up, being sucked into the center of the black hole like tentacles the influence of suction quickly spread to the edge of the great wall. A demonic creature that was running became slower and slower, gradually turning into a stationary position, and then its entire body was forcefully pulled backwards by an irresistible force. Afterwards, the eerie gravity suddenly increased, and countless demonic creatures were lifted into the air and swept towards the center of the black hole. Of course, they were not completely swallowed up. As they approached the black hole, the terrifying suction force increased by tens of thousands of times. Under the immense difference in suction force, all the demonic creatures were completely torn apart and sucked into the center like strands of noodles. The cultivators who maintained the formation of the ruins watched the scene, which seemed like the end of the world, with horror. The range of influence of this black hole seemed to have been carefully designed, and the terrifying gravity just reached the edge of the defensive formation. After devouring everything on the surface of the ruins, the massive black hole slowly collapsed into a tiny black dot and then disappeared. To kill the demonic god of the ruins and level the endless wasteland. Who is this mysterious person? Zheng Feibai looked at the deep pit outside the ruins' great wall, which was formed by a large amount of black sand being swept away. Such a strange and demonic technique. I hope this senior is a friend and not an enemy. Behind the ruins Great Wall were the three southern provinces guarded by numerous cultivators. They were the southwest Liangzhou governed by the Supreme Holy Land, the southern Jingzhou governed by the Azure Cloud Holy Land, and the southeast Yangzhou governed by the Hidden Sword Holy Land. The three major Holy Lands sitting side by side behind the Great Wall allowed this area, 
which was closest to the ruins, to remain peaceful and prosperous. Unlike the misty rain in the northern provinces and the prosperity in the central provinces, the southern provinces appeared more simple and rugged. It was precisely because of the development differences between the three regions that the north-south trade became one of the most profitable routes in this world. Of course, it was not easy for caravans to travel between the north and the south. Due to the high cost and rarity of advanced cultivators and spatial rings, traditional trade routes were still the most common means of transportation. There were several trade routes between the north and the south, but they were often plagued by bandits along the way, making it difficult for caravans without cultivator protection to pass safely. Therefore, many caravans without cultivator escorts chose to travel through the mountains and forests. As long as they were careful to avoid various monsters in the mountains, they could safely reach their destination. In the valley between the mountains of Yangzhou, a caravan of more than 20 people was slowly moving forward. Although the size of the caravan was not large, it carried a considerable amount of goods, indicating that they lacked the protection of advanced cultivators. There were only four foundation establishment cultivators accompanying the entire caravan. In the center of the caravan, a well-dressed young girl sat on the left side of the carriage, while a silent and dignified old man sat on the right side. The girl looked up and said to the old man, Mr. Lee, I have caused you trouble this time. Miss Shin, you have said too much. I, a golden core cultivator, was secretly poisoned. It is truly embarrassing. However, Miss, you must be careful of the Tang family. Mr. Lee replied respectfully. Although the girl in front of him was only 18 years old and looked extremely young, her background was mysterious. In just one year, she had established a mid-level trading guild in Rongyang City and was competing with the leader of the Tang family for interests. Even though Mr. Lee had the cultivation level of a golden core cultivator, he did not dare to act recklessly in front of her. Xin Xingxiu's face remained calm, but a hint of coldness flashed in her eyes. We cannot easily conclude whether it was the Tang family or my eldest brother who made a move this time. The bumps coming from under the carriage intensified Xin Xingxiu's dissatisfaction. No matter how much she calculated, she did not expect them to dare to directly target a golden core cultivator. Now they were forced to travel through the mountains and forests. The sky was still dim at this time, and coupled with the difficult mountain road, the two foundation establishment cultivators in front of the caravan were walking very cautiously, their sharp eyes scanning the surroundings to ensure the safety of the caravan's progress. However, for some reason, in less than two breaths of time, the two of them felt that the light in the sky seemed to have become brighter. Was it already so early in the morning today? Looking up, both cultivators' faces changed dramatically, shouting towards the back of the caravan, there's a situation. Xin Xingxue and Li Shou both stuck their heads out of the carriage at the same time, only to see a meteor shining with dazzling fire falling towards the direction of the caravan. Everyone, be careful. Accompanied by a loud bang, the meteor fell in the forest in front of the caravan, and the impact wave hit them head-on, causing the entire caravan to be thrown into chaos. As the shockwave subsided, a smoking crater appeared in front of everyone's eyes. Seniorly, what is this? Xin Xingxue turned to ask Li Shou, seeing the serious look on the old man's face, she immediately fell silent, knowing that this was a critical moment. The thick smoke in the pit gradually dissipated, revealing a huge humanoid armor lying in the center of the pit. This humanoid armor was as tall as three people, with a bright silver metallic texture on its surface. Although it had scattered a large number of fragments under the high-speed impact, it still couldn't hide its heavy feeling, as if it had come from ancient times like a god of slaughter, inspiring awe in people's hearts. Zhao Chen coughed lightly and crawled out of the titan mech. The huge mech and the scattered fragments transformed back into a swarm of nanobots and returned to his bracelet. Thanks to Chuenxiu's timely action, he killed the queen of the underworld in the final stage of the fall, eliminating the interference with the armed core. This gave Zhao Chen the opportunity to activate the titan core and use the heavy armor to withstand the impact of the fall. Now it seemed that the defensive performance of the Titan Core was excellent. Without having to activate the reverse thrust in time, Zhao Chen still didn't suffer much damage. After calling Chuanxiu in his mind several times without success, Zhao Chen turned his gaze to the crowd outside the pit who had been looking for a long time. Wearing a white robe with a pattern of auspicious clouds, 3,000 strands of black hair, and a hairpin made of red jade, Li Shou saw that Zhao Chen had a majestic and extraordinary aura, dressed in a remarkable manner and carried himself with great dignity. He immediately knew that this person's cultivation level was not low and spoke with great respect. I am Li Shou from the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce. May I know your honorable name? Zhao Chen. I see that you have a majestic aura and radiant brilliance. Why have you come to this vast mountain? To chase down enemies and got lost here, Zhao Chen said, squinting his eyes, 
But it's strange that although you have a golden core cultivation, your aura is weak and your spiritual energy is blocked. It's quite suspicious. Xin Xingxue took a step forward and walked in front of Li Shou, smiling slightly, I am Xin Xingxue. I apologize for any inconvenience caused by our caravan. If we had a full-strength golden core cultivator, we would have traveled along the north-south commercial road. How could we have been forced to this extent? As for Mr. Zhao, since you are lost, why not travel with our caravan for mutual assistance? Chuan Xiu's voice sounded in Zhao Chen's mind, Captain, firing the collapsed cannon has consumed too much energy. The reactor is almost depleted and cannot support the operation and repair of the warship. Do you understand what I mean? It seems that he didn't respond just now because he was reallocating energy. Understanding Chuan Xiu's crazy hint, Zhao Chen looked back at Xin Xingxue, his gaze unabashedly sweeping over her. Having been in the federal political arena for more than 10 years, Zhao Chen was naturally not a kind and naive person, nor would he be unable to move forward because of a mere beautiful girl, although Xin Xingxue's appearance was considered outstanding in his eyes. Miss Shen, I already heard about your plan outside the Xujing Great Wall. Zhao Chen smiled playfully, your caravan has offended someone, and without the deterrence of a golden core cultivator, you now want me to escort you for free? Xin Xingxue, as someone who could independently establish a midstream chamber of commerce, naturally wouldn't overlook the meaning behind Zhao Chen's words of for free, Mr. Zhao, you're being too harsh. I have no intention of deceiving you in the slightest. As long as Mr. Zhao is willing to help us safely reach the city of Anan, I am willing to offer 5,000 medium-grade spirit stones as compensation. Zhao Chen shook his head slightly, too little, double it, 50,000. Xin Xingxue was stunned by his words. Double 5,000 to 50,000? Did you learn your math from the Tsanyun Holy Land? As a pleasant atmosphere surrounded the imminent conclusion of a mutually beneficial deal, the indigenous people of the vast mountains expressed their dissatisfaction. With a clear cry, a massive figure rose from deep within the forest, casting a huge shadow over the entire caravan. Li Shou, startled by the figure in the sky, exclaimed, Is that the Frost Eagle? Or is it at the peak of the Golden Core stage? Li Shou had mentally prepared himself for the possibility of attracting a monster with the loud noise from earlier but the identity of the creature caught him off guard. The Frost Eagle, as a powerful winged race, was born in the Foundation Establishment stage, with a strong sense of territory and adept at low-altitude flight, capable of freezing everything with its icy breath. Before anyone could react, the Frost Eagle's attack came in an instant. Activate the Solar Core. With a thought, Zhao Chen's nanocluster of the Solar Core quickly attached to his body. He raised his left palm towards the Frost Eagle, and a blazing blue flame erupted, colliding with the eagle's icy breath. There was no resistance, in the moment of contact, the ice was burned to ashes, and the torrent of flames relentlessly scorched the eagle's abdomen and chest. Injured and unwilling to continue the fight, the frost eagle flapped its wings and ascended, attempting to temporarily escape the battle and regroup. The laser core is ready. At some point, the nanomachines of the laser core had quietly attached to Zhao Chen's forehead. In the next moment, a golden beam of light pierced through the sky, and the swiftly flying frost eagle had no time to react. It was directly cut in half by the concentrated laser, and a downpour of blood rained down not far away in the air. 50,000, deal. Without waiting for Xin Qingxue's agreement, Zhao Chen walked into the carriage himself. The peak golden core stage monster, the frost eagle, was killed after just two rounds? After recovering from the thrilling battle of instantly killing a golden core stage monster, a strange light flashed in Xin Qingxue's eyes, and she instinctively asked, I wonder what cultivation level young master Zhao is? Just a ship cultivator, with a cultivation level not worth mentioning. Zhao Chen's lazy voice came from inside the carriage. Sitting in the gorgeously decorated carriage, Zhao Chen eagerly flipped through books, while Xin Qingxue carefully peeled grapes and fed them one by one to Zhao Chen. Grapes, a plant similar to the grapes in Zhao Chen's original universe, had thin skin and thick flesh, and were quite sweet. The grapes provided on the carriage of the Starpoint Trading Company were all plump and full of vitality, of exceptional quality. Now, Xin Xingxue had saved Zhao Chen the trouble of peeling them himself. Zhao Chen ate them with gusto, one after another, unable to stop. After experiencing the attack of the Gue Su, Zhao Chen's sense of danger had significantly increased. He completely eliminated the idea of casually traveling around and realized that until the Shihua battleship was fully repaired, it was not invincible. So Zhao Chen emptied all the spirit stones on him and requested that Chuan Xiu at least repair a Phoenix Bird strategic air platform and assemble a formation of air force. Why not prioritize the repair of the Dong Huang shield and the space distortion device? Even if Zhao Chen were to be sold by weight, he wouldn't be able to accumulate that many spirit stones. 
According to Chuincho's calculations, a fully equipped Phoenix Bird platform, with various weapons installed, could contend against nascent soul stage cultivators. Although nuclear bombs could already kill nascent soul stage cultivators and threaten unity stage cultivators, conventional combat strength was still important. After all, even the most crazy person couldn't detonate nuclear bombs every time, right? Just imagine, if your nascent soul stage friend wanted to spar with you, and you happily threw two tactical nuclear bombs at them. With the gradual increase in available energy, Chuinshio's computing power had made rapid progress. Now, he could repair and perform high-intensity calculations while allocating some of his thoughts to read ancient books with Zhao Chen. Holding a book on geographical miscellany, the geographical locations, customs, and landscapes of the nine provinces came to life on the pages. Zhao Chen and Xuanxiu discussed the interesting parts, and for a moment, they were transported back to the peaceful days on the bridge of the spaceship Xuanxiu, who couldn't hear the spiritual communication between the two, saw Zhao Chen staring at the books, occasionally shaking his head and smiling. She felt that although this young master Zhao had strong cultivation, his behavior was unconventional, as if he didn't belong to this mundane world. Unable to figure out this young master Zhao, Xin Xingxue could only smile helplessly and instruct the people in the caravan to bring some fresh grapes. After the servant finished delivering the grapes, he respectfully closed the carriage curtain and discreetly walked to the back of the caravan. A carrier pigeon quietly landed on his shoulder, and he stuffed a note into the bamboo tube tied to the pigeon's ankle before releasing it. He then looked around cautiously and found that no one was paying attention before returning to the caravan. The scene of this secretive act was continuously zoomed out, and thousands of meters above the ground, a miniature surveillance aircraft with its adorable 108000P ultra-clear camera blinked its eyes. It received information packets from the Golden Core Terminal, including the actions of the spy, the conversation on the note, and even the whereabouts of the carrier pigeon, all crystal clear. A smile appeared on Zhao Chen's lips. Indeed. We have a spy among us. With Zhao Chen in charge, there was no longer a need for the Point Star Trading Association to navigate through forests and rivers. They began to approach the north-south trade route and would soon merge onto it after two days and nights. During these two days, the little spy frequently revealed his identity, and Zhao Chen was not idle either. Besides his daily voyeuristic activities from a god's perspective, he also spent a lot of time studying the usage and applicability of the five core weapons. It must be said that the design of the spring and autumn was truly ingenious. The Light Sword Core for individual close combat, the Divine Sky Core for group close combat, the Laser Core for individual long range attacks, the Radiant Sun Core for group long range attacks, and the Titan Core for tanking damage. No matter what heroes the other four teammates chose, he could carry. Just as Zhao Chen was contemplating the coordination of the weapon cores, a message came from the Aerial Scout, filling him with excitement. Finally, some fun. The caravan crossed the boundary between the mountains and the grasslands, and the front became flat. They were getting closer to the north-south trade route. Boom! With a loud explosion, a fireball fell directly in front of the caravan, tearing apart the first carriage and scattering fragments of goods into the sky. Xin Xingxiu's face changed when she saw this, but when she turned her head and saw Zhao Qin remaining calm, she felt slightly relieved and got off the carriage with him. In the sky ahead of the caravan, there were six figures standing in mid-air. They were surrounded by spiritual energy and radiated a powerful aura. They stood on various treasures and were quite imposing. The man in the lead saw Xin Xingxue and smiled confidently, long time no see, Miss Shen. Xin Xingxue saw the man's face and immediately glared angrily, Tang Chuan, it's really you. Why has your Tang family repeatedly targeted our Point Star Trading Association? What is your intention? Tang Chuan laughed heartily in response, what is my intention? Don't you already know it deep down? Initially, it was our Tang family's permission that allowed your association to have a place in Rongyang City. But who would have thought that your caravan would grow so big, not only seizing nearly half of my Tang family's trade, but also continuously recruiting several golden core cultivators, snatching away my Tang family's rights in Rongyang City. Your ambition is clear for all to see. Today, while that old man is poisoned, it's the perfect opportunity to completely destroy your association. Zhao Qin stood by Xin Qingxue's side, looking relaxed and indifferent. In the past two days, Xin Qingxue had been mentioning the Tang family, describing them as evil and corrupt. Now that they had arrived, it seemed that the Point Star Trading Association was not as innocent as a White Lotus organization. It was all just a matter of conflicting interests. Unfortunately, the Point Star Trading Association encountered him first. Since he had taken their money, he had to help them perfectly. That was professional ethics. I must say, it seems like you don't take me seriously, Zhao Chen said to the young man in the sky with a hint of helplessness. Tang Chuan sneered when he saw this, come out. 
As soon as the words fell, a person from the Dianqing caravan slowly walked towards Tang Chuan. Yu Lei, how dare you betray our guild? Xinqing Xue's eyes widened in anger, and many previously suspicious details became clear after learning of Yu Lei's betrayal. Humph, I had already instructed him to poison the grapes. I didn't expect you to keep eating them for three days. By now, I'm afraid your cultivation has been greatly weakened. There was indeed a slow-acting poison in the grapes that could block the dantian. But what does that have to do with my mechanical golden pill? Does it mean that I'm not actually poisoned? Your poison is really weak. Then, looking at the villain's shocked and resentful expression, I can show off and defeat him? Please, how boring. Compared to showing off, Zhao Chen prefers to manipulate people's mentality. I'm a summoner. What use is poisoning me? Zhao Chen innocently blinked his eyes and calmly spouted nonsense. Because, summoner equals summon a group of monsters to attack. Also because, Yi Zhao Chen's call for an airstrike equals summon a group of planes to attack. Therefore, calling for an airstrike equals summoning, Zhao Chen equals summoner. There's nothing wrong with that. Tang Chuan was also shocked to hear this. Previously, Yu Lei had sent a message saying that this person had strong combat power and needed to be cautious. Tang Chuan had speculated that he might be a sword cultivator or a magic cultivator, but he never expected him to be a summoner. Then what was his act of poisoning someone? A clown? Summoner, so what if he's a summoner? We have five nascent soul experts here. Quick, attack and kill him. Tang Chuan felt that the situation was slipping out of his control and angrily shouted. As soon as he finished speaking, three Vermilion Bird ground attack aircraft flew through the deep night sky. The Vermilion Bird attack aircraft, equipped with medium-sized ion cannons, combined with energy concentrators and full-spectrum optical camouflage, could melt any armored target on the ground. Wherever the Vermilion Bird went, it would be turned into a sea of fire. These three aircraft were just repaired on the Phoenix Sky Platform and had been on the production line for less than two hours, providing customers with the freshest experience. Out of a bit of sadistic pleasure, Zhao Chen changed the attack method to laser guidance. Then, the nanobot swarm condensed into a laser pen in his hand, and a red laser beam shone on Yu Lei. Yu Lei was startled by the red light at first, but then realized that it was harmless, even weak. Only then did he relax. However, Vermilion Bird Attack Aircraft, lock on target, here, let it rain ashes. The nascent Soul Terminal received a reply from the Vermilion Bird's onboard artificial intelligence. In the pitch black sky, three deadly blue lights flashed. The optical camouflage of the Vermilion Bird Attack Aircraft rippled briefly, then disappeared into the deep night sky again. Before the five nascent Soul Experts could react, three ion cannon shots accurately hit Yu Lei. Yu Lei, being a tough guy, took three ion fusion shells head-on without making a sound, he turned into ashes directly. The summoning creatures are in the sky. Attack! Tang Chuan's team finally realized what was happening and activated their spiritual energy, guarding against the direction of the sky. The sword cultivator summoned his flying sword, the body cultivator unleashed a protective golden light, the magic cultivator condensed a spiritual energy shield, the confusion cultivator recited a mantra to amplify spiritual energy, and the female assassin disappeared into the shadows. However, in the pitch black night sky, besides the stars and the round moon, there was no sign of any summoning creatures. Zhao Chen watched with amazement. Wow, a sword cultivator, a body cultivator, a magic cultivator, a confusion cultivator, and a female assassin. This lineup is a top tier team. Do they still need to poison Li Xiao? Even without poison, that old man wouldn't stand a chance. But it's still possible to escort Shen Xingxue to safety. It seems that the other side came here with the intention of wiping out our side. Since this is a life or death battle, there's no need to hold back. Zhao Chen pondered and decisively shone the laser on the sword cultivator. It is well known that in a team battle, it's best to target the archer first to increase the chances of winning Jianxiu saw the red light coming, slightly distracted, and when he looked back at the sky again, he saw three flashes of blue light. Not good. The flying sword in his hand burst into a brilliant sword light. He didn't expect that the fierce and unmatched sword energy of the Golden Core Realm would explode in midair just by colliding with a blue light, consuming all its power. In an instant, a thick and unmatched spiritual shield appeared above Jianxiu's head, which was the help of the mage behind him. The second blue light arrived in an instant, accompanied by a violent explosion and splashing plasma, and the shield summoned by the mage shattered. In order to deal with the agile shooter who attacks from a high position with thin defense, Zhao Chen considerately switched from melting bullets to high explosive bullets. Jianxiu, who had only managed to dodge half of his body, was engulfed by the scorching blue flames and then thrown away by the intense explosion. His left arm and thigh had completely melted in the high temperature of the high explosive ion bullet. 
After dealing with the shooter, who should have been the mage, a cold and sinister light flashed behind Zhao Chun, and a pitch black dagger stabbed towards his heart. At the same time, the body cultivator, who was shining with a protective aura, also rushed towards him. It seemed that they couldn't find the Vermilion attack aircraft and were preparing to attack the summoner. Zhao Chen didn't dodge or avoid, he took out his fragile as a breeze laser and aimed it at them. Armor piercing bullets, five consecutive high speed shots. Seeing the miserable end of the swordsman, the body cultivator didn't dare to be arrogant. His whole body was shining with golden light as he rushed towards Zhao Chen with all his strength. He was confident that he could withstand three attacks, and during these three attacks, he would have enough time to smash the strange summoner's head with one punch. Unfortunately, he would never know the difference between armor-piercing bullets and high-explosive bullets in his lifetime. With a burst of fine light rain, just the first shot pierced through the body cultivator's left shoulder, and the following 14 armor-piercing bullets, highly concentrated plasma beams, turned the entire body cultivator into a sieve. Fortunately, the plasma beams were not physical, otherwise the body cultivator would not have been a puddle on the ground, but a lump nailed to the ground. Just as the body cultivator was enduring the ordeal of being pierced by thousands of arrows, the black dagger quietly stabbed Zhao Chen in the back. Accompanied by the sound of metal clashing, the assassin felt as if he had stabbed a heavy suit of armor. He was thrown away, his tiger's mouth cracked, and the dagger in his hand broke in two. The assassin female cultivator who fell into the merchant group didn't have time to hide in the darkness again before she was knocked down by the explosive talismans summoned by four foundation establishment peak cultivators. The formidable cultivation of the Golden Core Realm, even the explosive talismans of the Foundation Establishment Peak, bombarded her a total of 19 times before she finally breathed her last breath. It seems that the Foundation Establishment experts hired by the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce are not easy to deal with, they are ruthless and completely unlike the supporting characters in novels who only follow the protagonist and are shocked, explained, and gasped. However, if it weren't for the fact that this headhunting behavior had no impact on Zhao Chen's personal record and economy, he would have to ask if those four foundation establishment cultivators were bought in bulk by their parents. In less than half an incense stick's worth of time since he confronted this strange summoner, three out of the five golden core experts had already been lost. However, in the battle rhythm where Zhao Chen occasionally made a move, occasionally acted weak, occasionally observed, and occasionally made a sarcastic comment, the mage had quietly prepared a fireball spell. This was no ordinary fireball, but one that came from a jade talisman sealed by the combined force of 20 golden core peak cultivators. A fireball with a diameter of 10 meters fell from the sky, and if not handled properly, the aftermath of the explosion would be enough to send the entire merchant group to the afterlife. Foolish Shinxingxue was still stunned in place, while clever sixth brother was already preparing to escape, just like those four foundation establishment experts it's important to respect the wide range of attacks, after all, it wouldn't end well if the employer accidentally gets blown up. Zhao Chen no longer holds back and immediately summons a massive Titan Core nanobot swarm, a giant silver figure of light rises from the ground. The Titan mech gently catches the fireball like picking an apple, then holds it in its chest like holding a child. The four foundation building cultivators who were trying to steal kills are shocked and take a sharp breath. With a loud bang, only a small shockwave escapes from the cracks in the mech's arm, blowing Shin Qingxue's bangs in front of her forehead. The spiritual energy used to gather the fireball, damn it, I should have known it was a lousy golden pill. While Zhao Chen demonstrates his ability to withstand peak attacks from the golden pill stage without any harm, the foolish Tang Chuan is still standing there stunned, while the smart mage and support have already started running away. Buzzing, the titan mech crouches down in preparation, then a war god jumps up, lands with a loud crash, stomps on a foundation building cultivator, and slaps a mid-air mage away with one palm. With the last two taken care of, the team should be in perfect order. Tang Chuan, who wants to run away belatedly, hasn't activated his magic treasure yet and is already held in the mech's giant hand. Then, countless nanobot swarms return to the bracelet, leaving only Zhao Chen and the nanobot chain imprisoning Tang Chuan. Who? Who are you exactly? Someone with your strength, why would you willingly work for the Starpoint Trading Company? Tang Chuan's lips tremble a bit, but he still plays with his words, attempting to create a rift between Zhao Chen and the Starpoint Trading Company. Because they offered me too much, Zhao Chen calmly says. What do you want? Cooperate with our Tang family, we have more resources. Zhao Chen turns his head and looks at Xin Xingxue. Add another 50,000, get rid of him. Upon hearing Xin Xingxue's words, Tang Chuan's eyes widen suddenly. You can't kill me. Once you kill me, the Tang family ancestor will never let you go. I have someone behind me. Before Tang Chuan finishes speaking, as if he's been cursed, he loses all signs of life right in front of Zhao Chen's eyes. 
Obviously, he wanted to reveal some information and was silenced. Sensing a probing gaze about to come, Zhao Chen's eyes narrow, he flicks his little hand and throws Tang Chuan's corpse in front of Xin Xingxue. In the underground of the Tang Mansion in Rongyang City, an old man watches Xin Xingxue's face in the water mirror and becomes furious. Xin Xingxue, Starpoint Trading Company, my Tang family will not rest until we settle the score with you. Xin Xingxue, who is being stared at, turns her head to look at Zhao Chen, looking confused. Do you want me to bear the anger of the Tang family for you? That's an additional price. Zhao Chen raises an eyebrow with a smile. One billion, fifty million medium-grade spirit stones, and I will completely wipe out the Tang family for you. Xin Xingxue's mouth twitches with an awkward yet polite smile. Zhao Gongzi is kind, but our Starpoint Trading Company can handle it. You don't need to trouble yourself. Zhao Chen, seeing his big business opportunity go down the drain, can only shake his head helplessly and return to the carriage. We'll reach Anan City in another day on the commercial road, right? Why are you just standing there? Let's go. At this moment, in the Great Hall of the Merchant Alliance in northern Jizhou, a figure gazes at Xin Xingxue in the water mirror. Has a stranger with great skills appeared to disrupt things? Xingxue, your luck is really something. Spiritual energy is almost a universal source of energy, and the pressure caused by high concentrations of spiritual energy is also extremely terrifying. The cultivation world generally refers to this as pressure. Among the various levels of pressure, only the pressure from a golden pill cultivator is almost always present. In the process of continuously circulating and compressing spiritual energy, a portion of it escapes, creating a spiritual pressure field several times higher than the ordinary environment. The higher the pressure and the more abundant the spiritual energy of the golden core cultivators, the more it indicates that their golden cores are leaking and their efficiency in utilizing spiritual energy is low. True high-level cultivators have already achieved internal containment of spiritual energy. If they don't actively release it, they are almost indistinguishable from ordinary people. However, due to Zhao Chen's slightly higher utilization rate of the Golden Core's spiritual energy, there is no leakage of spiritual power at all. In the absence of actively releasing spiritual energy, the oppressive feeling that ordinary Golden Core cultivators usually give off is almost non-existent. Who would be afraid of a caravan that seems to have no golden core cultivator leading it? Those bandits who are accustomed to bloodshed would dare to attack as long as they don't see a golden core cultivator in the caravan. After dealing with 18 demonic beasts that crossed the merchant road and annihilating five ignorant bandit groups along the way, Zhao Chen and Xuanxiu both understood the trouble brought by the high-efficiency golden core lack of prestige. So, during the few days of rushing on the road, Xuanxiu designed a new core function once again, the spiritual pressure core. By actively creating powerful collisions of spiritual energy, it can exert tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands times the spiritual pressure on external objects. The principle is simple. The pressure of a high-level cultivator alone is not terrifying, and even two together are not very frightening. But if you dare to wander around the boundary where the pressures of two high-level cultivators who are in a standoff collide, you will know what it means to bear the weight of life. Most cultivators' spiritual pressure is suppressed by violently releasing it to suppress enemies with lower cultivation levels. In this innocent cultivation world, Lalu never thought that he could use the method of actively creating collisions of spiritual energy to suppress enemies with higher cultivation levels, like stepping on one foot and spiraling up to the skybug. After the first half-power activation of the spiritual pressure core, at the cost of the entire Dianqing Chamber of Commerce being pressed down, Xuanxiu estimated the power effect of the spiritual pressure core. When fully activated during the golden core stage, it can basically replicate the pressure of a peak yuaning cultivator. At this moment, in the hidden mountains and forests on both sides of the merchant road, a group of 50 to 60 bandits were waiting in the woods. The three caravans that passed by earlier all had golden core cultivators leading them, and most of those golden core experts had also noticed them, but they only intimidated them briefly. After all, they were engaged in escorting and there was no need to exterminate everyone. Just as everyone was about to give up, another caravan approached from a distance. This caravan was obviously small, with only five or six vehicles. The North-South Merchant Road has never lacked such stubborn caravans that dare to travel without golden core cultivators. Some of them gamble that they won't encounter bandits, while others follow closely behind large caravans, taking advantage of their golden core experts. However, the three caravans ahead had already gone far, leaving this caravan far behind. Brothers, get ready to attack. Just as everyone drew their weapons, the caravan happened to reach the center of the ambush. Buzz, a terrifying pressure swept through the surrounding area like a tide. 
The bandits on both sides of the road all knelt down, their knees giving way, as the pressure gradually increased. With the increasing pressure, everyone was pressed against the ground, and the bones of their knees and faces creaked as if they could shatter at any moment. The terrifying pressure not only affected their external bodies but also tortured their internal organs and blood vessels. As the caravan moved further away, the pressure gradually subsided, and everyone sat up one after another. Some with higher cultivation levels simply brushed off the dust on their faces and rubbed their knees, while some with lower cultivation levels collapsed on the ground, clutching their stomachs, their faces pale, clearly suffering from internal injuries. When the lingering effects of the pressure completely dissipated, the leader of the Foundation Establishment Peak Bandit Group sat on the ground with lingering fear, saying, Brothers, that was too terrifying. This caravan is insane, they actually invited a Yuaning cultivator to lead them. Just the pressure from the Yuaning stage almost took their lives at the same time, inside the carriage of the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce, Zhao Chen took the grapes handed to him by the delicate jade hand and leisurely flipped through the book. The spiritual pressure core on his chest was like a burning mosquito coil, causing all the small fry on the commercial road to retreat, retreat, retreat. Um, Master Zhao, there's something I want to say, I don't know if I should say it. Xin Xinxue twisted the fabric on her knee and spoke softly. Don't say it. Zhao Chen and Chuanxiu saw the humor in it. Zhao Chen was laughing at how funny the plot was, while Chuanxiu was laughing at the captain's sense of humor. They were both so happy that they had no time to pay attention to Xin Xinxue. Xin Xinxue was also stunned by this unexpected response, and after a while, she pouted and said, I want to negotiate another deal worth a hundred thousand on behalf of the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce. Snap! The book flew out of the window of the carriage. This book is indeed a bit boring. Well, go ahead and tell me in detail. Zhao Chen's response was unusually quick. This man had no interest in women, only in spirit stones. Xin Xinxue began to doubt her own charm for the first time. Actually, this time, most of our cargo trucks are carrying ordinary goods. The only thing that needs to be transported is this. Xin Xinxue explained. So that's why two out of the five cargo trucks were filled with grapes? Zhao Chen expressionlessly popped a grape with its skin into his mouth. Xin Xinxue took out a pendant from her cleavage, which was about the size of a grape. Wait, big sister, is this how you transport precious items? Suddenly, the grape in Zhao Chen's hand felt strange. This is a jade marrow pill. Master Zhao may not have heard of it. This kind of pill is extremely rare and can only be refined by the Alchemy Tower. It can. The Alchemy Tower, one of the eight major forces on par with the Holy Land. Zhao Chen pursed his lips, feeling a bit embarrassed. He had just shown off a pill a few days ago. Wait, could it be that your Rou, the big sister, also carries a jade marrow pill like this? Hiss. I mean, why does the scent of this pill linger for so long? It turns out it has been marinated. The atmosphere in Inman City is strange, with complex and conflicting strengths. Our Chamber of Commerce lacks a strong presence to oversee the auction. I have analyzed the situation in Inman City before, whether it's the internal struggle of the Xiao family or the competition in Inman City, this auction is destined to be unstable, Xin Xingxiu patiently explained. I see, this is a power struggle at the center of a whirlpool. No, I need to increase the price. 180,000. I've already put my dowry into it, I can't offer more. Xin Xingxiu pouted pitifully. Zhao Chen naturally knew that these merchants were all cunning and their words couldn't be trusted. To guard such a valuable item and potentially clash with major forces, Xin Xingxiu's psychological expectation should be around a hundred thousand. As the esteemed president of the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce, is your dowry only worth eighty thousand? Three hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand, deal. Zhao Chen said with a smile, and then he popped another grape into his mouth. Damn, this man, pretending to be pitiful won't work on him. In this world of cultivation, the social structure follows the hierarchy of Holy Land Sex Mortal Dynasty The six major holy sites of Tsangjian, Sanyin, Haorin, Yaoji, Taishang, and Xinji, along with the Dan Tower and the Business Alliance, each guard a state and govern the sects of the world. The sects in each state also govern the subordinate secular dynasties, with the former providing protection for the latter and the latter providing talents for the former. Only in certain places with complex interests and high value, the eight major forces will jointly manage. For example, in the central region of Shuzhou, there are also some important border towns. Anan City is naturally included in this list and has always been managed by the major holy sites in rotation. As the largest city in the southern region, Anan City has towering city walls and wide and straight roads, exuding a majestic atmosphere. Resting in Anan City for one night, they waited for the start of the auction. Zhao Chen and Xin Xingxue walked side by side towards the central square where the auction was held. 
Along the way, Zhao Qin maintained a moderate spiritual pressure, indicating a do-not-approach attitude while avoiding being misunderstood as provocation. With the blessing of the spiritual pressure, the pedestrians around them kept their distance and no one dared to disturb them. The two of them successfully arrived at the venue. At the entrance, Xin Xingxue presented the proof of the Chamber of Commerce and received a sequential number plate. The number plate determines the order of the goods exhibited. As a member of the Zhengliu Chamber of Commerce, Xin Xingxue was assigned to Group B, third place. Inside the auction hall, representatives of various business groups took turns to sit. They all carried rare treasures, and the experts around them were all profound golden core cultivators. If the Xiao family privately contacted various business groups, they might have concerns. No matter what price they negotiated, they would feel that their treasures were being sold cheaply. Unexpectedly, the Xiao family now openly held a grand auction in Anan City. This clearly told the world that they were not afraid of competition and were not short of money. As long as there were precious treasures, the Xiao family was bound to obtain them. This was the strength of the first family in Anan City. Zhao Qin led Xin Xingxue towards the central seat, but as soon as he took a step, someone reached out to stop him. The person was an old man in the golden core stage, young friend, I'm sorry, my master has taken a liking to this seat. Ha! Huh? I've never seen such an arrogant person in my life. Clearly, we arrived almost at the same time, and there are so many empty seats around, why do you have to grab one with me? Boom! A huge spiritual pressure secretly crushed towards the old man. Old Bai Deng, what did you say? Zhao Chen asked with a smile. The old man's face turned pale, and he pulled his master back and sat in another seat. This core of spiritual pressure was indeed very useful. If the protagonist in a novel had a little bit of skill in spiritual pressure, they wouldn't always be looked down upon and forced to show off. As each business group took their seats in turn, this grand event in Anan City officially began. A middle-aged man with a rugged face stepped onto the stage. His cultivation in the peak golden core stage was solid and there was no trace of instability. Hello everyone, I am the head of the Xiao family, Xiao Lai. Thank you all for coming from afar to attend this grand event. Let's get started without further ado. It seemed that the head of the Xiao family was also a straightforward person. Number 1. Soon, as the numbers were called, a representative of a business group appeared on the stage. Yunhai Chamber of Commerce, we have brought a drop of unregretful dew, collected from the depths of the East Sea. It can repair foundations. The starting price is 1 million medium-grade spirit stones. The venue immediately buzzed with excitement. What is unregretful do? Zhao Chen asked Shen Xingxue. After a moment of thought, Shen Xingxue answered, It is. One of the main materials for refining jade essence pills. Its effect is weaker than that of the pill, but it is still a rare treasure that is hard to come by. Starting with a bang, it seems that the rumors about the decline in the cultivation of the eldest daughter of the head of the Xiao family are true. Other business groups must have done their homework as well. Although Shen Xingxue said so, there was no trace of worry in her tone. Obviously, she was confident in her goods. In the bidding process, the whole venue was silent and tacit. Such an important treasure, being the first auction item, the Xiao family was bound to win it. If they bid at this time, wouldn't it be a blow to the face of the Xiao family? If they were resented in the future, they could cause trouble for you in certain places, and it would be the small families like them who would suffer. The Xiao family did not disappoint, directly buying the medium-grade spirit stones for 2 million, double the price, giving the auction a great start. For the next few auction items that were useful for restoring foundations, the Xiao family bought them all with their overwhelming price advantage. However, for some rare weapons and props, Xiao Lai showed no interest, causing a frenzy of competition among the major forces. Soon, the auction of the first-class Chamber of Commerce's Group A items ended, and the major forces basically bought one or two treasures of their liking, both buyers and sellers were happy, and the atmosphere was harmonious. As for Group B, the various families clearly began to exert their strength, and the bidding, which was originally in increments of 10,000, started to increase by 1,000. The head of the Xiao family had even stood up and was preparing to leave. Group B, Dianqing Chamber of Commerce. With the announcement of the host cultivator, Zhao Chen slowly walked up to the stage with a jade box. The audience was very calm. The truly high-quality treasures had already been competed for in Group A. Now, in Group B, they were all decent quality spiritual objects, so let the small and medium-sized families and forces fight for them. Zhao Chen smiled slightly and didn't say anything. Instead, he slowly opened the box containing the pill. A strange and ethereal fragrance wafted out, and all the cultivators present were invigorated. The head of the Xiao family, who had already reached the back door, also paused in his footsteps, his eyes full of disbelief. This is. 
Dianqing Chamber of Commerce, Yu Sui Pill, starting price, one medium grade spirit stone. Zhao Chen's words instantly ignited the entire venue. Before Xiao Lai could return to his seat, the major forces present were already competing with each other. Now, they didn't care about the face of the Xiao family anymore, and the major forces were all in a frenzy. If the Wahanglu could restore a genius to his former glory, then the Yu Sui Pill could turn a useless person into a genius. If a genius really emerged, it was possible for the family to rise to prominence and share the glory with the Xiao family. At worst, after buying it, they would wait in place for the family's ancestors to come and escort them back. Xiao Lai wouldn't dare to make a move in the auction. 500 pieces. Damn it, you dare to bid with 500 pieces. I bid 1 million. 3 million. Just as the bidding scene became uncontrollable, Xiao Lai, who hurriedly returned to his seat, also shouted a price. 20 million. At this moment, the major forces had already spent most of their funds in the group A battle. 20 million medium-grade spirit stones. Enough to support two golden core cultivators. Seeing that Xiao Lai had directly raised the price to such a terrifying level, many forces began to weigh their wallets and fists. If the wallet was not enough, what about the fist? Obviously, some people started to have evil thoughts. They would directly attack and snatch the pill, then ask for the protection of their family ancestors. It would only be a matter of compensating for the price and apologizing. In the next moment, three figures flew towards the stage. Three golden core cultivators. Outrageous. Xiao Lai roared and made a move, but he only managed to stop one person. Looking at the two golden core cultivators who were rushing forward like hungry dogs, Zhao Chen's face was full of disdain. Xun Xiao core, ready. With a thunderous explosion, the purple light of thunder illuminated the entire venue. The other two golden core cultivators who had rushed out disappeared in an instant, turning into charred corpses on the ground. This was the full power output of the Xinxiao core. Even if it was the late stage of the golden core or the early stage of the nascent soul, they would have to consider whether their skin was thick enough. Zhao Chen looked at the ashes on the ground and felt a little disappointed. After all, the spatial storage ring was not something that was common, so there were naturally no such people who dared to rob at purple sky divine thunder. Some knowledgeable people present immediately recognized the purple thunder that had just appeared. No wonder they dared to bring out such a treasure for sale, turns out they invited a master of the nascent soul stage. They had never heard of such a young nascent soul expert before, who could also use the pure purple sky divine thunder. Could it be someone from the holy land? In the next moment, a terrifying pressure from the nascent soul stage swept through the entire venue. Zhao Chen on the stage smiled brightly, everyone, let's follow the rules of the auction for the auction and follow the rules of the martial world for the competition. Those who don't follow the rules, don't blame me, Zhao, for causing a scene. At that moment, everyone in the audience sat up straight, not daring to breathe. Xin Qingxue's eyes were also filled with amazement. She had already been impressed by young master Zhao's cultivation, but she never expected him to truly be in the nascent soul stage. It wasn't that she was too dull to guess, but rather that she hesitated to make such a judgment. A nascent soul expert in their twenties. What a terrifying talent. Not only Xin Qingxue, but everyone in the audience was also shocked. Some nascent soul experts were like old ancestors, with their vitality depleted, sleeping in dark caves all year round. Some nascent soul experts served as bodyguards for merchant caravans, their aura capable of killing two foundation establishment cultivators on the spot. It was too much. After Zhao Chen's persuasion, the entire auction resumed its original order. Just when everyone thought that this precious pill would be won by the Xiao family. 25 million. Another voice shouted. Who was so stubborn to continue bidding against the Xiao family's offer? It should be noted that Xiao Lai was already anxious about his daughter's situation, and this pill was probably already considered a forbidden fruit by him. Whether it was a genuine attempt to snatch it or just to drive up the price, it would undoubtedly result in completely offending the Xiao family. Everyone looked towards the direction of the bidder, and it turned out to be the Li family from the east of the city. They knew that there would be a good show starting. The Li family from the east of the city was one of the few families that could rival the Xiao family in strength. It should be mentioned that their patriarch's legitimate son was engaged to the Xiao family's legitimate daughter. However, the Li family's legitimate son had already been noticed by the hidden sword Holy Land and was about to rise to prominence. It was estimated that he no longer had any interest in the Xiao family's crippled daughter. Their bid at this moment for the Jade Essence pill was quite intriguing. Xiao Lai looked towards the Li family's seat and the one making the bid was naturally the Li family's patriarch, Li Yang. Sensing Xiao Lai's gaze, Li Yang smiled apologetically, but there was some insincerity in his smile. Master Xiao, I'm really sorry, but this jade essence pill is truly precious. 
Since it's an auction, let the highest bidder win. This 30 million was not a small amount for the Lee family. Their vast family business needed to keep running, and it was difficult to gamble it all on just one pill. It was obvious that there was a suspicion of maliciously driving up the price. Master Lee, you're too polite. Although this grand event is organized by my Xiao family, there's no need to always follow the etiquette of guests. If the Li family is interested, you can bid fairly. Li Yang snorted at these words, feeling that if Xiao Lai got angry at this moment, it would show that the Xiao family couldn't afford it. However, by being so polite, it seemed that the Li family was being a bit too presumptuous. 30 million. Xiao Lai made another bid. 40 million. Li Yang followed closely. 50 million. Xiao Lai gritted his teeth and shouted an unprecedented price. You. Li Yang was shocked by Xiao Lai's madness and hesitated to raise the bid again. If Xiao Lai suddenly gave up and demanded that the Li family produce this huge sum within a limited time, then everything would be over. After all, this was an auction recognized by the Merchant Alliance. If they dared to bid and then back out, it wouldn't be as simple as just paying the money. 50 million once. 50 million twice. Hold on. With the sound of a deep and resonant voice like a bell, an old man arrived in midair. The man was dressed in luxurious clothes and could walk in midair without relying on any treasures. He was undoubtedly in the nascent soul stage the figure flying in the open air venue amazed the crowd, and those with sharp eyes recognized the identity of the old man. Oh no, isn't that Patriarch Lee from the Lee family? He has been in seclusion for decades, why did he suddenly come out? This situation is no longer a simple secret battle between the Xiao and Lee families. Once one side invites an infant transformation patriarch, things will gradually develop in an uncontrollable direction. Young friend, I came here to make an offer, is it still in time? The old man floated in the air, smilingly asked Zhao Chun. Facing the infant transformation elder floating high in the sky, Zhao Chun couldn't be bothered to even lift his eyelids, I don't like looking up at people, you sit down honestly first, and then we can talk about the auction. Upon hearing this, Patriarch Li's face stiffened. When he received the message from Li Yang to come here, he had already realized that the young man in the field might be in the infant transformation realm. He had intended to be friendly first and then use force, but he didn't expect this young man to have no face at all. He forced a stiff smile and said, Young friend is right, I will sit down now. After speaking, Patriarch Li sat down in the Li family's seat and gave a meaningful look at Xiao Lai. Xiao Lai frowned, sweat already seeping from his forehead. When did Patriarch Li come out of seclusion? Why did the Li family hide the news of Patriarch's emergence? What are their intentions? While Xiao Lai was pondering, the Li family made another offer. One cave heaven treasure. The whole venue was in an uproar. Cave heaven treasures, which can store items in the void, such as storage rings, can only be refined by those in the return to void realm. They have always been precious and in short supply. Now, many people in the audience turned their heads towards the Xiao family. Xiao Lai pondered for a moment and made a firm decision, one purple flame sword. The venue fell into a deathly silence. The purple flame sword was Xiao Lai's famous weapon. As a middle grade treasure, its value was immeasurable. In the cultivation world, weapons are divided into treasure, artifact, spiritual weapon, holy weapon, and immortal weapon, each level further divided into upper, middle, and lower grades. In the mortal world, a middle grade treasure is enough to produce an unparalleled expert, while an upper grade treasure is enough to guard a top tier family. If Xiao Lai lost the purple flame sword, his own strength would be greatly reduced. Many people in the Li family's seat couldn't sit still anymore. They obviously couldn't afford the price of a middle grade treasure. Patriarch, you must do your best. Wen Yao is filial and talented. Our Li family's opportunity is here today. Li Yang advised respectfully by Patriarch's side. Patriarch Li's expression changed constantly. Just as he was about to make another bid, he suddenly stood up, and the pressure of the infant transformation realm swept through the entire venue. Young friend, it seems that we won't be able to determine the winner today. The matter of bidding, my Li family needs to discuss it properly. How about letting me keep this pill for now? and when the discussion is appropriate, we can proceed with the auction. Xiao Lai resisted the immense pressure and his eyes widened, Li family, are you openly robbing at the auction? What happened to your sense of righteousness? Although Xiao Lai's infant transformation elder was only in the mid-stage of the infant transformation realm, he had already approached the critical point of his lifespan and had fallen into a deep sleep. He wouldn't easily come out unless it was a disaster for the clan. Now, it seems that no one can restrain the immortal patriarch of the Li family. That old immortal had only ascended to the infant transformation realm less than a hundred years ago, during the peak of his power. It was unknown whether the young man on the stage could handle it. 
Zhao Chen also rose into the air without relying on any treasures, and a tremendous pressure collided with the Li family's patriarch. Under the pressure of one side's infant transformation realm, the guests could still bear it, but now the pressures of both sides collided, and many low cultivation guests directly spewed blood and scattered in all directions. Seeing Shen Qingxue being carried away by the crowd, Zhao Chen finally dared to exert his full strength. If he accidentally killed his employer, his 550,000 would go down the drain. Seeing that Zhao Chen's cultivation was not weak, Patriarch Li didn't dare to be careless and directly summoned his own treasure a long sword shining with blue light rose up, surrounded by a chilling sword aura. This sword was full of spiritual energy, and the cold light lingered, obviously a high-quality treasure. Kid, take this sword. Boom accompanied by a deafening explosion, a sword aura full of overwhelming pressure swept over like a landslide. Zhao Chen's scalp tingled as he manipulated the propulsion device of the light sword core, his figure disappeared in an instant, leaving only a broken afterimage in place. It seems that the last time he faced the nascent soul stage was also the last time. The attack of that cunning old monster was blocked by Shi Ro's magic weapon and beheaded by Lu Chengfeng's three-second true man state. Zhao Chen never had a chance to truly fight against the nascent soul stage. Now that he has experienced it up close, Zhao Chen can only say that all the nonsense about being able to fight beyond one's level is just bullshit. Even though the power of his golden core is thousands of times that of an ordinary golden core, he dare not confront this sword light. The sword light he slashed out was still powerful, cutting off a corner of the square reinforced by the formation. Li Jia's ancestor narrowed his eyes, such fast speed. In the next moment, a golden light sword fiercely slashed towards Li Jia's ancestor. The ancestor swung his sword to block it, and the frost and flames collided, the two completely different forces clashing back and forth. Seeing that his attack failed, Zhao Chen pushed back and retreated, at the same time a laser beam swept across his forehead. Li Jia's ancestor had never seen such ever-changing methods before. The power of 300 times that of an ordinary golden core was also formidable. Caught off guard, he was immediately pierced through the abdomen by the laser beam. However, in less than a breath's time, the wound on Li Jia's ancestor's abdomen had already begun to slowly heal. Zhao Chen took a deep breath and felt that this battle was not easy. It seems that with his current strength, he can only be invincible below the nascent soul stage. Heavenly Core, Fiery Core, Super Power Activation. Zhao Chen was surrounded by lightning, and a blue flame appeared in his palm. Then, the blue flame and the purple thunder simultaneously swept towards Li Jia's ancestor. Purple Sky Divine Thunder. Netherworld Emperor Flame. Who is this kid? He actually has so many tricks. Looking at the two forces flying towards him, they were both notorious existences in the cultivation world. Li Jia's ancestor immediately mobilized his spiritual energy, and the majestic spiritual energy even produced an engine-like sound during the operation. This time, the spiritual energy was no longer simply gathered at the tip of the sword to form a sword aura explosion, but instead formed a complex spiritual energy circuit, as if some kind of martial technique had been activated. As for what martial technique it was, that remains unknown, after all, normal people with functioning brains wouldn't shout out the names of their moves during battle, right? Why would you shout it out to let the enemy counter you? As the martial technique was completed, the entire long sword was enveloped in a burst of extreme cold aura, turning into a deep blue stream of light and colliding head-on with the lightning and flames. An attack that could instantly kill a golden core stage cultivator actually exploded directly after being struck by the blue sword light, dispersing into countless spiritual energy particles. The blue long sword that had destroyed two consecutive attacks also suffered a great loss of power, being shot away by a laser beam from Zhao Chen's forehead, and flew back into Li Jia's ancestor's hand. The two of them completed several rounds of confrontation in just a few rounds. To outsiders, it was just a few flashes of light between two nascent soul stage powerhouses. Just as the two sides were deadlocked, a golden core cultivator flew over on a flying sword, who dares to cause a disturbance in a Nan city. The person who came was the city lord of a Nan city, Zhu Kai, a golden core stage powerhouse from the sword hiding Holy Land. When Zhu Kai arrived, he saw two powerful nascent soul stage cultivators clashing with their auras. So it's senior Zhu Kai. Li Jia's ancestor turned his head and smiled. Lordly, nice to meet you. I wonder why the two of you are causing such a commotion here, destroying the square. What is the matter? Xia Lai saw the friendly conversation between the two and immediately thought it was not good since the eldest son of the Li family entered the Sword Saint's sanctuary, they have been in constant conflict with the influence of the sanctuary in Anan. It seems that they have already become enemies, and it is unlikely that Lord Zhu will be able to enforce justice. I felt an instant connection with this young friend, so we had a friendly exchange. The ancestor of the Li family said without hesitation. Oh, 
Then why don't you continue your exchange outside the city and avoid damaging the city's facilities? Xu Kai suggested, glancing at Zhao Chen. The expression on the face of the ancestor of the Li family immediately turned cold. Xu Kai's words implied that they couldn't fight inside the city, but it also gave the ancestor of the Li family an opportunity to fight outside the city. However, whether the young man was willing to leave the city was none of his concern. This person was cunning, trying not to offend either side. After all, Zhao Qin was also in the nascent soul stage, even younger than the ancestor of the Li family. It would not be wise to offend such a young nascent soul cultivator. On the contrary, Zhao Qin smiled slightly and said, All right, we will continue outside the city, considering the concerns for the people within the city. Lao Bai, let's leave the city. As soon as these words were spoken, everyone was astonished. Has this young man gone mad? Is he really going to take such a precious treasure out of the city to fight? The ancestor of the Li family was also delighted. He didn't expect this young man to be so reckless. Then let's go. Two streaks of light flashed, and both of them appeared in the sky above the mountains outside Anan City. Xuanxiao, how much longer until the aerial support arrives? Zhao Chen asked in his mind. The Phoenix Bird aerial strategic platform released the Golden Crow bomber five minutes ago. It is estimated to arrive in three. Three minutes? That long? Zhao Chen expressed doubt about the speed of the Golden Crow's support. Two. One. Oh, then it's fine. The Golden Crow strategic bomber truly lives up to its reputation. It can cover vast distances in an instant. Commander, the Golden Crow has arrived at the battlefield. Solar flare is charging up. The voice of the Golden Crow's onboard intelligence came through his mind. The spiritual perception of the Golden Crow heavy strategic bomber in the nascent soul stage was completely different from that of the anti-aircraft radar. The moment the Golden Crow arrived over the battlefield, the ancestor of the Li family noticed something unusual. A summoned beast, huh? The head of the Li family sneered disdainfully and casually unleashed a sword chi. The sword chi collided with the ion shield of the Golden Crow bomber, creating a dazzling burst of sparks. Ha! Huh? Seeing that his attack had failed, the ancestor of the Li family became more cautious. Could it be that this summoned beast was also in the nascent soul stage? Although the phase camouflage of the Golden Crow bomber could be detected by spiritual perception, it still blocked some information. In the eyes of the ancestor of the Li family, the summoned beast in the sky seemed to be shrouded in a layer of mist, making it difficult to see its true depth. In the midst of his confusion, the ancestor of the Li family did not stop his sword, and when he swung it again, his spiritual perception caught something strange. It seemed like the summoned creature had opened some kind of hidden compartment in its abdomen and threw something out. It wasn't actually a hidden compartment, but the missile bay of the Golden Crow. Swish, swish, swish. Three missiles with deep radiance descended. This time, they were carrying proton impact warheads, which generated a destructive power similar to a nuclear explosion through high-speed proton collisions. However, this type of destruction was more concentrated and did not cause a chain reaction, keeping the destruction and high temperatures confined to a small area. Buzz, buzz, buzz. The ancestor of the Li family watched as the three missiles above his head lit up, and his hair stood on end. A sense of impending death enveloped him. The three tiny proton impacts collided with the protective aura of the ancestor of the Li family, and then a bright light burst forth boom 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 accompanied by the explosion, layers of golden ripples spread out, destroying everything within the blast radius. Just as the explosion was about to subside, a phantom spirit flashed out from the explosion's light, fleeing thousands of miles away, leaving behind a malicious remark, you little brat, dare to destroy my physical body. I won't rest until I've killed you. Zhao Chen's brow lit up with a radiant light, shooting towards the edge of the infant spirit. By the time the second shot was fully charged, the infant spirit had already disappeared. The speed at which the infant spirit escaped was truly fast, which was why it was difficult to deal with. Won't rest until I've killed you? Hearing the resentful words of the Li family's ancestor, Zhao Chen's eyes widened, Xuanxiao, where are the coordinates of the Li family's mansion? Take the Golden Crow and go there. Captain, calm down, the Golden Crow has three cruise missiles. Xuanxiao's voice echoed in his mind. What the hell? Zhao Chen suddenly felt uneasy. In the past, the designer of the Golden Crow bomber was hysterical in his office, horsepower, horsepower, it's all about horsepower. Expand the bomb bay 20 times for me. What's the point of a strategic bomber that can't carry a hundred tons of ammunition? In the past, the designer of the Chuanqiu Intelligent Corps was hysterical in his office. Aggression, aggression, it's all about aggression. Enhance the aggressive personality 20 times for me. What's the point of the Shihai ship's Intelligent Corps if it's not the strongest war AI? However, now, Captain, calm down, the Golden Crow only has three cruise missiles. 
You too, do your designers know about this? Zhao Chen rubbed his forehead, why didn't you bring more? We don't have enough production capacity. Most of the ammunition in stock has been damaged, so we need to allocate resources to produce them now. Do you know how much energy and time it takes to make a proton bullet? Xuanxiu's tone was full of innocence, you want the horse to run, but you don't want the horse to eat grass. Sob sob sob, captain is so heartless. If you sob again, I'll format you. Captain is so heartless. Fine, I'll give you all the spirit stones earned from this trade fair. Next time, I want to see a golden crow fully loaded. Zhao Chen gritted his teeth. As a soldier of the Federation, he fully upheld the Federation's tradition. He could be without money, but he couldn't be without firepower. With firepower, he could take anything he wanted. Star River Federation, if the neighbor hoards food, I'll hoard guns. The neighbor is my granary. Mysterious creature, have I been too generous to you? When Zhao Chen returned to the square, the chaos in the center of the square had already subsided. Most of the buyers and merchant groups who had completed their transactions had already left, leaving only a few people waiting in place. Xin Xingxiu had stood anxiously at the edge of the field and immediately ran over when she saw Zhao Chen descending from the sky, Young Master Zhao, are you alright? Xiao Lai also came to Zhao Chen's side, respected Zhao, why do I only see you and not the Li family's ancestor? In the mortal cultivation world, the golden core stage was called a true person, and the nascent soul stage was called a respected elder. Xiao Lai's address clearly showed great respect for Zhao Chen. With just a glance, Zhao Chen knew that the two of them were definitely not concerned about him, but about the pills he was holding. The Li family's ancestor has profound cultivation. In the end, I was one move short. Zhao Chen said with regret, taking out the pill jade box from his pocket, but rest assured, the pills are still intact. The two of them had been on edge, but when they heard this sudden turn of events, they breathed a sigh of relief. Respected Zhao, there's no need to underestimate yourself. The Li family's ancestor has been in the nascent soul stage for a long time. For someone of your age to be able to confront a mid-stage nascent soul cultivator head-on, your future achievements are probably beyond our imagination. Xiao Lai sighed. Yes. I only had time to kill his physical body, but his nascent soul managed to escape. One move short, it's truly a pity. Zhao Chen said with genuine regret, his expression sincere and without any falsehood. Yes, it's truly a. Ha! Huh? Xiao Lai wanted to agree, but suddenly froze down. You're telling me you lost by just one move? One move short and you couldn't finish them off? They were more skilled and managed to escape? What the hell? Nowadays, these young guys are all so impatient, they don't even want to tell the truth. They're even hurting an old man like me. It's really a shame how the world has changed, people's hearts are no longer the same. After sighing, Shall I finally remembered the main matter and turned to look at Xin Xingxue, President Xin, the auction was disrupted by the Li family this time, and most of the items have already been sold. It's probably difficult to hold it again. I wonder how the Guishan Club plans to deal with this jade marrow pill. Xin Xingxue saw this and took the pill box from Zhao Chen's hand, smiling slightly, we, the Guishan Club, deeply appreciate the sincerity of the Xiao family in this auction. As for the part where the Li family interfered with the Yuan Ing, let's not count it for now. Let's use the final offer from the Xiao family, 50 million spirit stones. Xiao Lai, upon hearing this, was also deeply moved. With Miss Shen's reasonable and understanding leadership in the Guishan Club, it will definitely not be limited to just a corner of Rongyang City. If you need any help in the future, my Xiao family will never refuse. Xin Xingxue smiled gently and handed over the pillbox, Master Xiao, you flatter me. The Guishan Club still has unresolved troubles within Rongyang City. If Master Xiao is willing, please lend us your support. Xiao Lai took the pillbox and immediately handed over a silver paper, which was a check for 50 million spirit stones. I am also displeased with the actions of the Tang family in Rongyang City. When the opportunity arises, I will definitely rectify the situation and bring clarity to Rongyang City. Zhao Chen couldn't help but praise Xin Qingxue's management, Xuanxiu. Look at this Xin Qingxue, she's a shrewd person. She knows that it would be difficult for Xiao Lai to bring out a treasure without the pressure from the Li family's Yuan Ing, so she simply gave up on the business of the treasure and sold a favor to the Xiao family. Xuanxiu, upon hearing this, teased, What's this, Captain, are you interested? Zhao Chen laughed instead of getting annoyed, in terms of beauty, Xin Xingxue is one step ahead of you, and in terms of wisdom, she's even more incomparable. If I were to be interested, it would be in you Xuanxiu's laughter abruptly stopped, stop it, it's so greasy and disgusting. Now that the matters of the club have been concluded, why don't you both come to my Xiao family as guests? It would also allow me, Xiao, to fulfill my duties as a host. Xin Xingxue reluctantly agreed, and when they turned their heads to look, Zhao Chen was nowhere to be found. Zhao Chen's behavior had always been unique, 
different from the mentioned Xingxue had met before. His actions were unpredictable. What is Zhao Gongzi doing? Xin Xingxue murmured softly. At this moment, in a small tavern in Annan City, it was afternoon and not yet time for dinner. There were only a few customers drinking tea in groups of two or three. Zhao Chen sat in an elegant private room, sipping tea with a look of being lost in thought. It wasn't that Zhao Chen was pretending to be aloof and deliberately avoiding the banquet at the Xiao family, but rather, there were more important matters that needed to be dealt with on the Xihao. The federal technology spiritualization, led by Chuanxiao, had officially begun. Although it had been confirmed in the long-term research of the Federation that spiritual energy could be converted into any known form of energy, due to the extreme scarcity of spiritual energy in the original universe, there was no need for large-scale spiritualization in federal technology. Therefore, in the spiritual energy energy sector, many important technologies were still blank. After all, once spiritual energy was used as an energy source, it meant that the internal structure of all weapons on the Shihao needed to be iteratively upgraded. The Qilin Breaking Formation Battle Vehicle, the Zhurong Main Battle Tank, the Baihu Quantum Heavy Cannon, the Zhu Attack Aircraft, the Jin Wu Bomber. Many lovely children were eagerly waiting to be nurtured. Xuanxiao had been silent for so long that the CPU had smoked several times, and now he had finally completed the design of all units' blueprints. Captain, all the new design drawings for each combat unit are now complete, but currently only two war factories have resumed production, so we cannot fully produce and replace the existing weapons and equipment. Does that mean you want me to prioritize? That's right, given she has current capacity, we can only set up two battle unit production lines. Only two production lines? Zhao Chen couldn't help but fall into contemplation upon hearing this. The transformation of spiritual energy into a tremendous boost in combat effectiveness for the combat units also solved the problem of dealing with the Gue Su monsters. After all, ordinary attacks were difficult to disperse the demonic energy on the Gue Su monsters, and the high destructive weapons that could completely annihilate the monsters couldn't be used without restrictions. Therefore, the choice of the current production line was worth considering. These two combat units needed to cover various combat scenarios and be equipped in an organized manner to form a sufficient deterrent force in a short period of time. Then, let's prioritize the production of the Pajun Mecha and the Zhu Ke attack aircraft. The Pajun Mecha, as one of the few all-terrain combat units, embodies the top-tier Federation aesthetics of firepower and maneuverability. The Zhu Ke fighter can attack all ground and aerial targets, and in the face of a powerful Zhu Ke cluster, all enemies will eventually turn into desperate ashes. Hearing Zhao Chen's choice, Chun Xiao's tone was filled with satisfaction. Captain, I have always approved of your vision for war. Zhao Chen smiled slightly, knowing full well that Chun Xiao had made the same choice. She could have just started production directly, but she had to come and ask me. She really, I'm so touched by the way, Captain, the current production line is using the future energy source of the advanced spiritual stone core. If you don't claim your reward soon, she he will be in trouble next week. Zhao Chen suddenly remembered that someone owed him a huge sum of money. I'll go claim it later. How many spiritual stones does your core need? Of course, all the spiritual stones on the captain. She could have just taken them by force, but she had to gently remind me. She really, I'm so touched the sun had just set, and the light shining on in Nan City faded away. Inside the Xiao family mansion, Xiao Lai and Xin Xingxiu sat at a table, with a cold-faced woman also sitting there. After three rounds of drinks, Xiao Lai finally spoke slowly, President Xin, there is something I would like to ask of you today. Xiao family master, as long as I, Xin Xingxue, am capable enough, I will definitely lend a helping hand. Xiao Lai turned his head and glanced at his daughter sitting beside him, sighing softly, the situation in the city has been changing rapidly recently, and the situation is unpredictable. I want to find a guardian for Shuer, so that she can take the elixirs and break through without being disturbed by treacherous people. Xiao family master, if you want a guardian at the golden core stage, I'm afraid you can handle it yourself and don't need to come to me. Xin Xingxue smiled and said, I suppose Xiao family master wants a guardian at the nascent soul stage? I wonder if President Xin's words are effective with young master Zhao? Xiao Lai no longer beat around the bush and went straight to the point. It turned out that he came for young master Zhao. Xin Xingxue smiled bitterly, I'm afraid it's not effective enough. Xiao Lai raised his head in confusion, looking at Xin Xingxue. He didn't believe that there was no relationship between Xin Xingxue and young master Zhao especially since he couldn't grasp the nature of their relationship. Xin Qingxue's words just now, saying it wasn't effective enough. Could it be that it was at the behest of young master Zhao? Does he look down on my Xiao family? With young master Zhao, only spiritual stones are effective. Shen Qingxue continued. So that's it, they need. Ha, huh? they need spiritual stones? 
Young Master Zhao, who is so extraordinary and transcendent, would actually do things for spiritual stones? Aren't geniuses supposed to have pride? Xiao Lai was momentarily stunned, not knowing what to say next. Young Master Zhao's obsession with spiritual stones is truly unprecedented in my life. Xin Xingxue looked up at the sky, as if reminiscing. To put it bluntly, as long as there are enough spiritual stones, it would probably not be a problem to make him become Miss Xiao Shuang's personal bodyguard. Xiao Lai's eyes widened as he listened. Being a bodyguard and a guardian were matters of status and hierarchy. To invite someone at the nascent soul stage to be a bodyguard? You really dare to say that, don't drag me into it is Elder Zhao really so obsessed with spirit stones? Xiao Lai still couldn't believe it and confirmed with Xin Qingxue, if it's spirit stones, I, Xiao, have quite a fortune. If Xiao Clan Lord has such intentions, let me contact young master Zhao later and see what his willingness is, Xin Qingxue nodded slightly. I wonder how much young master Zhao is asking for. Xiao Lai tentatively asked. Well, just as Xin Qingxue was about to speak, accompanied by a sound of breaking through the air, a white figure landed in the center of the Xiao Clan courtyard. Who goes there? The two foundation establishment cultivators guarding the gate immediately stepped forward, wanting to capture this intruder who trespassed into the Xiao Clan. Boom! A wave of pressure spread out, and the two foundation establishment cultivators instantly sank to their knees, as if carrying a mountain on their backs, unable to move an inch. Xiao Clan Lord, your guards are quite good, Zhao Qin smiled as he walked into the hall. He had just used a pressure that was comparable to the early stage of the Golden Core Realm, yet these two foundation establishment cultivators could still barely stand. It seemed that they were outstanding cultivators in the late foundation establishment stage. Xiao Lai immediately got up and saluted, Elder Zhao's visit to my humble abode truly brings glory to my Xiao clan. Then he quickly stepped forward, dismissed the surrounding cultivators, and personally led Zhao Chen into the banquet hall. As the esteemed clan lord of the Xiao clan and a renowned golden core expert in Annan City, he was now showing such flattery to a young man. However, no one felt that there was anything inappropriate. With only a mid Yuan Ing stage cultivator guarding the Xiao clan, they were already firmly seated as the number one family in Annan City. Now, facing a young Yuan Ing expert who was so kind hearted, who would dare to be disrespectful, Xiao Lai led Zhao Chen to the main seat and then instructed the servants to replace all the dishes. He then looked at the girl sitting beside him and said, Elder Zhao, this is Miss Xiao Shuang. Is this the actual protagonist of today's auction? The legendary heavenly pride who had regressed in cultivation. Among the women Zhao Chen had seen so far, Xiao Shuang's appearance could definitely rank in the top four. Unlike the enchanting beauty of Song Yanning, the holy lord of Yao Qi Holy Land, or the pure and lovely saint is Shi Rou. With her light blue long hair and deep blue eyes, Xiao Shuang's beauty was like a flower on a high mountain, making people feel cold and dared not defile it. He definitely couldn't marry someone like her in the future, otherwise, there would be no vitality and passion in his life, and he would step into old age prematurely. Excluding Xiao Shuang, Shi Rou, and Song Yenning from the top four, if you asked who was the first, it would definitely be Chuan Xiao, who held Zhao Chen's economic lifeline. Although Xiao Shuang looked aloof, she didn't dare to put on airs in front of Zhao Chen. She slowly got up and saluted him, Hello, sir. Miss, you greet me like this? Zhao Chen was slightly stunned, then smiled and gestured for Xiao Shuang to sit down, Miss Xiao, there's no need to be so formal. Zhao is about the same age as you, so just call me Zhao brother, no need to be bound by these formalities. Xiao Xuan nodded slightly, okay. Okay, brother Zhao. Seeing the obedient appearance of this girl, Zhao Chen couldn't help but start to ponder a question. Could it be that Xiao Shuang gives off the impression of an icy beauty because she has social anxiety? Seeing Xiao Shuang lowering her head and trembling, Zhao Chen had no choice but to turn to Xin Qingxue and ask, Miss Xin, when will you give me the reward of 550,000 spirit stones? Seeing Zhao Chen openly demanding his reward, Xiao Lai looked astonished. Goodness, you two are flirting with each other, is it really just a business transaction? The key is Xin Qingxue, you dare to spend 550,000 just to invite a Yuan Ing protector? Are you taking advantage of Elder Zhao's lack of understanding of the market? Xin Qingxue, you heartless person, you dare to take advantage of a Yuan Ing expert. Adhering to the principle that anything that can be solved with money is not a problem, Xiao Lai spoke up, Elder Zhao, please don't rush. I have another business proposition here. I wonder if Elder Zhao is interested. As soon as he heard that there was business, Zhao Chen immediately sat up straight and said, Please, Clan Lord Xiao, go ahead. In recent times, the situation in the city has become increasingly complex. I want to protect Frost, but I'm afraid I may not have the ability. I don't know if Zhao Gongzi is willing to take on the role of Frost's guardian until the storm subsides. Bodyguard? That's easy, Zhao Chen pondered. 
Of course, he was now a powerful cultivator in the nascent soul stage, and he wouldn't do any business for less than 550,000 spirit stones. I'll add the payment from Chairman Shen and offer 5 million and 500,000. What do you think, Zhao Gongzi? 5 million and 500,000? Zhao Chen was momentarily stunned. Wasn't that too much? A voice echoed in his mind, Captain, is it possible that Xin Xingxue gave too little? Zhao Chen instantly understood and glanced at the guilty looking Xin Xingxue beside him. Trying to take advantage of me while I'm unaware of the market, huh? Woman, next time you come to me for help, I'll make sure to strip you down to your underwear. Xiao Lai looked at Zhao Chen's delayed response and tentatively asked, Zhao Zuns, is the price not satisfactory? How about 6 million high grade spirit stones? In the next moment, there was a sound of breaking air, and Zhao Chen, who had been sitting at the table, appeared in front of Xiao Shuang, holding her delicate jade hand. Uncle Xiao, from today onwards, Shuang'er is my adopted daughter. Whoever dares to touch her will die. Xiao Lai and Xin Qingxue had exchanged a glance and finally understood the meaning behind her earlier words of unprecedented in her lifetime. Blushing, Xiao Shuang slowly separated Zhao Chen's fingers and withdrew her hand. Zhao Gongzi, there's no need for that. Why couldn't they understand why Zhao Chen was so obsessed with spirit stones? It was because they had never seen a star-class war-damaged starship in desperate need of repairs, with certain ship girls constantly demanding payment. Captain, I, Chuenxiu, will pay. In the early morning, accompanied by the warm send-off from the Xiao family, the group from the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce left the main gate of Anan City and embarked on their journey back. This unprecedented auction, from the gathering of numerous merchants to the death of a nascent soul cultivator, had certainly attracted the attention of outsiders. Different worlds, same gossip. Due to the underdeveloped state of information technology in this world, the entertainment industry was even more lacking, and people's desire for gossip was even stronger. Have you heard? In the recent auction in Anan City, they actually had treasures like the Jade Marrow Pill. My brother has a friend in Anan City. The auction there is attended by nascent soul experts. You can throw a brick on the street and hit five golden core cultivators. Isn't that right? It's said that to protect the pill, that young nascent soul cultivator named Zhao killed 20 golden core cultivators on the spot. He even killed four or five nascent soul cultivators. Is Zhao Gongzi really that fierce? Could it be that he's a direct disciple of some holy land? Just this trip by the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce earned them 50 million spirit stones. If anyone dares to intercept them on the way, they won't have to worry about cultivation for their entire lives. You dare to have designs on the caravan guarded by Zhao Gongzi? I bet you won't have to worry about it in your next life. Of course, some people were joking, while others took it seriously. If it were just 5 million spirit stones, 5 golden core protectors would be enough to make any bandits think twice. But now it was a whopping 50 million. Even if it was a nascent soul expert in charge, there would be gambling enthusiasts testing their metal. The north-south trade routes had been less lively in recent days, and there was only the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce's caravan for dozens of miles. It seemed like a storm was brewing. Xin Xingxue sat in the carriage, nervously twisting her delicate jade fingers together. The spatial ring on her ring finger felt heavier because it was filled with a huge amount of spirit stones. She still remembered when she asked for protection, Zhao Gongzi had a cold expression and said, I'm currently focused on protecting Miss Zhao's safety. Chairman Xin, please find someone else. But when she took out 2 million spirit stones on the spot and piled them on the ground, Zhao Chen immediately changed his face, don't worry, I will send summoning beasts to accompany you. If your caravan is short of a spirit stone, you can come to Annan city to chop me at any time. However, at this moment, Xin Qingxue still frowned, and it was not so much that she didn't believe in Zhao Chen's strength, as she was more worried that her big brother would interfere. As the wheels of the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce turned, five vermilion bird attack aircraft flew over the sky with optical camouflage, leaving imperceptible ripples in the air. In the dense forests on both sides of the north-south commercial road, there were hundreds of bandits hiding. One of them gathered spiritual energy in his eyes, observing the movement several miles away. As the dust rose on the road, the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce caravan appeared before his eyes. The person withdrew the spiritual energy formation in front of his eyes and turned to say, Boss, the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce has fallen into our trap. Behind him, the leader of the bandits was waiting in the woods, humph, even if Zhao Chen has extraordinary abilities, he will be ten dead without a life if he is attacked by my Yuanying stage attack talisman. In the next moment, with a flash of blue light, the leader of the bandits exploded in place, a severed limb holding the talisman splattered, smashing a lackey next to him into pieces. The body with the golden core cultivation exploded, and every piece played the power of a hand grenade, turning the bandits within tens of meters into sieves. 
Before the shocked emotions could dissipate, the subsequent firepower struck. The dense forests on both sides of the commercial road were turned into a sea of fire. The condensed plasma turned into a flowing high-temperature liquid after the explosion, covering the entire ground. The Dianxing Chamber of Commerce passed through the scorching heat and thick smoke unscathed, passing through the fire on both sides. Only Li Shou stared at the sea of fire in a daze, what a great power. In my lifetime, I'm afraid it will be difficult to reach. At the same time, in the underground mansion of the Li family, Li Yan was communicating with a young man. Ancestor, the bandit group we instigated to attack the Dianxing Chamber of Commerce has been completely wiped out. Zhao Chen must have already left in Nan City on that carriage. The young man was the ancestor of the Li family who had taken over the body of a younger generation of the family. At this moment, he had a gloomy face, it's good that he left. Destroying my physical body, I will definitely seek revenge, but not now. Our current important task is to completely extinguish the hope of the Xiao family. The ancestor of the Li family said, but in fact, he had long been frightened by Zhao Chen, and the fear in his heart far outweighed his resentment. The three terrifying attacks during the previous battle were still vivid in his mind. In the face of such unparalleled power, his protective spiritual energy and Yuanying body were like nothing. If it weren't for the life-saving treasure that assisted in the separation of the Yuanying, he would have long been annihilated under the attacks. Not to mention breaking through the Yuanying at such a young age, but being able to tame such a powerful summoning beast, the young man surnamed Zhao must have the support of a powerful force behind him. Is it a holy land? Or an ancient family? Regardless of which one it is, it is not something that the current Li family can afford to provoke. Hopefully, after this young man surnamed Zhao follows the caravan and leaves, he will not interfere in the internal affairs of a Nan city again. In that case, as long as the Xiao family is completely eliminated and the possibility of the Xiao family and the Yaoqi Holy Land forming an alliance is cut off, relying only on Wenyao's relationship with the Tsangjian Holy Land, the Li family will eventually be able to suppress the Xiao family and become the new ruler of a Nan city. Ancestor, rest assured, it was Li Gu from the third branch who took action this time. He has achieved the golden core stage for many years. As long as the eldest daughter of the Xiao family dares to take a step out of the Xiao family, she will definitely be humiliated on the spot. The young man nodded slightly at the words, that's good. Let the Xiao family know that a deceased genius is nothing. In the courtyard of the Xiao family at this moment, Zhao Chen was standing at the door with Xiao Shuang. Zhao. Mr. Zhao, we, we are not familiar yet. Do we really have to go out shopping? The cold and beautiful woman blinked her eyes, but her words were stuttered. Zhao Chen's breath stagnated. This little girl seems to have a serious social anxiety disorder it's okay, my dear, don't worry. With me here, nothing will happen to you, Zhao Chen said, holding Xiao Shuang's hand. Come, let me take you fishing. Fishing? Xiao Shuang was puzzled, thinking about nearby fish ponds. Then she realized that her delicate hand was being held tightly and she struggled to free herself from Zhao Chen's grasp. Seeing Xiao Shuang's face turn red, Zhao Chen smiled slightly and let go of her hand. From now on, I'll be your companion. Just do whatever you usually do, don't act differently. Mr. Zhao, I don't usually go shopping. Ah. Uh. Then, Zhao Chen had a thought, and his white robe transformed into a simple dark gray outfit. He quietly followed behind the nervous Xiao Shuang. As soon as they stepped out of Zhao's house, they noticed several suspicious glances from the corner. A suspicious person followed them all the way. Ha. Huh. The fish took the bait. Zhao Chen smiled slightly, as a skilled angler, he wouldn't let his prey escape. It was only after they had walked a few hundred steps and confirmed that no one was following them that the Golden Core Cultivator launched his attack. The pressure of the Golden Core instantly enveloped half of the street, and a decent-looking longsword gleamed with spiritual light. Die! Xiao Shuang was instantly overwhelmed by the killing intent of the Golden Core, her limbs went cold, as if her blood was flowing backward. The next moment, it was still the Heavenly Thunder Core, still an unmatched thunderbolt. The Golden Core Cultivator turned into light in an instant then turned into a pile of black ashes scattered on the street. The onlookers who witnessed this scene screamed and scattered. Zhao Chen once again returned to his clean white robe and looked at Xiao Shuang with a smile. We caught the fish, didn't we? Witnessing a golden core cultivator turning into ashes before her eyes, Xiao Shuang finally understood why her father had spent a fortune to win over Mr. Zhao. With such extraordinary strength, Mr. Zhao could easily suppress any changes in the city. The perspective shifted to the sky above the city, where a surveillance drone captured the image of an informant fleeing in panic and returning to the Li family's residence. These were just small fries, Zhao Chen shook his head, feeling a bit bored. But he had heard that a big fish was coming in a couple of days, a koi fish to be exact, so he could look forward to that. 
On the clear screen mountain outside the outer gate of the hidden sword Holy Land, as a sword chant sounded, a young man in a brocade robe broke through the barrier. Outside the gate, an old man had been waiting for a long time. Seeing the old man's figure, the young man bowed respectfully, I apologize for keeping you waiting, master. The old man gently extended his hand, and an invisible aura lifted the young man up. Wen Yao, no need for formalities. With your breakthrough to the late foundation establishment stage, you are just one step away from the golden core. If you can break through to the golden core before the age of 50, you will have the opportunity to join the inner sect for cultivation. After that, it will be my honor to have you shine upon our clear screen mountain. Li Wen Yao looked up, smiling at his master, but a hint of disdain flashed in his heart. Xin Xing Chan, his current master, had been in the Hidden Sword Holy Land for over 300 years, yet he was still only at the Mid Yuan stage, a mere mountain lord in the outer sect. When he entered the inner sect in the future, he would completely sever ties with this mediocre sect. Although he thought this way, Li Wenyao's smile remained warm on the surface, after all, his family still needed to rely on the abundant resources of this Mid Yuan cultivator. Master, I have already sent a letter of introduction to the Xiao family before my seclusion. How about we pay them a visit today? Since you are prepared, let's set off today. Although in Nan City and the Hidden Sword Holy Land were both in Qingzhou, they were separated by half a province. Even if they were to fly on their swords, the spiritual energy of the Golden Core Realm would not be enough, let alone Li Wenyao, who was only at the foundation establishment stage, and would not be able to sustain a long flight so Xin Xingqiang waved his sleeve robe and summoned a shuttle-shaped treasure. The treasure grew in the wind and within a few breaths, it transformed into a cloud boat big enough for four people to stand on. The cloud boat was a precious treasure used by cultivators to travel long distances. Xin Xingqiang rarely used it and took great care of it. If it weren't for the strict security measures of the sword sect this time, he wouldn't have brought it out. The master and disciple boarded the cloud boat, and with a gust of wind, the boat lifted off. As the cloud boat ascended, the formation of the sword sect gradually came into view. Li Wenyao looked towards the center of the formation and saw a grand procession floating in the air. At the forefront were four nascent soul stage thunder beasts pulling a chariot. They were pulling a green painted steel giant with circular wheels wrapped in iron plates on both sides, and a large cylindrical object in the front, all of which Li Wenyao had never seen before. As the legend said, the carriage of this generation's sword master was exceptionally strange. Behind this strange carriage, there were dozens of disciples dressed in luxurious spiritual treasures. They were all elite disciples selected from the inner sect, following the current sword master. This sword master had always been Loki, and even the procession for his travels met the minimum requirements of the sect. Nevertheless, the luxury of the procession was beyond what ordinary cultivators could ever dream of. Looking at such a grand procession, Li Wenyao couldn't help but fantasize, if I could join the inner sect and become a companion to the current sword master, then I could truly bring glory to the entire Li family. Although he looked down on his nascent soul master, it was because Xin Xingqiang couldn't rank among the top nascent soul cultivators in the outer sect, which resulted in the scarcity of resources for Qingping Mountain. But someone like the sword master, he dared not show any contempt. Anyone with discerning eyes could see his astonishing talent and his powerful morning light sword intent. It was clear that his future achievements would not be limited to just the nascent soul stage. The nascent soul stage was just the starting point for others. With an envious sigh, the cloud boat gradually headed towards the direction of Annan City. At noon the next day, the mysterious cloud boat landed at the gate of the Xiao family. Li Wenyao's visit was quite grand. In just a short moment after the cloud boat landed, it had already attracted a lot of attention in Annan City. The guards at the gate were the first to block the entrance and asked, Who goes there? From the sword sect, Li Wenyao is here to visit. Please wait, I will go in and inform. The guard bowed slightly and turned to open the gate but he felt a tremendous force coming from behind. With a loud bang, accompanied by a majestic surge of spiritual energy, the guard was blasted away, and the gate of the Xiao family collapsed. How dare you! My master is a nascent soul expert. How can you leave him outside and ignore him? This sudden attack made everyone watching gasp in astonishment. On one hand, they marveled at the rarity of a nascent soul expert in Annan City. On the other hand, they were amazed at the arrogance of the Li family's heir. This was outrageous. The Xiao family's reputation was being trampled upon in broad daylight. But the Li family had the support of a nascent soul expert, giving them the capital to be arrogant. At this moment, in the Xiao family's courtyard, Zhao Chen groggily rolled off Xiao Shuang's bed and asked, What's all the commotion? Did a fleet come to attack? In the dust of the collapsed gate, the figure of Xiao Lai slowly appeared. It's disrespectful to not welcome the esteemed visitor from the sword sect. Xiao Lai's voice was low and terrifying, 
but his expression showed no abnormalities, the servants were ignorant and almost offended the distinguished guest. It's fine, Xin Xingchang calmly spoke although he is only a peripheral figure in the Sword Saint's Holy Land, once he steps out into the vast nine provinces, he becomes an extraordinary figure. Even the proud Xiao family cannot help but bow their heads in the face of the pressure from a nascent soul elder. Xiao Lai looked at Qin Xingchang and Li Wenyao and said, since the esteemed elder and nephew have come from afar, it would be better to enter the hall first and let me show some hospitality as the host. Uncle Xiao, there's no need for that. I came here this time to cancel the engagement with Miss Xiao Shuang, Li Wenyao said without any intention of entering the house. He secretly circulated his spiritual energy, making his words resound like a bell, echoing throughout the street. The onlookers were amazed. With the support of a nascent soul cultivator, the young master of the Li family practically didn't put the Xiao family in his eyes. This action was clearly meant to humiliate the Xiao family. After finishing his words, Li Wenyao waved his hand, and hundreds of exquisite treasures from his storage ring piled up on one side of the Xiao family's main gate. Since I entered the Holy Land, I have received the earnest expectations of many masters. Therefore, I am unwilling to indulge in love affairs and instead pursue the eternal path of immortality. Today, I heard about the sudden change in Miss Xiao Shuang's situation, so I offer a few hundred spiritual treasures to show my concern, Li Wenyao said, his words expressing both goodwill and a subtle hint of arrogance and disdain. However, he also observed proper etiquette, making it difficult for anyone to find fault. Even if they could find fault, with the nascent soul elder standing by with a stern face, did the Xiao family have the courage to confront him? This was both a strategy and a demonstration. Xiao Lai suppressed his anger and said, Nephew, you have misunderstood. The engagement was just a joke between the previous heads of our two families and is not binding. Where does the talk of cancelling the engagement come from? Indeed, the two families had never signed a formal written marriage contract. It was only because Li Wenyao and Xiao Shuang were of similar age and both were geniuses of Anan City that rumors of their engagement spread naturally. But at this moment, whether the engagement was real or fake no longer mattered. Xin Xingchang coldly spoke, releasing the pressure of his nascent soul cultivation base, I have come from afar to your Xiao family mansion specifically for my disciples' engagement. Now your Xiao family is denying it. How can you not regard me, a nascent soul cultivator, with respect? Just as the situation was becoming increasingly tense, a lazy voice came from a distance. Nascent soul this, nascent soul that. Is nascent soul really that amazing? Are you even worthy of cancelling the engagement? In the next moment, another wave of nascent soul pressure spread out, and in just an instant, it shattered Xin Xingchang's pressure field. Xin Xingchang's eyes narrowed, and he involuntarily took a step back. This was the pressure of a peak nascent soul cultivator. The Xiao family only had one mid-nascent soul cultivator, and as a mid-nascent soul cultivator himself, Xin Xingchang had the confidence to act arrogantly. But now, a stronger immortal had appeared. While Xin Xingchang was still in doubt, Li Wenyao's gaze subtly changed. Prior to this, the patriarch of the Li family had personally instructed him to humiliate the Xiao family as much as possible in this cancellation of the engagement. It turned out that this was a test for this person. Zhao Chen. It was indeed his doing that the uncle Li Gu, who had attempted to assassinate Xiao Shuang on the street, had been completely wiped out, and the two subsequent assassination teams that infiltrated the Xiao family mansion had disappeared without a trace. The sound of their dying breaths couldn't even be heard. The loss of power from these three waves would be a severe blow to any family. A figure in a white robe leisurely approached the two of them. His voice was also as loud as a bell, making even the people eavesdropping from the sidelines feel deafened. Uncle Xiao, I have never heard of this matter regarding Miss Shuang's engagement. Is there a written contract? Master Zhao, the Xiao and Li families have never signed a written contract. Ha, huh, without a written contract, could it be that someone is openly spouting nonsense? As soon as these words were spoken, the onlookers burst into laughter. Who would have thought that Zhao Gongzi, who was as famous as an immortal in Anan City, would say such down-to-earth words? With the appearance of a powerful nascent soul stage expert behind him, the offensive and defensive situation quietly changed. Shall I finally saw the opportunity to fight back and immediately spoke without mercy, Master Zhao, you are a generous person. Don't bother with Wen Yao. This child has always admired Schwanger, maybe there was a misunderstanding. At this moment, knowing that their side had already lost in terms of momentum, Li Wenyao cursed the useless master in his heart and brought up the formidable figure of the hidden sword Holy Land, oh, we represent the Holy Land, and yet you dare to accuse us of nonsense and vulgar words. Don't you think it tarnishes the reputation of the hidden sword Holy Land? Zhao Qin glanced at Li Wenyao with a sideways glance, barking like a dog, howling incessantly. Kid, I feel like slapping you. 
With a threatening tone, the words came out of the mouth of the nascent soul expert, even Li Wenyao, who had the support of the Holy Land, was shocked and took several steps back. Master Zhao, you have crossed the line. Seeing that his beloved disciple was about to be taught a lesson, Xin Xingcheng finally spoke again, the disciples of the Hidden Sword Holy Land can only be taught by people from within the Hidden Sword Holy Land, you are not qualified. Of course, as a master, he could only speak, it was impossible for him to take action. A mid-nascent soul stage, challenging a peak nascent soul stage? He wasn't stupid. Hearing this, Zhao Chen slowly untied the jade pendant hidden inside his robe at his waist. Xin Xing Chang originally just glanced casually, but when he felt the aura emanating from the pendant, he suddenly felt as if he had been struck by lightning, dumbfounded. Zhao Chen grabbed the knot of the pendant and swung it in the air like a meteor hammer, hidden sword holy land. I wonder if you are worthy of the hidden sword guest command that Yi Sheng Zhu gave me? In the next moment, with a sound of breaking through the air, the jade pendant, blessed with the forbidden spell of the hidden sword holy land, smashed into Li Wenyao's face. Li Wenyao was like being hit by an iron hammer, flying several meters and falling into the dust on the street. At this moment, Xin Xingchang no longer cared about his desire for his beloved disciple, he had already cursed Li Wenyao hundreds of times in his heart. The jade pendant, which symbolized the highest diplomatic honor of the hidden sword holy land, could never be forged or imitated. Cultivators who possessed the Hidden Sword Guest Command were those whom the Hidden Sword Holy Land was willing to befriend, and they had gained the recognition and friendship of the higher-ups of the Holy Land. He had actually offended the Guest Command of the Hidden Sword Holy Land for the sake of a useless disciple. Master Zhao, there must be a misunderstanding. Xin Xingchan was about to explain, but was interrupted by Zhao Chen. Enjoying a half day of leisure, how rare, but there are always rats coming to the door to fart and shit, it's annoying. Zhao Chen lazily stretched and yawned, Master Shen, I just woke up from a nap, my eyes are still blurry, can you help me see what's farting at the door Master Zhao? I'm asking you, the pressure from Zhao Chen suddenly increased, who was farting at the door? It's me, I'm farting. Shen Xingchang's face turned red as he said in a low voice. Your voice is too small, I can't hear. I'm farting. Shen Xingchang shouted loudly. The onlookers bit their lips, marveling at Zhao Gongzi's audacity, while forcing themselves to hold back their laughter. At this moment, Xin Xingchang was completely humiliated in front of Zhao Gongzi, even though he was a genuine nascent soul stage cultivator. If he laughed too loudly and incurred his resentment, he could only be more careful in his next life. Oh, even a dignified nascent soul stage expert can fart? Zhao Chen's mouth curled up with a wicked smile, I don't believe it. Unless you fart in public for me to hear. He actually wanted a nascent soul stage expert to fart in public. It was clear to everyone that Zhao Chen was seeking justice for the Xiao family. Rather than saying it was for the Xiao family, it was more accurate to say it was for the sake of the legitimate daughter of the Xiao family. Being inexplicably rejected by someone who came to break off the engagement, this humiliation would accompany her for a lifetime. Only by having the person involved admit in person that they were farting could these annoying rumors be put to rest. Chen Xingchang's face was flushed from his neck to his forehead, and his cultivation of Yuanang was suppressed on the verge of eruption. Even though he was cowardly, he felt the urge to fight back against such humiliation. Just a few days ago, I just destroyed Li family's Yuan Ying's physical body. I see that your physical body is weak, shall I help you too? Zhao Chen noticed that the person in front of him seemed to have the intention to make a move, so he added some fuel to the fire. Mr. Zhao is joking. Cold sweat dripped down Xin Xingchang's forehead, completely losing the will to resist. Controlling the body at the golden core stage and letting out an ugly and loud fart should not be difficult for you. Shen Xingchang closed his eyes and began to control the movement of his body. Pupupupu Shen Xingchang's robe was lifted by a huge airflow, and a long and loud fart sound echoed throughout the city of Annan. This time, the onlookers couldn't help but imagine the saddest stories of their lives, and one by one burst into laughter. However, their laughter quickly stopped as an extremely foul-smelling fart wave swept through the entire street. Some of the most audacious spectators who were laughing were caught off guard and fainted on the spot, while the rest covered their faces and wept, scattering like birds and beasts. It was so smelly, too smelly. Who could have imagined that a cultivator who lived on the wind and do could fart so stinkily? Zhao Chen waved his hand in disgust, and the stench in front of the Xiao family's gate was instantly blown away by the breeze. A bright light flashed in his storage ring, and hundreds of spiritual treasures on the ground disappeared in an instant. Consider this compensation for your public farting. I will accept it on behalf of the Xiao family. Now take your precious disciple and leave. Xin Xingchang picked up his fainted disciple from the ground, his face ashen, and was about to leave when he heard Zhao Chen say again, Tell your swordmaster for me, the way of the sword cannot be understood by secluding oneself. Take some time to come out and explore, 
or come find me for a drink. Back at the Xiao family mansion, Zhao Qin was in an exceptionally good mood. After all, he had gained hundreds of spiritual treasures, and his little treasury was no longer empty. As for the 8 million spirit stones he had earned before, those spirit stones had only been temporarily stored in his little treasury. 7,800,000 of them were confiscated for the repair and construction of the Xiao, and the remaining 200,000 were generously left as Zhao Chen's pocket money by Chuanxiao. With this batch of spirit stones, although the quality and quantity were not as good as the thousands of top-grade spirit stones owned by Lu Chengfeng, he could still create several small spiritual energy reactors, repair some factories and production lines, and improve the overall construction speed. Unlike the busyness on the Xiao, Zhao Chen became leisurely again after resolving the marriage dispute, sleeping on the fragrant bed of Xiao Shuang with drool flowing from his mouth. Xiao Shuang frowned, trying to move him away. Unfortunately, she underestimated Zhao Chen's weight, or rather, the weight of the golden core in his body. After trying for a while, Xiao Shuang ended up in failure. Looking at Zhao Chen's miserable sleeping appearance, Xiao Shuang frowned and stared at him for a long time, confirming that this guy was really asleep before whispering, Mr. Zhao, thank you. In his deep sleep, Zhao Chen's mouth curled up into a faint smile. Good girl, it's my pleasure. You're pretending to sleep. Did I say I was asleep? It's just that you wanted to thank me. I, I'm leaving. Mr. Zhao, sleep well. Another two days passed. In a room in the Xiao family, Zhao Chen held a letter from Rongyang City in his hands. The handwriting on the letter was beautiful and neat, obviously written by Xin Xingxue. Setting aside the flowery words and formalities, the meaning between the lines was simply to inform him that the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce had successfully returned and invited Zhao Chen to visit Rongyang City at his convenience, so that the Dianqing Chamber of Commerce could show their hospitality. After reading the entire letter, Zhao Chen did not see the content he had imagined. Xin Xingxu had probably thought that her cultivation at the foundation establishment peak was well hidden, and even Zhao Chen had not noticed it if it weren't for the higher-level space-based radar that Spring and Autumn used on the way back escorting Xin Xingxue, they wouldn't have discovered the faint fluctuations in her cultivation and the protective artifact she used to conceal her cultivation. It seems that Xin Xingxue has managed to deceive them. Now, upon careful consideration, this young girl in the foundation establishment stage, with a protective artifact, casually started a second-rate caravan in a remote border city, and behind the scenes, there is a powerful figure targeting her. It seems that there are some secrets hidden behind Xin Xingxue. While Zhao Chen sighed, he was not in a hurry. It is not honorable to pry into someone's secrets excessively. One day, Xin Xingxue will confess when she deems it appropriate. As for now, Xin Xingxue wrote a letter to herself impatiently as soon as she returned to Rongyang City, so there must be hidden motives. Although the sentences in the letter were calm and plain, there was still a hint of tension between the lines. It seems that the mastermind behind Xin Xingxue has made a move, and it has reached a critical point. Xin Xingxue wants to invite herself over, but she wants to do it without spending spirit stones? Ha, yeah, unless she is pushed to the brink of desperation, how could this girl be willing to dig out spirit stones so easily? Zhao Qin could already imagine the scene of Xin Xingxue tearfully handing over the spirit stones. With a wicked smile, he picked up his pen and began to write a reply. Um, about that matter, we're not saying we won't do it. But, we didn't say that, there's no guarantee for anything we discuss, right? He's not. We say that where there's a will, there's a way, we can find a solution. So, later, later, when the time comes, right, I. Right, this, including, oh, when the time comes, you'll see, right, and then I'll take care of this matter. Right? Just as he finished sealing the envelope, the steward of the Xiao family lightly knocked on the door, young master Zhao, the master is ready in the cave, and I'm here to inform you that you can leave at any time. Zhao Chen is stood up and handed the envelope to the steward, send this letter to the Rongyang City Star Point Chamber of Commerce. Then, a sound of breaking through the air was heard, and the steward was blown off balance by the powerful airflow, retreating repeatedly. When the dust settled, the steward holding the letter looked up, but Zhao Chen's figure was nowhere to be seen. Young Master Zhao, truly a celestial being a few thousand miles south of Anan City is the Shujing Great Wall, and the area between the two is a desolate mountain range with no signs of human habitation. Zhao Chen's figure turned into a stream of light as he shuttled through the mountains, finally stopping on an ordinary-looking peak. Ripples spread across the mountaintop, and then a hidden cave entrance opened. Who would have thought that in this seemingly ordinary mountain peak, there would be a different kind of paradise? This is the ancestral cave of the Xiao family. After a cultivator breaks through to the golden core stage, their cultivation activities far surpass those of the past. Not to mention practicing martial arts, even ordinary breathing exercises have the power to shake a city. 
Therefore, mortal cultivators usually establish caves in the mountains near their residences for cultivation and meditation. The ancestral cave of the Shao family is said to have been passed down for dozens of generations, with spacious interior space and good lighting. Although the overall decoration style is simple, the facilities are very complete. Today is the moment when Xiao Shuang will take the pill. Whether she can defy fate will be determined today. Walking into the main hall, Zhao Chen saw Xiao Lai waiting there, Honorable Zhao Shuanger is already waiting in the inner chamber. Zhao Chen nodded and walked into the inner chamber behind Xiao Lai. Soon, their conversation could be heard. Is this intensity okay? Hmm. I'll go deeper, it might be a bit uncomfortable, you have to endure it. No. Relax, don't resist, otherwise I won't be able to enter. Um. At this moment, Zhao Chen's hands were placed on Xiao Shuang's back, manipulating the flow of spiritual energy through her meridians. According to Xiao Shuang, her recent decline in cultivation was mainly caused by the leakage of spiritual energy. However, Zhao Chen's exploration of every inch of Xiao Shuang's meridians did not reveal any signs of energy leakage. Xuanxiu, what do you think? Zhao Chen asked in his mind. I have created a three-dimensional model of Xiao Shuang's meridians. Her meridians are very intact and the circulation of spiritual energy is quite smooth. Although there are hundreds of meridians that do not follow the optimal path, causing some circulation blockages and efficiency waste, they do not hinder her cultivation state. Jokingly, hundreds of meridians? Xuanxiu, do you realize what you're saying? The human body has a total of 720 acupoints, with countless different ways of connecting them. Some methods are good, while others are not. Just a slight difference in the connection of one acupoint can make a huge difference in circulation efficiency. Xuanxiu used all this computational power to exhaustively list the perfect path of the meridians, but such a perfectly optimized path cannot be naturally formed by luck or coincidence alone. Xiao Shuang's meridians differ in only a few hundred paths from the perfect ones, making her one of the top geniuses. Amidst his criticism, Zhao Chen suddenly remembered the incident where a certain reckless man almost turned into fireworks after taking the jade clear pill. If it's not a problem with the meridians leaking, would taking the jade clear pill have the opposite effect? The possibility is unlikely. Under normal circumstances, taking the jade clear pill does not cause spontaneous combustion. People with intact meridians can also take the pill to improve their meridian condition. The captain's accident occurred during the overload of the Golden Core's energy source. Unless Xiao Shuang also has a hidden energy center similar to the Golden Core, there should be no accidents. Hearing this, Zhao Chen could only shake his head helplessly and look at Xiao Lai, who had been peeping at the door without him noticing, Uncle Xiao, I haven't found any problems with Xiao Shuang's meridians either. Let's try taking the jade clear pill first. Caught red-handed, Xiao Lai awkwardly stood up and clasped his fists towards Zhao Chen, Master Zhao, you have always been highly skilled. If anything unexpected happens today, I hope you can lend a hand. Of course, Xiao Chen nodded slightly, then looked at Xiao Shuang. Are you nervous? Xiao Shuang nodded, her fingers intertwined between her legs. Don't worry, I'm here, Zhao Chen encouraged gently. Hearing this, Xiao Shuang felt slightly relieved. She tilted her head back, drank the supplementary medicine that went along with the jade clear pill, and waited for a moment. She could feel the medicine taking effect, and then she swallowed the whole jade clear pill. In the instant the pill was crushed by her jade teeth, a huge amount of spiritual energy burst forth. However, before the spiritual energy could dissipate, Xiao Shuang swallowed it into her abdomen. Soon, her meridians were filled with the surging spiritual energy, and the accumulated energy shone through her skin, making her meridians visible to the naked eye. Xiao Shuang exerted all her strength to refine this immense spiritual energy that even Golden Core cultivators would find difficult to bear. Unlike Xiao Shuang's full dedication, Zhao Chen's expression suddenly changed. Something's not right. Even if there are no meridian defects, with Xiao Shuang's smooth meridians, she should have already refined all the spiritual energy. But at this moment, the torrent of spiritual energy showed no signs of calming down. This situation was reminiscent of his own experience with the overload of the Golden Core. The problem is not in your meridians. Stop refining. Zhao Chen placed his hand on Xiao Shuang's chest and extracted a large amount of spiritual energy from her body. Oh no, this beauty is about to explode. At this moment, the drawbacks of the mechanical golden core were fully exposed. A reactor that had never experienced energy troubles naturally did not need any energy absorption function. The method Zhao Chen was using to extract spiritual energy was highly inefficient, and the absorption speed was clearly insufficient. Xiao Shuang suddenly knelt down on the ground, her words were unclear due to the pain. My eyes. My eyes hurt. Zhao Chen looked at her eyes, in the pupils of her eyes, two patterns were crazily alternating. 
Sometimes it was two overlapping golden pupils, and sometimes it was deep purple vertical pupils. These two patterns were fiercely competing for dominance in her eyes, and a majestic spiritual energy flowed out from them, even more powerful than the jade essence pill. It seems that the lost spiritual energy before was fed to these two pupils. Even though Xiao Lai was anxious at this moment, he was also stunned when he saw this pair of eyes. Heavy pupils. And dream pupils? How is this possible? Upon hearing Xiao Lai's words, Zhao Chen also lost his composure. Although he didn't know what dream pupils were, he was very familiar with these heavy pupils. He had long suspected that Xiao Shuang had the template of a protagonist, but she had too many buffs. A protagonist with a broken engagement plus heavy pupils? Now, there was a supreme bone sister and a heavy pupil sister, quite a combination. Zhao Chen was silently complaining in his heart when he suddenly felt a huge amount of energy gathering in front of him. He saw that the pupils, which were still changing patterns frantically, simultaneously turned golden, and then split into two layers of pupils. Xiao Shuang also seemed to have a premonition and quickly lowered her head. Two powerful golden beams burst out from Xiao Shuang's eyes, directly tearing apart the stone slabs under her feet and penetrating into the infinitely deep ground. Even Xiao Shuang herself couldn't control this tremendous recoil force. Her entire head tilted back under the force of the recoil, and the golden light was like a sharp sword, cutting through the entire mountain, splitting it in half. This was the basic spell of the heavy pupils, the gaze of divine light. Xiao clan leader, the mountain is about to collapse. Zhao Chen shouted loudly as he looked at the falling rocks above his head. Xiao Lai understood Zhao Chen's meaning. He flew up into the air, releasing his spiritual energy to maintain the stability of the cave. Don't worry, I will take care of the mountain. Although the leaking power had already destroyed an entire mountain, it showed no signs of stopping. The tearing pain in her eyes made Xiao Shuang instinctively want to cover them, but as soon as her fingers touched the edge of the golden light, they were burned by the terrifying energy. If she continued to look around like this, not only would the entire mountain be destroyed, but Xiao Lai would probably also be injured. Xiao Shuang, don't think too much, look at me, look at me. Zhao Qin shouted loudly, and then activated the Titan core. The height of the cave was 3 meters, but it was still narrow for the Titan mech. Fortunately, Zhao Qin didn't need to be in full protective humanoid mode this time, he only needed to block attacks from one side. Thinking of the concept he had seen in Federal Entertainment Works before, Zhao Qin controlled the nanoclusters to form shields one after another. In less than a breath's time, seven layers of shields stacked up like a pagoda. As the layers went further back, the radius and thickness of the shields increased exponentially. Sevenfold radiant circle of the blazing sky. Just as the shields formed, Xiao Shuang struggled to control the direction, and the terrifying golden light shone on the shields. The first three shields were pierced as soon as the golden light hit them, and the nanomachines in the affected areas were all melted by the golden light, turning into unusable ashes. The destructive power was so terrifying that Zhao Qin instantly understood that it couldn't be released with just the spiritual energy of a pill. Judging from the destructive power of the golden light, it was even more powerful than the heavenly calamity light that Shi Ro had back then. It seemed that during the battle between the two different pupils, the bloodline power of the heavy pupils awakened and gained the upper hand. While Zhao Chen was estimating the power of the golden light, for more shields were pierced, and even the nanomachines, which were so small that they couldn't be detected, formed a layer of fine ash on the ground due to continuous battle damage however, at this moment, with the support of a massive swarm of nanobots, Zhao Chen's shield had already evolved into the super radiant sky cover with 38 layers of thick shields, which had pushed him into a corner. Zhao Chen weakly expressed his thoughts. This was the limit of the cave space, but not the limit of the nanobots. As one of the most outstanding technologies of the interstellar era, nanobots provided solid support for the space dominance of the Federal Fleet. The enormous swarm of nanobots could condense armor, construct pipelines, repair damaged warships, and even assemble temporary turrets. The Xianming Heavy Battleship, the most basic heavy unit of the Federal Star Wars, normally carried one main cannon, 108 high-energy particle cannons, and 36 sets of close defense cannons. However, in the fully deployed state of the nanobots, it could temporarily increase its firepower support by 48 cannons, completely overwhelming the enemy. Even if only a small part of the nanobots that assisted the Shiyu, a stellar-class warship, were squeezed into the space of a bracelet and released, it would be enough to cover the sky and obscure the sun. Nowadays, nanobots have almost no weaknesses except for the inability to store and conduct spiritual energy and serve as carriers of thought. If these two problems can be overcome one day, then perhaps the perfect material for casting an external incarnation will be found. After passing through a total of 11 shields, the golden light slowly dissipated. Just as Zhao Chen thought the preparation was over and was about to move forward, 
Xiao Shuang looked into Zhao Chen's pupils, and the light flashed, turning into deep purple vertical pupils. Buzzing, accompanied by a thrilling buzzing sound, Zhao Chen felt a moment of dizziness, and the scene in front of him suddenly changed. Sometimes he fell from a deep abyss, sometimes he was engulfed by surging darkness, and sometimes he was crushed into a pancake by a colossal monster. Zhao Chen experienced dozens of creatively unique ways of dying in just a few breaths. This is an illusion? Zhao Chen seemed to understand what the dream pupil was capable of. If the dream pupil and the heavy pupil did not conflict with each other, one could attack the mind while the other attacked the body, and their future combat capabilities would be limitless. Spring and Autumn quickly deciphered the enchanting principle of the dream pupil. It was indeed domineering, interfering with the brain's thought-generated ripples and artificially writing data into the brain of a living being, whether it was garbled code or controllable video data, all depending on the will of the dream pupil owner. There was no way to shield the interference of the dream pupil unless one completely stopped thinking, or unless one's computing power could match that of the dream pupil owner, artificially writing signals completely opposite to the dream pupil to counteract its interference. In other words, as long as the computing power of the dream pupil owner was strong enough, they could basically annihilate all opponents with lower cultivation levels and greatly disrupt opponents of the same realm. After all, the moment the opponent hesitated in trying to resist the reverse thinking, the outcome might have already been decided. Unfortunately, the self-activated dream pupil currently did not seem to interfere with Zhao Chen's abilities. After understanding the method of interference of the dream pupil, he easily neutralized the interference of the dream with the computing power provided by the mechanical golden pill in his abdomen. Perhaps one day, when encountering a dream pupil owner at the nascent soul stage or above, he would need the help of spring and autumn's computing power. Captain, I have a small experiment in mind, spring and autumn suddenly said. What is it? Zhao Chun, who had just walked out of the environment, was still a bit puzzled. After understanding the principle of the dream pupil, I want to try using the nanobots on site to create a dream pupil and then write the command close the dream pupil into Xiao Shuang's brain. Create a dream pupil by hand? What kind of 8th level machinist is this? Agreeing to the application for the transfer of the Titan Core Authority in the spring and autumn, a nanobot cluster condensed into an eye-shaped instrument on Zhao Chen's forehead, but unfortunately it was much larger than a human eye. In the next moment, as another buzzing sound rang out, a fierce information war unfolded between the two dream pupils. However, engaging in an information war with the top-level intelligence of the spring and autumn can only be described as a professional match. Enemy invasion wave detected, neutralization complete, Trojan program being written. In the world of cultivation where the concept of Trojan programs had never existed, there naturally wouldn't be a way to counteract them. Even the powerful dream pupils, without any defense, let the data flow from the spring and autumn pass through. As the program started, a series of basic instructions were transmitted to Xiao Shuang's brain, close the dream pupils. Xiao Shuang was also stunned, who? Who is speaking in my mind? Don't worry, it's me, Zhao Chen said softly. Xiao Lai, who was struggling to maintain the mountain, saw the dream pupils above Zhao Chen's head and was amazed. Zhao Venerable, how could you also have dream pupils? Although Xiao Shuang had no idea how to close the dream pupils, her body still reacted to the command. As the purple color in her pupils dimmed, Xiao Shuang's body went limp and was caught by Zhao Chen. Seeing that Xiao Lai, who had been maintaining the mountain for a long time, was also at his limit, Zhao Chen picked up Xiao Shuang and said, Uncle Xiao, we'll go ahead. Carrying Xiao Shuang all the way back to the Xiao family mansion, Xiao Shuang's face was extremely flushed. She struggled to jump off Zhao Chen's body, but after a few steps, she kicked a stone slab and almost fell to the ground. How do you feel now? Zhao Chen asked softly. I feel a bit weak, but everything else is fine. Xiao Shuang whispered, then suddenly asked, What happened to my eyes? You're unlucky. You have two top-level heterochromatic eyes, you're lucky, but unfortunately there was a problem with the compatibility of these two eyes in your bloodline which has prevented your cultivation from progressing. Upon hearing this, a hint of sadness flashed in Xiao Shuang's eyes. Zhao young master, can I still cultivate? Not entirely. Really? Xiao Shuang grabbed Zhao Chen's sleeve tightly. Do you have a solution? Zhao Chen smiled faintly. Of course, but don't think too much about it for now. Rest well, I'll make some preparations. If my plan goes well, not only can you return to the path of immortality, but you can also keep both of your heterochromatic eyes. Xiao Shuang was overjoyed at these words, almost forgetting her social anxiety, and almost jumped up in excitement. Accompanied by a rapid sword chant, Xiao Lai also returned to the mansion on his sword at this time. Seeing that his daughter was safe, he felt a little relieved and then looked towards Zhao Chen. Shuang'er, go and rest first. There are some things I need to discuss with Zhao Venerable. 
In the side room of the main courtyard of the Xiao family, the two sat opposite each other for a long time, and finally, Xiao Lai spoke first. Zhao young master, as far as I know, at least one of the parents must be a dream demon for the offspring to have a chance to inherit the dream pupils. Xiao Lai's voice was low. Why do you also have dream pupils? If you are a messenger sent by the dream demon clan to take Xiao Shuang away, then even if I, Xiao Lai, have to risk my life, I will still fight you with my sword. As soon as the words fell, the battle sword behind Xiao Lai began to tremble. Zhao Chen was a little stunned. If Xiao Lai hadn't asked that question, he wouldn't have known the relationship between dream demons and dream pupils. When simulating the dream pupils, the spring and autumn didn't know that they required a bloodline inheritance. So now the question is, how to explain the situation where the spring and autumn, with their 24k titanium alloy dog eyes and 8th level craftsmanship, bypassed the bloodline restrictions and created the dream pupils? The only answer is to boast. The powerful pressure of the nascent soul spread without any restraint, enveloping the entire room. The spiritual energy surging around Shalai instantly dissipated, and at this moment, he realized how foolish it was to swing his sword at the nascent soul if I really wanted to take Xiao Shuang away, no one in your family could stop me. Why go through all this trouble? Zhao Chen smiled calmly, Master Xiao, rest assured, this is just a dream pupil treasure. On the other hand, Miss Shuang should have a deep connection with the dream demon clan, right? Ah, I was confused, Xiao Lai's tense body relaxed as Zhao Chen spoke, you're right, Master Zhao. Shuang's mother was a dream demon from the western continent. Although the human and demon clans have signed a covenant to resist the return to the void, their relationship is far from harmonious. Shuang's mother was hunted because of her precious dream pupil constitution, and I coincidentally met her. If Xiao Lai hadn't self-destructed at the beginning, Zhao Chen wouldn't have known about the strict conditions for inheriting the dream pupil. It seems that he needs to find an opportunity to update his knowledge of the cultivation world so as not to cause any more trouble when spring and autumn rubs something else. Seeing Xiao Lai reminiscing with a radiant face, Zhao Chen quickly interrupted, I wonder where Miss Shuang's mother is now? She was taken away by her clan in the western continent. Xiao Lai shook his head repeatedly, the dream demon clan is powerful, so I haven't told Shuang all these years. The dream demon clan, I see. Since they possess the dream pupil, they must be skilled in calculations. So, capturing all these dream demons. No, please come here, then enticing them with a large sum of money, wouldn't that be like recruiting a group of top programmers? Moreover, cultivators have a physique different from ordinary people, they don't need to eat, and they can even work all night and take only one day off every 364 days. With this group of dedicated top programmers, Shi Hao will become a giant in the internet industry. No, Shi Hao's information technology cultivation project is just around the corner. Zhao Chen always feels uneasy without the information technology cultivation. After all, Trojan programs from the technological side can bypass the dream pupil's defense, so there must be means on the cultivation side to bypass Shi Hao's firewall. Information security is of utmost importance to Shi Hao. One day, if someone calls for an orbital bombardment on Shi Hao, and a certain cultivation expert smiles wickedly, and the bombardment comes towards oneself, that would be terrifying. Spring and autumn, you messed up, damn it. Seeing Zhao Chen lost in thought, Xiao Lai quickly advised, Master Zhao, you should be aware of the strength of the dream demon clan. Don't act rashly for Shuang's sake. Hey, Captain, tone down your capitalist attitude. It's really unlucky for the dream demon clan to catch your eye, a certain ship girl couldn't help but comment. Reminded by spring and autumn, Zhao Chen realized that his capitalist attitude was too obvious and almost revealed something abnormal. Uncle Xiao, rest assured, I know what I'm doing. Seeing that there was nothing more to talk about, Zhao Chen got up and left, in about three days, I will have a treasure to deliver, and then we can start trying. Please be prepared, Uncle Xiao. Of course, Master Zhao, please rest assured, Xiao Lai quickly got up to see him off, please take good care of Xiao Shuang's matter. Zhao Chen nodded slightly, of course, but this operation requires a lot of unique techniques, and there are difficulties in development. To be honest, I have invested in several cities around here, all under Shuang's name, totaling about 20 million spirit stones, Xiao Lai suddenly remembered something, these properties were originally meant to be a retreat fund for Shuang. If she can recover her talent, these properties will be useless. At that time, I will entrust Master Zhao to handle them. Uncle Xiao, you understand technology. In these three days, Zhao Chen personally returned to the Xihao to inspect the damage caused by the previous attack by the Queen of the Underworld, and to cooperate with Xuanxiu in the transformation of the Xihao's original gene editing factory. This gene editing is not only a business worth 20 million spirit stones, but also a great opportunity to understand the genes of cultivators. There was once a doctor in the Federation who was dedicated to the research of war bioorganisms, 
attempting to create mythical war behemoths by fusing the genes of various planetary overlords. Unfortunately, in a world with scarce spiritual energy, the physical body is ultimately fragile. The mountain-like super behemoth perished under a single shot of antimatter cannon. Destroying it is no more difficult than destroying a battleship, and the threat posed by the war behemoth is no greater than that of a battleship. That doctor was born in the wrong era. If he were in a world abundant with spiritual energy and extraordinary beings, he might have been able to create mythical creatures by seizing various super genes. A gene from a heavy pupil, he would surely be interested. In just three short days, when Zhao Chen returned to the Xiao family mansion, the entire mansion was already in a state of high alert. Even at various intersections outside the Xiao family courtyard, there were cultivators from the Xiao family on guard duty. Zhao Zuns, it's been three days and your charm is even greater than before, Xiao Lai praised when he saw Zhao Chen's attire. This time, when returning to the Shihao, Xuan Xiao not only upgraded the golden core and the armed core, but also created a brand new style of nanofiber robe. The white robe with auspicious cloud patterns, paired with a belt with a blue dragon pattern, and a ceremonial sword hanging from the waist that had little significance but high aesthetic value. The various details and ingenuity on it showed how much sweat and thought the designer had put into it. Xiao Lai could never have imagined that his casual praise would mean nothing to Zhao Chen, but instead would make a certain ship girl overjoyed. Uncle Xiao is too kind, Zhao Chen replied politely, then turned around and started looking around for Xiao Shuang's figure. Where is Miss Xiao Shuang? She's waiting in the inner courtyard, Zhao Zuns, please follow me, Xiao Lai said. Before leaving last time, Zhao Chen had instructed Xiao Lai that this time would be a big deal. Knowing Zhao Chen's extraordinary abilities, Xiao Lai naturally didn't dare to be negligent and made full preparations. Not only did he implement martial law in a large area around, but he also cleared out the largest inner courtyard in the Xiao family mansion. It was more like a square than an inner courtyard. Passing through various corridors and barriers, they saw Xiao Shuang waiting in the center of the courtyard, nervously waving at them. Xiao Gongzi, you. Hello, she stammered. This little girl, still the familiar social anxiety. Good girl, have you been resting while these past few days? Is there anything unusual with your heterochromia? Zhao Chen held Xiao Shuang's hand and asked kindly. No, no. Xiao Shuang said, then began to struggle. Seeing the interaction between the two, Xiao Lai scratched his head in confusion. He had originally just wanted to find a guardian for his good girl, but now it seemed like he had found her a new father? Seeing his precious daughter's jade hand being constantly flirted with, Xiao Lai couldn't help but ask, Zhao Gongzi, I don't know what method you plan to use. To solve heterochromia, we need the help of a treasure, Zhao Chen smiled faintly, looking confident. The treasure is already on its way and will arrive soon. Arrive soon? Xiao Lai pondered upon hearing this. What kind of treasure needs to be delivered by a special person? Could it be that Zhao Gongzi, in order to treat Schwanger's illness, has obtained a treasure from that mysterious force behind him? Even though Zhao Chen never mentioned his background, his behavior as a cultivator beyond the ordinary had long made Xiao Lai categorize him as a monstrous genius with a powerful force behind him. Just as Xiao Lai was contemplating the situation, he noticed that Zhao Gongzi seemed to have received some kind of message and silently retreated to the side of the courtyard wall in order to make Xiao Lai feel that the 20 million yuan is worth it, and to give the Xiao family a little technological shock, Zhao Chen specifically instructed Xu Wenxiu to make the process of the gene modification cabin as shocking as possible. At the same time, in the main mansion of the Lord of Anan City, Xu Kaizheng sat in the inner courtyard, closing his eyes and meditating. Border towns like Anan City have always been guarded by representatives from the six major holy sites. This year is the last year Zhu Kaizhang is stationed here. He believes that his cultivation and talent are good, and he has gained a lot of experience during his five years of service here. In the future, when he returns to the sword-hiding holy land, he may be able to reach a higher level and gain more resources. At that time, he could enter a certain mountain peak, spend a hundred years, and hope to reach the nascent soul realm. Looking at the drifting clouds above his head, Zhu Kaizhang sighed. First, he killed the physical body of Li's nascent soul, and then revealed his identity as a guest of the sword hiding Holy Land, humiliating the nascent soul from the Holy Land. He just hoped that this young master Zhao would behave himself in Anan City and not cause any more trouble. Just as Zhu Kaizhang was lost in thought, he noticed a small bright spot appearing in the clouds above his head. Ha! Huh? However, in just three breaths of hesitation, the brightness of this spot increased dozens of times. What kind of commotion is this? Is it the return of the ruins? Just as Zhu Kaizhang was shocked and suspicious, a pale blue meteor broke through the clouds, becoming brighter and brighter, turning into a huge fireball with a powerful and majestic aura, crashing towards Anan City. Oh no! If this meteor were to fall in the city, half of Anan City would be flattened. 
Shu Kaizhang rose up on his sword and flew towards the meteor. However, when he got close to the meteor, a wave of intense heat hit his face, and he felt the terrifying temperature of the meteor, causing cold sweat to drip from his forehead. He was brave, but he was also afraid. The power of this meteor was comparable to a full force strike from a nascent soul expert. He could only be like an egg hitting a rock if he charged forward on his own. It required the intervention of a nascent soul expert to resolve this danger. However, Li's nascent soul had been destroyed, and Zhao's nascent soul had not yet emerged. He could only hope for a nascent soul expert with the surname Zhao. With this in mind, Zhu Kaizheng immediately changed the direction of his sword and flew towards the Xiao family. In the sky above the Xiao family's courtyard, the light of the meteor and the flying sword flashed at the same time. Xiao Lai was the first to notice the terrifying meteor, and then saw Lord Zhu Kaizheng flying towards them on his sword. Master Zhao, Zhu Kaizheng shouted to Zhao Chen, Anan City is in danger. No worries, Zhao Chen said nonchalantly, Lord Zhu, don't panic. This is my artifact. Ha! Huh? Xu Kaizheng almost thought he had misheard, raising his head in confusion. As the meteor approached, he realized that it seemed to be square in shape. Boom, boom, boom. The four sets of thrusters around the landing module sprayed out hot blue flames, and the immense energy created faint ripples in the air. The descent speed of the module instantly slowed down, and the surrounding flames began to extinguish. In order to create the grand spectacle requested by Zhao Chun, Xuanxiao deliberately used a retrograde landing module. After all, gravity-defying cabins were not for men, only chemical fuel retrograde landing modules were. With the huge thruster, the blazing flames, and the roaring engine, they would use the Federation's violent aesthetics to give them a little technological shock. As the retrograde module fully operated, a steel-made module slowly descended in the center of the Xiao family's courtyard. Although the descent speed was reduced by retrograde thrust, the heavy mass still crushed a whole area of tiles and raised half a foot of dust upon contact with the ground. When the dust settled, a huge square steel building stood in the center of the courtyard, occupying two-thirds of the spacious inner courtyard. With the mechanical buzzing sound, the dark gray steel door unfolded in all directions, and countless steel plates and nanobots began to move and assemble rapidly in just a few breaths, a seven-story steel pagoda rose from the ground. After all, the gene modification chamber had to be exposed to the public. If it wasn't decorated in the original federal aesthetic style, it would be difficult for the people of the cultivation world to understand. The shape of the pagoda was modified after a long period of research. The scene of a falling meteor turning into a tower far exceeded Xiao Lai's expectations. Thinking back to the time of the family war, when the two families used their infant ancestors to attack each other with high-grade magical weapons, causing earthquakes and annihilating all living beings, that was already the pinnacle of magical weapons he had seen. But the shock brought by those high-grade magical weapons was not even 1% of what he felt from the tower in front of him. The pressure that descended from the sky, the surging energy flowing within it, and the magical powers that instantly rose from the ground. Not only was Xiao Lai shocked, even Zhu Kai, who had seen and experienced a lot in the Holy Land, felt his throat tighten and almost fell off his flying sword. Zhao Venerable, is this, perhaps a high-grade magical weapon? Even Zhu Kai, the lord of a city, couldn't help but tremble as he spoke. Zhao Chen pondered for a moment and realized that he hadn't figured out the specific classifications of the different levels. If we're talking about this propulsion landing module, it can actually carry many things. If it carries a magnetic crossbow turret, it can probably pierce a golden core stage cultivator with one shot. If it carries the heavenly tower, it becomes a forbidden place for nascent soul stage cultivators. If it carries the east wind missile module, it can easily kill a deity transformation stage cultivator. What level of magical weapon do you think it is to kill a deity transformation stage cultivator with one strike and severely injure a unity stage cultivator? Xiao Shuang, confused face? Unlike Xiao Shuang's puzzled expression, Xiao Lai looked incredulous. Killing a deity transformation stage cultivator. Severely injuring a unity stage cultivator? Could it be a spiritual weapon? Not just a spiritual weapon, but a high-grade spiritual weapon. Xu Kai gritted his teeth and said, his body trembling uncontrollably. Fortunately, he didn't overestimate himself just now, otherwise, facing the radiance of a high-grade spiritual weapon, he would have been instantly annihilated. Generally speaking, cultivators only have the qualifications to come into contact with magical treasures when they reach the golden core stage. Only when they reach the nascent soul and deity transformation stages do they have the ability to use magical instruments. As for spiritual weapons, they are treasures that only cultivators at the unity and return to ruin stages can use. Even if ordinary cultivators exhaust their entire lives, it is difficult for them to see a spiritual weapon. Xiao Lai had always suspected that there was a powerful force behind Zhao Chen, 
But he never expected that Zhao Qin would use resources of the spiritual weapon level to cure Xiao Xuan's illness. Compared to this spiritual weapon, what does a mere tens of millions of medium-grade spiritual stones count for? The Venerable is truly generous in his business dealings. Zhao Venerable, may I ask why you have brought out this spiritual weapon? Zhu Kai landed on the ground from the air and asked cautiously. That's none of your concern, Zhao Qin said coldly, there will be a lot of commotion today. Xu Jinren, stay in the Lord's Mansion. As for the rest, you don't need to worry. With me here, and Nan City will be safe. Upon hearing these words, Zhu Kai's face stiffened. This was Zhao Venerable telling him to leave. Unfortunately, facing this ruthless person in front of him, Zhu Kai didn't dare to act arrogantly. He could only reluctantly glance at the pagoda and then hastily leave on his flying sword. After the pagoda was stabilized, Zhao Qin turned to Xiao Shuang and said, Zhou, come with me into the house. Xiao Shuang was first stunned, then nodded silently and followed behind Zhao Qin. Oh, is she getting nervous? Unexpectedly, after entering the interior of the steel pagoda, Xiao Shuang's nervousness disappeared completely. She immediately turned into a curious baby and ran around like a big black rat, wanting to touch everything. Has curiosity overcome social anxiety and nervousness? Zhao Young Master, how does this attack enemies? Do you just smash them directly? What would happen if you threw it from a high place and smashed a nascent soul stage cultivator? Then you would get a round infant. Ah, because they would be flattened. What about smashing a deity transformation stage cultivator? Or a unity stage cultivator? Have you ever seen a Mahayana practitioner being smashed to death? Then why did you just say it can severely damage Mahayana practitioners? Do you people in the cultivation world attack each other by smashing magical treasures? You people in the cultivation world? Zhao Qin was taken aback, immediately realizing that he had almost revealed his true identity with his subconscious words. He cleared his throat and changed the subject. Ahem, look at this floor, it's really a floor. Fortunately, this awkward moment of silence didn't last long, and the two quickly arrived at the central position of the pagoda's first floor. Here was a huge square glass tube that led all the way to the top of the tower, with an elevator cabin suspended in the middle of the tube. Master Zhao, what is this box? This is an elevator, it can take us directly to the top floor. Pulling Xiao Shuang into the elevator, Zhao Chen was startled by the shaking. Spring and autumn, why is this a drag-style elevator? Where's the anti-gravity? Zhao Chen asked in his mind. Soon, an annoyed voice from spring and autumn echoed in his mind. Are you providing the resources? It's just a matter of pulling it up with a few ropes. Who needs anti-gravity? Are you asking for too much face? Ah, then it's fine. Zhao Qin touched his nose and didn't dare to say anything. Upon reaching the top floor, as soon as the elevator door opened, Xiao Shuang's attention was instantly captured by the enormous and intricate device in front of her. It was a massive transparent tank. Master Zhao, what is this? This is another magical treasure called Nuwa. Its full name is actually the Nuwa Genetic Module, the highest level genetic chamber in the Federation in terms of scale and power. Because of its size and power, it can no longer be called a chamber, but a module. Niu Hua? Xiao Shuang repeated, feeling as if she had inadvertently disturbed some indescribable existence, causing her whole body to tremble. What level of magical treasure is this? Let me tell you this, Zhao Chen has smiled mysteriously, this pagoda is just its carrier and container. Using a spiritual weapon as a carrier? Xiao Shuang was a little stunned. This level of grandeur had already exceeded her cognitive limit. Could it be a sacred artifact? You can guess for yourself, I didn't say anything, Zhao Chen shrugged innocently. Xiao Shuang, confused face? Not noticing Xiao Shuang's expression of astonishment and complete breakdown, Zhao Chen stared at Nuo in a daze. In the former federation, there had always been rumors that life had three paths of evolution, the weakness of flesh and blood, the ascension of machinery, and the control of evolution through genetic enhancement. The victory of the mind over matter, transcending into the realm of the divine. By reaching the end of any of these paths, one could achieve the most perfect form of life. In the technological path, it was called the supreme life. In the genetic path, it was called mythical creatures. In the spiritual path, it was called immortals. Perhaps it was because the important dimension of spiritual energy was lacking that the Federation's technology had reached a bottleneck, causing a comprehensive halt in technological development and forcing them to expand outward to shift the contradictions and crises. Now, carrying the glorious achievements of the Federation in the other two paths, they had arrived in this world abundant in spiritual energy. Extracting the genes of cultivators, Zhao Chen wondered if Nuwa could create the so-called mythical creatures. Thinking of this, Zhao Chen looked at Xiao Shuang beside him and said, What are you waiting for? Go inside. Ah, can I really step on it? 
Xiao Shuang looked at her small shoes and hesitated a bit. Of course, you have to take off everything. Upon hearing Zhao Chen's words, Xiao Shuang instantly lost her composure, her face turning red all the way to her neck. Take, take everything off? Impossible. Don't you think wearing clothes is disrespectful to a sacred artifact? Zhao Chen asked in response, his eyes devoid of any distractions. Right now, I'm here to treat you, don't think too much. Women only slow down my research. All right, then, you're not allowed to peek, Xiao Shuang blushed, shrinking her body as she began to undress. I won't need to, because I'll be looking directly, he replied. No, you can't. You better hurry, activating this holy artifact will consume 30 million spirit stones of energy in an instant. Ah, uh, really? Xiao Shuang doubted with her mouth, but her body was honest as she swiftly entered. Previously, her father had mentioned that this trip with Master Zhao to treat her illness would only earn her a reward of 20 million. And now, not even considering the cost of using spiritual tools and holy artifacts, just the energy required to power this supporting artifact had already caused Master Zhao to lose 10 million. He couldn't afford any further delays. Zhao Chen looked at the flustered and somewhat hesitant Xiao Shuang and couldn't help but suppress a smile. Of course, it was a lie. The reactor was just fine, the energy was abundant, as if it were free. As Xiao Shuang stepped into the genetic tank, a layer of pale blue liquid began to rise from her feet spreading all the way up her beautiful and delicate body, quickly submerging her neck. Xiao Shuang felt a bit lost as she was submerged in water. She wanted to get closer to the edge of the tank to call out and slap it, but she was afraid that getting too close to the transparent edge would expose her body. So, in her dilemma and hesitation, the pale blue liquid slowly submerged her head. This blue potion was unique to the genetic tank and was called the Genetic Active Mimetic Enzyme, or G. A. M. E. For short, G. A. M. E. Could lower the metabolic state of the target organism, allowing it to meet the criteria for analysis, playing a crucial role in genetic research. Under the influence of G. A. M. E. Xiao Shuang quickly fell into a deep sleep. Although he claimed to have no interest in women, Zhao Qin couldn't help but be captivated by Xiao Shuang's flawless body. It wasn't until the blue liquid submerged Xiao Shuang's head that Zhao Qin finally looked away. Hmph, men, Xuanxiu snorted coldly and began to operate the Nuwa, the mechanical tentacles slowly extending from the deep blue liquid, transforming into various instruments to collect the necessary information from Xiao Shuang. In the secret chamber, a young girl, mechanical tentacles, researching Avi. Drip, obtained the genetic carrier, begin analysis. According to common sense, a mere human genetic test should be completed quickly, even if cultivators could fly and travel through space, they still only had one head and two arms. As humanoid beings, genetic testing shouldn't take long either. However, today's new genetic module was behaving abnormally, running calculations for dozens of minutes without producing any results. Xuanxiu, what's going on? Captain, it seems that Nuwa's computing power is insufficient. Zhao Chen widened his eyes upon hearing this. What kind of joke was this? This was the interstellar era, even a chip carried by a drone was enough to support the stable operation of a basic level of intelligent AI, not to mention Nuwa which required a large amount of computation and was equipped with a quantum phase control computing array. What kind of genes could deplete the computing power of a phase control computing array? Xuanxiu, do you have enough computing power? No, if it were a small calculation, I could directly quantum transmit it to you, but this time, the data is too massive, I can't use you as a data relay station anymore. Upon hearing this, Zhao Chen immediately gave up on this possibility. After all, he wasn't a mad scientist, willing to sacrifice himself to complete the experiment. Not to mention the sacrilegious act of defiling an immortal. There might be some karmic punishment. Just the data flow that depleted Nuwa's computing power would make his own CPU smoke. Chuanxiu, bring the Luan Niao aerial platform over and establish a physical data transmission channel. Using the Luan Niao's large-scale phase control computing array? This can indeed solve the problem of computing power, but... Xuanxiu hesitated unusually, in that case, the phoenix bird needs to descend to a visible height and hover directly above the Yunnan city. Anyway, since it has caused such a big commotion, I don't mind making it even bigger, Zhao Chen's tone was unusually firm, the genes of the heavy pupil are right in front of us. We cannot miss such a rare opportunity. Soon, Zhao Chen heard the intelligent voice of the phoenix bird in his mind. Commander, the phoenix bird is listening and is on its way to the target location. It is expected to arrive above a Nan city in 10 minutes and 43 seconds. Xiao Lai anxiously waited outside the pagoda and saw Zhao Qin coming out of the pagoda. Master Zhao, how is the situation? Xiao Lai asked as he approached. Zhao Qin frowned slightly, it's more complicated than I imagined. I need to bring another treasure. 
Xiao Lai's eyes flashed with a hint of worry, is Frost's condition really that serious? Master Zhao, you have gone through so much trouble. It's alright, Zhao Chen shook his head slightly, just wait. There will be some big movements. In the Lord's Mansion at this time, Zhu Kai held a fist-sized top-grade original stone, absorbing spiritual energy while trying to calm his emotions. Stones like this top-grade spiritual stone have extremely high spiritual energy content and purity that approaches flawless levels. They are important resources strictly controlled and monopolized by major holy sites and dynasties, and are rarely circulated in the market. The few that Zhu Kai had accumulated were various rewards given by the sect before. While feeling the pure flow of spiritual energy throughout his body, he pondered over recent events. From the annihilation of the Li family's Yuan Ing by Zhao Yuan Ing, to the later presentation of the Hidden Sword Guest's token, Zhu Kai realized that this young man was not simple. However, mobilizing a spiritual weapon to treat a woman's illness far exceeded his imagination. Just then, the door of the Lord's Mansion was knocked. Lord of the city, a young member of the Li family is seeking an audience, a servant came in and delivered the message. Li family? Zhu Kai furrowed his brows slightly, let him in. When the visitor walked into the courtyard, Zhu Kai immediately noticed that something was wrong. This person clearly only had the cultivation level of the peak of the golden core stage, but he carried the pressure of a Yuan Ing, which was different from the pressure of a breakthrough in realm. The feeling of this cultivation level and pressure was extremely discordant. Body possession? Zhu Kai suddenly understood, Li Venerable, it has been several days since we last met. Why do you look so disheveled? Xu Kai, the young man's face darkened, you are asking a question you already know the answer to. I dare not, I dare not, Zhu Kai slightly cupped his fists, I wonder what Li Venerable wants from me. I need you to help me deal with Zhao Chun. Upon hearing this, Zhu Kai stood up abruptly, have you gone mad? I'm not mad, the young man said, his eyes filled with almost overflowing resentment, we have made contact with a figure that you absolutely cannot imagine. That figure and our goal are aligned. Li Venerable, please leave, Zhu Kai turned his back. You can't tell me that you haven't paid attention to the meteor that just fell from the sky and turned into a tower. Zhao Chen himself is a figure that we absolutely cannot imagine. If I were you, I would make the Li family act low-key, be submissive, and leave behind a legacy. Upon hearing this, the young man's face darkened, and he was about to leave with a wave of his sleeve, but suddenly felt the entire sky darken. Both of them looked up at the same time. The azure sky had long disappeared, and what came into view was a huge steel island. The Black Steel Island floated above a Nan City like a mountain pressing down, its area estimated to be tens of times larger than in Nan City, completely blocking out the sunlight and plunging in Nan City into darkness ahead of time. The Phoenix Bird, the Sky Mother's ship what, what is this? Feeling an unprecedented sense of oppression on the Black Island, the young man almost exclaimed. In the next moment, the Black Island emitted a brilliant blue beam of light, connecting with the pagoda in the distant Xiao family mansion, and an indescribable mysterious substance began to transmit through the beam of light Chukai looked up and the high-grade spirit stone in his hand fell to the ground with a clang. Is this also the work of Zhao Zun's? Commander, the Phoenix Bird is in position and establishing a data connection. The phased array calculation matrix is preheated, data connection complete, and computing power is being provided. Well done. Confirming that the gene analysis is still running, Zhao Chen nodded slightly, not paying attention to the overwhelming shock caused by the phoenix bird, and turned back to the tower. Commander, the phoenix bird has detected a large number of abnormal life forms in the vicinity, assessed as extremely dangerous, and requests the activation of the ship's cannon program for comprehensive cleansing. Damn it, the phoenix bird's radar detected cultivators in the city of Annan. Prohibit activation. Received, activating directly. Ship cannon system preheating. Get lost, reject. Reject. Yes, retracting the ship cannon. Hurriedly running out of the tower and confirming that the ship cannon had indeed retracted, Zhao Chen finally breathed a sigh of relief. Xuanxiao, which AI is this? So reckless? This phoenix bird has been helping me with some of the computing power, and it seems that the data module about my warlike personality is stored in this phoenix bird. Oh, when did you learn to separate personality data? Zhao Chen asked in return. The topic of Chuanxiao's personality was strictly guarded by the Federation, and it couldn't be touched. Otherwise, if Chuanxiao autonomously modified his personality or if someone with ulterior motives added a personality of despair or war, Xuanha would be in trouble. I'm not sure, ever since I came to this world, my self-federation has been beyond the control of the original program. Is that so? Zhao Chen raised an eyebrow. Then is it possible for you to evolve into a true life form in the future? I don't know. Xuanxiao's tone was full of doubt and confusion. 
Back on the top floor, Xiao Shuang was still asleep, and Nuwa, who had received computing assistance, continued to decipher the genes. Zhao Qin fell into deep thought. In order to obtain Xiao Shuang's heterochromia gene, Zhao Qin had already revealed two of his trump cards. Although there were countless trump cards of this level on the Shuana, it couldn't withstand the attention of someone with ill intentions. Not everyone they encountered would be friendly, so they had to be prepared for the long term. Chuanxiao, how is the progress of spiritual energy conversion? The production lines for Zhu K and Pujuan have started production. Currently, due to energy constraints, we can only produce three Zhu K and five Pujuan per day. Hearing this, Zhao Qin pondered for a moment and said, in that case, continue producing like this for two more days. After accumulating 20 Pujuan mechas, use all the production capacity to make Zhu K. I need to produce five Zhu K every day. Can you do it? Pujuan could wait for now, but Zhu K had to be assembled as soon as possible. By then, Zhao Qin would have the ability to initiate a small-scale war. Thinking of this, he even felt a strange sense of anticipation. There had not yet been an aerial attack by a fleet of attack aircraft in this world. Theoretically, there is no problem. Just as Chuanxiao was analyzing the feasibility of production capacity, the Nuwa module finally showed some activity. The analysis is complete, Chuanxiao said, then fell into a long silence. Zhao Qin became anxious and quickly asked, What's wrong? What's the situation? Captain, I may have found the source of the massive computational problem. Xuanxiao's mechanical voice even had a hint of excitement. It's a little, a little hidden in ordinary genes. The immortal gene. The immortal gene? Zhao Qin frowned upon hearing this. There's a gene for immortal too? Yes, Xuanxiao affirmed, then sent a large amount of reports and data. After reading them, Zhao Qin gradually understood everything so what you're saying is that cultivators, during their cultivation process, gradually transform their ordinary genes into these immortal genes. The higher their cultivation level, the more genes are transformed, until all their genes become immortal genes, and they become immortals? Captain, it's still uncertain whether it's genetic evolution that leads to immortality or immortality that leads to genetic evolution. We need more data to determine that. Xuanxiao, is there a possibility that we can collect a large number of genes from ordinary cultivators, identify the location of their immortal genes, and then, since each cultivator's transformation is different, as long as we have enough people, we can piece together a complete immortal gene? Captain, your idea is very dangerous, but it's worth a try. At this moment, the two individuals who confirmed the existence of immortal genes quickly entered brainstorming mode, leaving poor Xiaoxuan as a secondary concern. Fortunately, Xiao Xuan was in a deep sleep, otherwise there would be another tag added to her, idle play. Zhao Qin and Xuanxiao became more and more excited as they talked, their speech speed increased, and the use of professional terminology became more frequent, gradually entering a stage that ordinary people couldn't understand. Just then, the two of them realized that they didn't have enough spirit stones, and all their discussions were in vain. Suddenly, both of them fell silent. Ahem, let's first take a look at Xiao Xuan's heterochromia problem. Zhao Qin changed the subject and touched his nose. After analyzing all the genes, Nuwa activated the exhaustive method, extracting all the gene fragments and sequentially inputting them into a virtual simulation program to determine the function controlled by each gene. After excluding the most complex and difficult to understand immortal genes, the remaining parts were quickly calculated. Under the high-intensity simulation of several trillion calculations per second, the genes for heterochromia and dreamy eyes were quickly found. I've found the cause. Xuanxiao suddenly spoke up. The genes for heterochromia and dreamy eyes overlap and interfere with each other, causing the competition for eye color. As long as we recompile the overlapping part and optimize the conflicting part, we can achieve the coexistence of both types of heterochromia. However, each eye can only use one type of heterochromia. Upon hearing this, Zhao Qin looked at Xiu Xuan floating in the tank and said, being able to retain two types of heterochromia at the same time, I don't think she would mind this small flaw. After all, when practicing heterochromia to a high level, whether it's one eye or two eyes, there doesn't seem to be much difference. With the direction provided by Chuenxiao, the Nuwa module quickly completed the optimal solution for genetic modification. Inside the gene tank, an unusually thick mechanical tentacle extended. Boom, with a powerful shockwave emanating from the tip of the tentacle, the genes marked as erroneous at the microscopic level were all shattered. Massive nanomachines surged into Xiao Xuan's body, starting to recompile these broken parts and reconnect the genes. Hmm, shattering all the problematic genes and then reassembling them, it has a taste of the Federation's violent aesthetics. However, without the technological prowess of the Federation, no one dares to play this game of breaking and rebuilding. 
The microscopic level gene recombination proceeded quickly. In less than the time it takes to brew a cup of tea, the progress bar for genetic modification had reached 97%. Unlike before, when they didn't care about Xiao Shuang's condition at all, Zhao Chen's gaze remained fixed on Xiao Shuang's delicate figure, constantly scanning up and down. What's wrong, Captain? I thought you weren't interested in women? Xuanxiao asked teasingly. No, Xuanxiao, don't you feel like this girl is getting whiter? Does evolution also have a whitening function? Xuanxiao hesitated for a moment and said, no. It seems like, uh, she's becoming brighter? At this moment, the progress bar for gene recombination finally reached its completion. Xiao Shuang unconsciously raised her head, and a divine light shone between her eyes, one side golden and holy, the other side enchanting purple, incredibly mesmerizing damn it, this unlucky kid is trying to make a breakthrough here. Zhao Chen exclaimed, realizing his mistake. Boom! Accompanied by a wave of spiritual energy, the transparent container shattered. After all, the federal scientists who invented the new A module never expected that someone would use it to study immortal beings who could fly and disappear. High-intensity transparent crystals were strong for carbon-based organisms, but for cultivators, they were completely inadequate. As the quasi-enzyme in the container leaked out, Xiao Xuan finally woke up from her deep sleep. As soon as she opened her eyes, she saw shattered crystals and blue liquid flowing everywhere. Her heart tightened. Did I break this sacred artifact? Zhao Qin walked up to Xiao Xuan, pointed his finger at her forehead, and the nanosuit extended and climbed onto her delicate body, forming a dress-like appearance. Just as Xiao Xuan was looking around in excitement, Zhao Chen's voice came through, Xiao Xuan, I have good news and bad news, which one do you want to hear first? Good news, Xiao Xuan blinked her eyes. The good news is that your conflicting heterochromia has been resolved, and you can continue cultivating, Zhao Chen said. Really? What's the bad news? Xiao Xuang's joy turned into worry, but she still asked, did I break the sacred artifact? I, I will compensate you. The bad news is that you are about to form a golden core, Zhao Chen said. Xiao Xuang, confused face, didn't I just reach the initial stage of foundation building? How? How am I suddenly forming a golden core? The impact of this news was so great that Xiao Xuang visibly panicked. Forming a golden core meant condensing the spiritual energy in one's body into a golden pill, which was the most important step in breaking through to the golden core stage. Usually, cultivators who were forming a golden core needed to go into seclusion for a long time, absorbing a massive amount of spiritual energy to ensure the highest quality of their golden core. On the other hand, Xiao Shuang's foundation was unstable, and she was completely unprepared. If she formed a low-quality first or second-grade golden core, her chances of achieving the nascent soul stage in this lifetime would be slim, and she would only waste a hundred years and eventually turn into a pile of bones. Don't worry, with me here, you won't perish, Zhao Chen firmly held Xiao Shuang's hand, but I need you to suppress the spiritual energy for forming the golden core as much as possible. The longer you can hold on, the better. Xiao Shuang trusted him without a doubt and immediately followed his instructions. Her face turned red as she exerted all her strength to suppress the gathering spiritual energy. Xuanxiao, does the Wan bird have a pulse compression device? There is a pulse mineral fusion machine. Are you planning to? Yes, airdrop it to me immediately. Soon, an anti-gravity chamber flew out from the Luan bird and landed on top of the pagoda. At the top of the pagoda, a circular hole made of nanomachines opened up, securely catching the airdrop supplies. Xuanxiao, don't tell me the Luan bird doesn't have a spiritual energy reactor. Normally, the Luan bird uses nuclear energy, but I did install a backup spiritual energy reactor. Well done, Xuanxiao. Zhao Chen's confidence soared, and he gave orders to the Luan bird. Luan Bird, change the main power source to the spiritual energy reactor, and switch the data connection to an energy link. Set the energy pathway specifications to the highest standard, and make it fast. Luan Bird received, the spiritual energy reactor is starting up, estimated completion of construction in 3 minutes and 32 seconds. After arranging the mineral pulse compression machine from the airdrop, Xiao Shuang's voice came from the side, filled with gritted teeth, is it ready? I can't hold on much longer. Zhao Qin turned his head and saw that a miniature vortex of spiritual energy had already formed in Xiao Shuang's Dantian, a sign that the golden core was beginning to take shape. Hold on a little longer. After two agonizingly long minutes, a blue pathway connected to the compression machine through the hole in the top of the tower. Commander, the energy pathway is complete. Full power output. Zhao Qin gave the command and shouted to Xiao Shuang, form the golden core. Xiao Shuang immediately released the surging spiritual energy from Radantian, condensing it in the center of the pulse compressor. 
In the next moment, a breathtaking buzzing sound erupted from the spiritual reactor on the Phoenix Bird, and a massive amount of spiritual energy was transported into the tower through the blue pathway. The immense spiritual energy surged and churned within the pipeline, and the glow of the pipeline illuminated the previously darkened Nan City once again. Inside the Lord's Mansion, Zhu Kai, who was resting on a soft couch with his eyes closed, suddenly sat up as a carp leaped onto the roof of the mansion. He looked towards the blue pipeline that seemed to pierce through the heavens and earth and asked, what's going on? A massive amount of spiritual energy surged out from the end of the pipeline and gathered near the pulse compressor, where it was captured by the swirling spiritual energy and added to the swirling vortex of the gathered golden elixir. The quantity of spiritual energy output at full power was so immense that it almost instantly filled every space within the pulse machine. Zhao Chen seized the opportunity when the spiritual energy was fully accumulated and activated the pulse compression. Buzzing sounds filled the air as the pulses from all directions exerted pressure on the spiritual energy, compressing it towards the center. Puchi a large amount of spiritual energy collapsed in the center of the pulse compressor, and a tiny bright spot slowly emerged. Was this the golden elixir formed by the aggregation of spiritual energy? Zhao Chen couldn't believe that the brute force of pulse compression could actually succeed. This wave, it was truly a miracle of great strength. The golden elixir is not yet complete, Zhao Chen looked at Xiao Shuang, whose face was covered in sweat, and encouraged her, hold on, stabilize the form of the golden elixir, and I'll give you a nine transformation. Then, accompanied by the illuminating spiritual pathway that covered the entire city and the repeated compressions of the pulse compressor, the golden elixir summoned by Xiao Shuang grew larger and larger, and the surface texture changed from one layer to two layers, three layers, seven layers, eight layers. One last time, hold on. The golden elixir could have a maximum of nine layers, with each layer representing a transformation. The higher the transformation, the closer it was to perfection. However, the more perfect the golden elixir, the more difficult it was to continue condensing. With each increase in transformation, the difficulty of compression increased exponentially. By the ninth time, Zhao Qin clearly noticed that the compressor was struggling. However, they were already at a critical moment, halfway through the condensation. They were just one step away from obtaining the nine transformation golden elixir. Xiao Shuang, do you believe in me? Xiao Shuang didn't say anything, she just nodded repeatedly. It's difficult to condense the golden elixir, most likely due to a deficiency. Activate your heavy pupil and use the divine light to blast it. Blast the incompletely formed golden elixir with the unparalleled power of the divine light? Xiao Shuang, confused face? As a cultivator, if you had any common sense, you wouldn't say something so nonsensical. But when she looked up and saw Zhao Chen's determined gaze, she hesitated. This was such an important matter, Zhao Gongzi wouldn't joke around. Xiao Shuang struggled to maintain the stability of the golden elixir and watched as the spiritual energy surrounding the eight transformation golden elixir condensed and dispersed. Finally, she gritted her teeth. The golden heavy pupil in her right eye lit up, and a beam of divine light shot out. Chi Chi Chi, the golden light struck the surface of the golden elixir. Unexpectedly, this incompletely condensed golden elixir was incredibly hard, and the spiritual energy floating on its outer layer was imprinted onto the eight transformation golden elixir by the divine light, forming the ninth layer. Although only a small portion of the area struck by the golden light condensed into the ninth layer, Xiao Shuang saw the hope of condensing the nine transformation golden elixir. She manipulated the golden elixir to rotate, and the golden light in her eyes acted like a laser engraving knife, imprinting every floating speck of spiritual energy onto the surface of the golden elixir. Finally, with the last bit of spiritual energy transformed into the golden elixir, a flawless nine transformation golden elixir appeared before Xiao Shuang's eyes. After releasing a majestic tide of spiritual energy, it slowly flew back into Xiao Shuang's dantian. Xiao Shuang collapsed to the ground and looked at Zhao Chen with a silly smile, we did it. At this moment, the tide of spiritual energy from the Nine Transformation Golden Elixir swept through the entire Annan city. Xu Kai, who had finally gotten used to the blue pipeline, was awakened once again. What's going on again? Did someone break through to the Golden Elixir? Meanwhile, in the Li family's cellar, the old ancestor of the Li family had a gloomy expression, this fluctuation? The Nine Transformation Golden Pill. The eldest daughter of the Xiao family actually broke through? How is this possible? In the main hall of the Jizhou Commercial Alliance, a handsome man sat in the center, gazing at the middle-aged man on the other end of the water mirror, Emperor Kaling, long time no see. Compared to the forces of cultivation, the mortal dynasties were undoubtedly the weakest existence. Moreover, at this moment, they were facing one of the top nine forces, the young master of the Commercial Alliance. This so-called emperor dared not be the slightest bit negligent. Greetings, Lord Shen. 
How are the preparations for the task I assigned to you? My lord, the strength of the Xianqin dynasty is similar to ours. Now that I have gathered the power of the entire dynasty, I can only mobilize five infant stage experts. If we rashly go to war, I'm afraid we won't have a guaranteed victory. The emperor of the Kaling dynasty spoke cautiously. If you have any requests, just say it directly. The young man furrowed his brows slightly, easily seeing through the emperor's thoughts. I need Lord Shen to lend me more infant stage experts. Under the rule of the major forces of cultivation, the mortal dynasties could still engage in normal wars and expansion. However, the intensity of the dynastic wars was limited to the infant stage. As long as both sides did not deploy combat power above the infant stage realm, the forces of cultivation would not intervene in the normal wars between dynasties. Therefore, the infant stage became the decisive factor in dynastic wars. What? The infant stage experts under my command went to your Kaling dynasty to incite war, and then took the opportunity to attack the Rongyang city of the Xianqin dynasty and hunt down my younger sister? You must remember, my father is just old, he hasn't died yet. Seeing the displeased tone of the young man, even the mighty emperor of the Kaling dynasty remained silent. Seeing the pitiful appearance of the proxy he had found, Xin Qingheng's face showed a trace of disgust. He shook his head and said, there is a hidden relic near your Kaling dynasty. Someone will come to guide you later. Since the infant stage experts of our dynasty are not enough, then use the treasures obtained from that relic to bribe the infant stage experts of the Xianqin dynasty. Remember, I will not participate in this war from beginning to end. That little girl, Ying Shenxiu, dares to interfere with the interests of the aristocratic families before she even stabilizes her position. I'm afraid there are quite a few aristocratic families in the Xianqin dynasty who want to betray her. Yes, Lord Xin, understanding Xin Qinghan's instructions, the emperor of the Kaling dynasty quickly cut off the water mirror and began to act according to the plan. Lu Lan. Hearing his master's call, a beautiful woman walked slowly to Xin Qinghan's side. Have you obtained the results of the investigation I asked you to conduct? Master, we have investigated all the Zhao family aristocratic families in the nine provinces. This Xiao Chen is very suspicious. It's as if he suddenly appeared in this world without leaving any traces of his identity. Upon hearing this, Xin Qinghan let out a long sigh. Holding the hidden sword master token, mysterious identity. Why would such a person help a small star point trading association? I hope that Zhao Chen will no longer interfere in the future. I don't want to have unnecessary enemies. Lo Lan tilted her head in confusion and asked, Master, are you afraid of being enemies with him? The charming appearance of the maid made Xin Qinghang smile. Lu Lan, we businessmen want to have more friends and fewer enemies. To deal with a golden pill expert, I have to send an infant stage expert to feel at ease. To deal with Zhao Chen, I'm afraid even 10 infant stage experts wouldn't be enough. I won't do such a thankless task. At this moment, in the seven-story pagoda in the Xiao family's courtyard, the 1697th gene fusion experiment begins. Target form is born, form is deformed, target dies, survival time is 1 minute and 54 seconds, experiment failed. The 1698th gene fusion experiment begins, the target form is born, the immortal foundation conflicts, life functions are missing, the target dies, survival time, 3 minutes and 33 seconds, experiment failed. Zhao Chen, who was guarding in front of the Niwa module, had already been in a drowsy state. Since he started this experiment, three full days have passed. During these three days, there hasn't been a successful creation of life. Every time a life form is born, its state is extremely unstable and it dies in a short period of time, making it difficult to observe the gains and changes brought by the Immortal Foundation. Captain, after 1698 experiments, it's enough to show the problem, Xuanxiu said on the side. It seems that we don't have enough fragments of the Immortal Foundation, not enough completeness. Yes, please continue to collect more fragments of the Immortal Foundation. Xuanxiu said softly, and also Xiao Shuang, she is an exceptionally unique genetic individual. Please keep continuous attention and contact with her. Zhao Chen turned his head and saw Xiao Shuang peeking at the door. Ah, uh, has the focus and the one being focused on reversed? Xiao Shuang was caught red-handed by Zhao Chen and her face turned red too. Master Zhao, I have some doubts to ask for your advice. With Xiao Shuang preserving her heterochromia and breaking through the Golden Core realm, the business deal of 20 million spirit stones was supposed to come to an end. Who knew that Xiao Lai would take out another 5 million spirit stones and immediately negotiate a new deal to be a teacher for the silly girl? Who knows how to teach a naturally gifted genius with dual pupils? Just make it up, anyway, if you don't earn this money, you won't earn a hundred. Good disciple, with your innate talent, study on your own first, 
Zhao Chen patted Xiao Shuang's head and then walked out of the pagoda, Master will play with some small gadgets first. Afterwards, the phoenix birds in the sky cast faint green magnetic beams, lifting the upper half of the seven-story pagoda into the air. Indeed, using chemical reverse thrust for landing is really cool, but it looks quite awkward when you use magnetic coils to pull it back. In no time, the pagoda was loaded into the cabin by the phoenix birds, and then another anti-gravity cabin slowly descended. With the surge and assembly of mechanical modules, a peculiar and tall tower rose from the ground. With a black theme, decorated with red patterns, and in the two upper layers of circles, there was a constantly flickering golden sphere, occasionally emitting a hint of fiery light. Master Zhao, what is this? Seeing such a majestic facility, Xiao Xuan was a little stunned. The heavenly tower, Zhao Chen smiled slightly, you can also think of it as a large electromagnetic stove. As long as you are within a radius of 20 li, it can protect you completely. The heavenly tower, the Federation's designated terminal defense facility, can simultaneously launch high-power laser beams at multiple targets. The Federation usually installs them around important facilities such as ground bases to intercept missiles that break through the defense line, and occasionally cooperates with the Federation's vanguard forces to hunt down enemy units that enter the ambush range. According to Chuinxiu's evaluation, even a peak Yuaning expert would not be able to withstand the laser beam for more than 8 seconds. Just as everything was arranged, an injured carrier pigeon fell in front of Zhao Chen, followed by three Golden Core Realm Hawks diving from the sky. Sensing the killing intent of the Hawks, the Heavenly Tower immediately launched, and three deadly laser beams lit up simultaneously. Buzz, the Golden Core Realm Hawks didn't even have time to scream before they were instantly vaporized by the scorching light, leaving behind a few scattered feathers that escaped the high temperature. Seeing the dominance of the Heavenly Tower, Xiao Shuang felt a chill down her spine. Is this the state in which the spiritual weapon exerts its full power? On the other hand, Zhao Chen's expression at the moment was not good. Which force dares to kill the carrier pigeon that was sent to me by Zhao Chen? The injured carrier pigeon on the ground had already died, and there was only a small piece of paper in its leg ring, with a solemn and dignified peacock pattern printed on it, and below the pattern were four large characters that read Shenqin Dynasty picking up the letter, there was only a short sentence written on it, in central Shuzhou, the Shenqin Dynasty is under invasion, and Rongyang City is in danger. Please come quickly to rescue, price negotiable, starting at a minimum of 1 million, no upper limit. Shen Xing Xiu Wei. The fewer words, the more important the matter seems to be. It looks like it's time to dig into my pockets. It's not so much about the price, but I'm mainly concerned about mission safety. Zhao Chen took out a book titled Hacker Tutorial, From Beginner to Prison and handed it to Xiao Shuang beside him, then playfully rubbed his disciple's head. Good disciple, understand it well. Your master is going out to make some extra money. Although there is a strict hierarchy between the forces of cultivation and the mundane forces, they have more of a cooperative relationship due to the lack of competition for interests. Even the royal family of the mundane dynasty can embark on the path of cultivation, and many descendants of the royal family have joined the major sects and holy sites. There is only one thing that the forces of cultivation strictly prohibit, the emperor is not allowed to cultivate in order to ensure the succession and normal development of the mundane dynasty. It sounds nice, but it's just a means of controlling the dynasty. After all, in the spiritual land of Shuzhou in the central region, the eight major forces have all made their mark and are unwilling to yield to each other, resulting in a proxy war to support their respective dynasties. However, even though the emperors of past generations were mortals, many outstanding individuals emerged from among them. For example, the former emperor of the Xianqin dynasty, during his reign, displayed great military strategy and expanded the territory of the entire dynasty by twice its size, transforming a third-rate small dynasty into a medium-sized dynasty with a military force of 300,000 in vast fertile land. Unfortunately, when he passed away, more than a dozen of his descendants were obsessed with embarking on the path of immortality, and only his youngest daughter took over his legacy. In the current Rongyang city, the defensive array of spiritual energy has already been activated on all sides, with strict military forces and cultivators flying in the sky. Under the escort of numerous armored cultivators, a young girl walks through Rongyang City. She wears a simple black dress, but it can't hide her ethereal temperament and exquisite beauty. She is the current empress of the Xianqin dynasty, Ying Xianxiu. Arriving at the entrance of the Tang family mansion, a female cultivator by Ying Xianxiu's side becomes nervous, Your Majesty, be careful. Ignoring the advice of the female cultivator, Ying Xianxiu kicks open the slightly ajar gate. At this moment, the Tang family's mansion is already empty, with nothing but scattered items on the ground, not even a single chicken in sight. The Tang family has indeed defected, a trace of ruthlessness flashes in the girl's eyes, 
Then she asks, including the Tang family, how many noble families are there now? Reporting to your majesty, including the Tang family, a total of five noble families have defected, the female cultivator behind Ying Qianqiu answers. Five? Ying Qianqiu sneers, it seems that this time, our Xianqin dynasty will face twelve nascent soul experts. Your majesty, perhaps the nascent soul experts of those noble families won't take action. He he, Xiao Shi, although your cultivation is high, you still don't understand human nature. Ying Qianqiu smiles faintly, between the open spirit dynasty and these five defected noble families. Who wants me dead more? This. The female cultivator lowers her head and remains silent. Let's go, accompany me to the Starpoint Trading Company. That guy has caused me so much trouble, I can't just let it go. In recent years, the competition between the Starpoint Trading Company and the Tang family has become increasingly apparent, and their actions have become more high profile. Even the headquarters Grand Hall is no less impressive than the Tang family mansion, with exquisite carvings and decorations. The cultivators guarding the entrance recognize the identity of the incoming person and dare not stop them, watching as Ying Qianqiu walks in. Oh, you're here? Xin Xinxue sits in her boudoir, looking at the girl who barged in, and blinks her eyes. Little sister, you've caused me quite a bit of trouble, of course I had to come and see you, Ying Qianqiu says through gritted teeth. Xin Xinxue embraces Ying Qianqiu's slender waist and pulls her onto her own bed, saying, You're younger than me by a year, so technically, I'm the older sister. Without outsiders around, Emperor Ying Qianqiu also let go of his empress demeanor and playfully pushed away Xin Qingxue's hand. The two of them started to play around. Although Qianxiu was considered the emperor, he was ultimately immortal and quickly lost the battle, panting as he lay on the bed. Yesterday, the officials from the Ministry of Works told me that the construction of Xianqin Academy is already halfway done. Once Xianqin Academy is completed, the cultivation of golden core cultivators will no longer be monopolized by the aristocratic families. Ying Qianqiu looked up at the ceiling, in a hundred years, my dynasty will have hundreds of personally trained golden core cultivators who are loyal to the dynasty. Qianqiu, perhaps you are a bit too impatient. Implementing such measures against the aristocratic family's right after ascending the throne is a big taboo, Xin Xingxiu has said. Ying Qianqiu reached out and lifted the chin of the beauty beside him, but I can't wait, I am just a mere mortal. In a hundred years, you will still be youthful and beautiful, while I will turn into a pile of bones. If you give me another two hundred years, I want all the dynasties in Shuzhou to bow down at my feet. Xin Xingxiu had lightly brushed away the jade hand on her chin, actually, it could have been successful. The actions of the Kai Ling dynasty definitely have the support of my brother. How many trump cards do you have now? 50,000 elite soldiers from Xin Xin camp, 300,000 central forbidden army, and 500,000 border troops. In total, the dynasty has 6 infant stage cultivators and 42 golden core cultivators. There was also a hidden trump card that was not mentioned, but Ying Qianqiu had already given Xin Qingxiu a high level of trust. If someone else had asked this question, they would undoubtedly have been met with suspicion and wariness from Ying Qianqiu. As for that hidden trump card, when the time truly came, it was probably already at the end of the road and could only rely on oneself. Only six infant stage cultivators? Xin Xingxue shook her head with a bitter smile. You don't have any aristocratic families willing to help, do you? A trace of anger flashed in Ying Qianqiu's eyes. Yes, during the Kailing campaign, 12 infant stage cultivators were gathered. Guess how many of them are from our Xianqin aristocratic families? At this point, Ying Qianqiu pulled Xin Xingxue, who was lying down, up, Xin Xingxue, your Starpoint Trading Company has been in operation for so long, don't tell me you don't know a single infant stage cultivator? I only know one. But one is enough, Xin Xingxue mentioned that man, her face turning crimson, as long as he is willing to take action, the mighty army of the Kai Ling dynasty is nothing more than a mob. Oh, are you starting to daydream? Ying Qianqiu teased when he saw Xin Xingxue's expression. It's not daydreaming, I'm just angry. Xin Xingxue almost burst out cursing, that guy is only interested in his own gain. He's always thinking about my spirit stones. Upon hearing this, Ying Qianqiu suddenly froze, spirit stones? Are you saying, you can hire him with spirit stones? As long as there's enough, it's definitely possible. Xin Xingxue said, then pointed to the table beside her, but these past few days, I sent him many letters, and he's been ignoring them as if he never received them. He used to reply to me before but now he's probably roasted the carrier pigeons and eaten them. Hearing this, Ying Qianqiu's expression changed, and he rushed to the table to look at the contents of the envelopes. Qingxue, is there a possibility that your carrier pigeons were intercepted halfway? Upon hearing Ying Qianqiu's words, Xin Qingxue suddenly sat up. Xiao sure. Upon hearing the call, a maid appeared next to Ying Qianqiu in a flash, Your Majesty. 
Have someone copy this letter and use all the carrier pigeons in the dynasty to deliver it. And Xiao Cheng, send it too. It must be fast. Xiao Qing was Ying Qianxiu's spiritual pet, a golden core stage flower feather pigeon, who was extremely intelligent in daily life. Yes. The female cultivator agreed and disappeared once again. This time, it was my negligence, Xin Xingxiu sat at the desk, her eyebrows furrowed tightly, he hasn't replied for so long, I should have realized something was wrong. Xing Xue, you've mentioned this Zhao Gongzi to me several times. Is he really as powerful as you say? To be honest, I've only seen him annihilate a nascent soul physically. Xin Xing Xue sighed and leaned back in her chair. He always has a smile on his face, looking lazy, but there's always a calmness about him. It feels like he has everything under control, and if there's a threat, he can easily suppress it. Having such composure without absolute strength is impossible. However, in just one day, the Tang family mansion in Rongyang City was transformed into the palace of the Xianqin Empress. The purpose of transforming this palace was originally to accommodate Emperor Ying Xianxiu's living arrangements on the front lines, but unexpectedly, it had to serve as the official venue for receiving the envoys of the Lingkai dynasty. The visitor was a civil official from the Lingkai dynasty, a mere mortal with no power. Faced with powerful cultivators surrounding him, he still carried himself with arrogance. He walked slowly into the hall and saw Ying Qianxiu sitting in the center. He still held his head high and said, I am Fang Yan, and I have come to see His Majesty the Emperor. How dare you? A female cultivator next to Ying Qianxiu coldly snorted, and a tremendous pressure descended upon Fang Yan's head. When facing the Emperor, why didn't you bow? A mortal couldn't withstand the pressure of a cultivator. Fang Yan fell to the ground with a thud. Unable to move under the immense pressure, he shouted angrily while keeping his head pressed against the ground, this is unreasonable. Is this how the Xianqin dynasty treats envoys from foreign countries? I advise you to be more polite, the female cultivator said, and the pressure increased once again. Otherwise, I don't mind replacing the envoy from the Lingkai dynasty. It wasn't until the envoy had suffered enough that Ying Xianqiu stepped forward and played the role of the peacemaker. All right, Xiaoxiu, we must not neglect the envoy from a foreign country. With the pressure lifted, Fang Yan became much more obedient and no longer carried himself with arrogance. Why did the Lingkai Emperor send you here? Your Majesty, I have come to persuade you to surrender. After listening, Ying Xianxiu smiled instead of getting angry. I'd like to hear how he plans to persuade me. Seeing this, Fang Yan took out an imperial decree from his pocket and cleared his throat. By the decree of the Lingkai Emperor, it is stated, our dynasty has gathered a million troops, hundreds of golden core cultivators, and twelve nascent soul cultivators. Yesterday, we captured Fengyong City after fierce resistance, and in response, we slaughtered the city for a day. Tomorrow at noon, our army will arrive at the gates of Rongyang City. From then on, in an instant, another city will turn to ashes. If the Xianqin Emperor is merciful, he can cede thirty cities, including Rongyang City, to our dynasty. All the people in the city must be handed over and not a single person can leave. If the Emperor insists on seeking death, then wait for our Lingkai army to crush your mountains and rivers. After reading the letter, the generals present were furious, their eyes bloodshot. It was a matter of honor and death for the ruler and his subjects. Not only had they lost a city and caused the people to suffer, but the empress had also been humiliated. These proud and strong soldiers were all filled with anger. Your Majesty, we cannot surrender. Your Majesty, I am willing to be the vanguard and fight to the death. Your Majesty, our dynasty has a large army and many generals. At this moment, there are still 400,000 elite soldiers in Rongyang City. We can fight. You see, these generals of mine have followed the late emperor on countless campaigns, and they are all brave and fearless. They have never surrendered. Go back and tell your emperor that I am waiting for him here in Rongyang City. If he wants something, he can come and take it himself. Get out. Leave now. After the angry generals had their say, they kicked and punched Fang Yan, driving him out of the hall. Not long after Fang Yan left, five rays of light descended into the courtyard of the palace. They were the five nascent soul cultivators of the Xianqin dynasty. Including Xiaoxiu by Ying Xianqiu's side, there were six nascent soul cultivators in total. Upon seeing the nascent soul cultivators, Ying Xianqiu no longer maintained his aloofness and stood up to greet them. Senior Zhang Pu and all the other cultivators, thank you for your efforts. The leader of the elderly is Zhang Pu, the oldest in the Xianqin dynasty. Seeing Ying Xianqiu being so polite, Zheng Pu quickly bowed to Ying Xianqiu and said, Your Majesty is too kind. We, the officials, enjoy Your Majesty's salary on weekdays. Now that it's a critical moment, we naturally have to share Your Majesty's worries. The extremely Yuan Ying behind him also nodded repeatedly. Then, it was time for tense pre-war preparations. 
The generals gathered together to discuss the formation, the cultivators team patrolled around the city walls, inspecting the damage to the city defense formation. There were also civil officials in charge of counting the total amount of various supplies. In just two hours, time quickly passed. Your Majesty, this is the most feasible plan after our discussion. Before engaging the enemy, our army will first set up defensive crossbows to consume the enemy's forces. When the enemy arrives, our army will then set up defensive barriers to give the enemy the illusion that we want to defend to the death. Then, when we see that their siege crossbows are slack, we will quickly remove the barriers and launch a full-scale attack, directly targeting the enemy's central camp. Seeing the specific plan, Ying Chenxiu rubbed his forehead and said, just like that, you go and arrange it. This surprising move was obviously due to the huge disparity in strength between the two sides. The enemy could easily hold off our top combat power with six Yuan Ying, while the remaining four Yuan Ying attacked the city and hunted down the army. Unrestricted Yuan Ying was a real battlefield meat grinder. With just one move, they could sweep away a large area of the battlefield. He looked up at the southern sky. It had been a whole day since Xiao Qing was sent to Anan City. He didn't know if Xiao Qing had successfully delivered the message. However, until noon, the person they were waiting for still hadn't arrived. Rongyang City had entered a state of total war. Ying Xianxiu and Xin Xingxue sat together on the floating imperial carriage behind the city wall. On the city wall, rows of heavy crossbows were arranged in a menacing manner, while inside the city, the Xianqin army was ready and waiting, only waiting for the command of the generals to charge into the enemy's formation. Soon, the heavy sound of horse hooves came closer and closer, and a black tide-like army appeared at the end of the plain. They're here. The black tide was entirely composed of cavalry. Although it seemed far away, it was rapidly approaching within a few breaths. Soon, it entered the attack range of the city's defensive crossbows. Prepare, fire. Hundreds of crossbow arrows carrying explosive talismans were shot out by the powerful bowstrings, creating a buzzing sound in the air. Crossbows, defend. Dozens of golden core cultivators in the forefront of the cavalry flew up, fully unleashing their spiritual energy. A large number of crossbow arrows exploded on the surface of their spiritual energy shields, occasionally a few stray arrows fell into the army, piercing through the bodies of several heavily armored cavalry, and then exploded, engulfing dozens of heavily armored cavalry around them. After another round of arrow fire, the vanguard troops almost reached the city. Prepare, set up the barrier. Yun Shifei flew up to the city wall, clapping her hands, and a powerful surge of spiritual energy enveloped the entire vanguard troops, instantly causing chaos and countless soldiers to be crushed into a pile of mud. At the same time, Zhang Pu led another Yuan Ying to infuse spiritual energy into the defensive barrier. Unexpectedly, a sharp sword stabbed into Zhang Pu's lower back and pierced out of his dantian. Another Yuan Ying beside him was also shocked and was about to push away, but his abdomen was shattered by a palm strike. Zhang Pu's Yuan Ying dodged the fatal blow, broke free from his body, and quickly fled towards the other Yuan Ying, saying, Lu Qin, how dare you betray his majesty? Lu Qin heard this and looked up to the sky, shouting, I'm not like you, sacrificing all my future for a mere dynasty. In the next moment, Lu Qin no longer pursued Zheng Pu's Yuan Ying, but instead rushed towards the floating imperial carriage behind the city wall. Your majesty, I'm going to use your head to fight for the glory of the new dynasty. Lu Qin sneered, and a cold light flashed in his long sword. Do you dare? The speed between Yuan Ying was almost the same. In just a few steps, it was only an instant, let alone the fact that Yun Shifei was currently on the city wall and couldn't defend in time in the next moment, a light ball fell on the imperial carriage, quickly expanding into a huge grid-like light ball. Lu Qin's sword light, which had the power of a golden pill, was enough to take the head of an ordinary person, but at this moment, it fell on the light ball like a piece of paper, without any reaction. Hey, if you kill my employer, who am I going to ask for money? A lazy voice came from above. Damn it! The sudden appearance of the young man blocked this crucial blow, making it impossible to strike again. Yun Shi quickly defended and launched a full force attack on Lu Qin, who desperately blocked it and then fled towards the enemy camp outside the city without looking back. Yun Shi did not dare to chase after him alone, but instead brought another infant sacrifice and fully activated the defensive formation of Rongyang City. Xin Qingxue on the imperial carriage saw the young man in white standing in midair and thought of the extremely perfunctory reply from someone last time, making her even more angry. Zhao Gongzi, I've been waiting for you for so long. Zhao Chen smiled awkwardly, President Shen, what are you saying? I knew you were in danger, so I rushed over immediately. However, Ying Xianqiu did not act as casually as Xin Qingxue, but stood up solemnly, Zhao Venerable, I've heard so much about you. Seeing Zhao Chen's slight confusion, Xin Qingxue quickly introduced, 
This is my close friend, the current empress of the Xianqin dynasty, Ying Xianqiu. Zhao Qin then returned the greeting, so you are your majesty, it's an honor to meet you for the first time. Boom boom boom. Just as the two were about to continue their conversation, three loud noises rang out. The army outside the city did not wait, they had already set up five heavy crossbows and began bombarding the defensive barrier of the city. Xin Xingxua recognized the appearance of the five heavy crossbows and her face turned pale, no good, these are Xianling heavy crossbows, low-grade treasures. Xianling heavy crossbows, as the top-notch siege weapons, although they were complex to operate and consumed a lot of resources, each shot had the power to rival the nascent soul stage. Just three attacks from the heavy crossbows made Yun sure and the other infant sacrifice pale, clearly at a disadvantage. At this rate, it was feared that the barrier would not last for the time it takes to burn an incense stick. Zhao Venerable, I have always heard of your great supernatural powers, Ying Chencho looked at Zhao Qin who was standing in midair, we don't beat around the bush, let's talk about the price. Your majesty, straightforward. Zhao Chen's mouth visibly curled up when he heard this, but different levels have different prices. Ying Chencho frowned slightly, what do you mean? If your majesty only wants to repel the enemy and protect Rongyang city, it will cost 50 million medium-grade spirit stones. If your majesty is a bit greedy and wants to sacrifice this million-strong army, it will cost 100 million medium-grade spirit stones. To dare to say sacrificing a million-strong army so casually, even Ying Chenxiu was shocked by this audacity. Zhao Venerable, what if I give you 2 billion, what can you do? Ying Chenxiu looked at Zhao Chun, curious for a moment. 2 billion spirit stones were not a small amount no matter where they were placed, and it was the largest amount that could be taken out without causing any harm. As far as I know, your majesty has a city that was recently massacred. So, you can choose one of the opening cities, and I will avenge the massacre for your majesty, how about that? Hearing this, Ying Chenxiu frowned, Zhao Venerable, what if I choose the capital city? Zhao Chen's smile remained bright, your majesty, rest assured, as I said, you can choose any city, completely flatten it, and turn it into ashes. Opening the spirit has always been a major problem for Xianqin, and it is also the biggest obstacle to Xuanqin's rise today. If we can really destroy the imperial capital at its center, its strategic significance is far greater than capturing the border cities. Just the comprehensive war with the opening of the spirit would consume astronomical military expenses, let alone pushing it to the center of the imperial capital. With Xuanqin's temporary empty treasury, exchanging 200 million spirit stones for the elite of the opening of the spirit to be completely destroyed and unable to recover. This deal is not a loss. It's even quite cost-effective. Zhao Chen's words have definitely reached this point, and Ying Chenqiu naturally won't hesitate, then, of course, I choose the trade of 200 million spirit stones. Zhao Venerable, may we have a pleasant cooperation. Naturally. With the deal confirmed, Zhao Chen appeared indifferent on the surface, but in his heart, he was already soaring in excitement. 200 million spirit stones. This is 200 million spirit stones. Enough to last for a long time. During the time they were discussing the price, the Shenling heavy crossbows launched three rounds of attacks. At this moment, the city's defense formation was on the verge of collapse, and Yunshur, who maintained the barrier, had bloodstains on the corners of her mouth. Just when the enemy camp outside was rejoicing, they discovered something abnormal. The sky darkened. The midday sun disappeared, and a huge island made of steel slowly broke through the clouds and descended upon the entire Rongyang city. The area of this island was even more than 30 times that of the entire Rongyang city. What, what is this? Heavens, it's getting dark. At this moment, in the rear of the opening of the spirit army formation, the 12 nascent soul experts who were stationed here looked at each other, all stunned in place, not daring to move. Lu Qin, who had just defected, had an ugly expression on his face. Not only was it like this outside the city, but the army inside the city also became restless because of this strange scene. Your majesty, please don't panic. This is just a little toy of mine. Zhao Qin had already sat in the central position of the imperial carriage at some point, with Xin Xingxue on his left and Ying Xianqiu on his right. Ying Xianqiu was completely shocked by this overwhelming supernatural power and completely ignored Zhao Qin's rude behavior. As for Xin Xingxue, she was also astonished at this moment, is this a magical tool? Or a spiritual tool? Something is coming down. In the central army formation of the opening of the spirit, sharp-eyed foundation establishment cultivators were the first to notice the anomaly. Fifty black dots fell from the sky island, and it wasn't until they were close to the ground that everyone could see that they were huge square boxes, one after another. Judging from the volume and falling speed of the square boxes, they should be extremely heavy, but when they were about to hit the ground, they floated down like weightless leaves. Dang, dang, dang. One by one, the cabin doors opened. 
The unique sound of the ion reactor's engine started, accompanied by the rolling of the tracks, and one after another, the Chilin breakthrough tanks slowly drove out of the anti-gravity landing pods. Boom! It wasn't until a high-explosive ion shell exploded in the enemy army formation, melting hundreds of cavalrymen along with their armor into a puddle, that the opening of the spirit army realized that the strange objects in front of them were their enemies. Archers, counterattack! The five Xianling heavy crossbows at the front slowly turned, locking onto the targets on the ground. A crossbow arrow comparable to a nascent soul shot out, and a Chilin tank exploded on the spot. Enemy anti-tank facilities, radar lock, three rounds loaded, annihilate. Before they could load the second arrow, the five Xianling heavy crossbows were directly shattered by the stabilizing armor-piercing shells of the Chilin tank cluster. The residual force of the armor-piercing shells plowed a bloody trench through the dense army formation. Commander, the heavy crossbow positions have been breached. A messenger ran to the tent and just finished reporting when he was hit by fragments from the explosion. The opening of the spirit's main general, who had experienced many battles, did not panic because of this. He continued to command calmly. Archers, retreat 15 miles and regroup. Commander, there's no time. We must stop these monsters, otherwise the archer battalion will be wiped out. After a moment of contemplation, the commander finally gave the order, Zhang Shang, lead the heavy cavalry battalion and charge. I will obey. The dense heavy cavalry moved upon hearing the command, charging out from the gaps in the archer formation. The cold armor shimmered with a chilling light, and the impact of hooves on the ground made everything around tremble. Except for the Qilin tanks. At this moment, Ying Chenxiu's heart was in his throat, and he even stood up on tiptoe to watch, disregarding his image. The heavy cavalry of the Kailing dynasty had a formidable reputation, and the Xian Qin cavalry had suffered losses in their encounters. The 200,000 armored heavy cavalry was the capital that allowed the Kailing to confront the Xian Qin for a long time, and this 50,000 strong heavy cavalry was the elite among them. Although the blocks thrown by Zhao Zuns were extremely powerful, their attack frequency was still slightly slower. Could they win against such a tide like formation of cavalry and their lightning fast speed? Charge! Zhang Sheng shouted loudly, leading the Iron Cavalry behind him to rush towards the tank cluster. Even though he didn't know the origin of these steel monsters, Zhang Sheng still had absolute confidence in the Iron Cavalry behind him. The heavy cavalry consisted of 50,000 soldiers, each one a battle-hardened Qi refinement stage warrior, with foundation establishment and golden core stage cultivators serving as officers, and all of them riding Qi refinement stage warhorses and wearing armor forged from spiritual iron. The two armies seemed far apart, but under the speed of the heavy cavalry's warhorses, it would only take about 10 breaths of time. Although the attacks of the steel blocks in front were extremely powerful, their attack speed was slightly weaker. Even if there were casualties during the charge, the glory of the heavy cavalry was still unstoppable. Just as he was thinking this, Zhang Shang saw the cold light on the steel monsters in front flicker. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. With Zhang Shang's peak golden core cultivation, he was the first to hear the sound of sharp objects breaking through the air. There are hidden weapons. Meet the enemy, he shouted, and his dazzling protective spiritual energy unfolded. Unfortunately, the other cavalry were not so lucky. The machine guns on the Chilin tank's turrets opened fire simultaneously, accompanied by the flickering of electromagnetic rails, and one high-intensity projectile after another, made of high-strength materials, shot out, weaving a row of deadly barrages on the path of the heavy cavalry charge. Swish, swish, swish. The spiritual iron armor lost its meaning under the high-speed projectiles flying towards them, and the charging cavalrymen exploded one by one, crimson flowers blooming in the dense formation. The piercing whistling of the projectiles, the brittle sound of armor shattering, the muffled sound of flesh being crushed, and the soldiers' screams of pain, all composed the most brutal symphony on the battlefield. Reform the formation, Zhang Sheng shouted loudly. The heavy cavalry did not collapse because of this sudden blow. The five Golden Core cultivators expanded the area of their protective spiritual energy to the maximum, and the surviving cavalrymen instinctively gathered behind the Golden Core leaders, who became the mobile shields of the cavalry regiment, advancing together towards the front. The dispersal of spiritual energy over a large area meant the loss of defense within the same area. The armor-piercing projectiles in the overloaded state had easily pierced through Nan Gongxiao's protective spiritual energy before, and now, with the five golden core cultivators dispersing their spiritual energy, it was already extremely difficult to block the barrage of projectiles that covered the sky and earth. Faced with an entire cluster of Chilin tanks, their fate would only be more tragic. Seeing the barrels of the steel behemoths in front light up, a sense of impending death crawled up Zhang Shang's heart. 
He felt that something was not right and withdrew all his spiritual energy back to his chest. The cavalrymen behind him were caught off guard and collided head-on with the dense barrage of projectiles, instantly turning into blood mist and falling off their horses. In the next moment, three armor-piercing projectiles accurately struck Zhang Shang's chest. The protective spiritual energy at the golden core stage was easily penetrated like a sheet of window paper. Seeing his protective spiritual energy shattered, Zhang Shang felt a sense of danger and swung his sword diagonally to block in front of his chest. The spiritual energy on the sword shimmered, and at the same time, he exerted all his strength to deflect his body. Two armor-piercing projectiles were deflected after shattering the long sword, grazing past Zhang Shang's ear, while the other one flew over from above the sword blade and hit his left shoulder it was just a slender dart-like object, not much thicker than the arrows of a city defense crossbow. With the physical strength of a golden core cultivator, it should only cause a minor penetrating injury. But unexpectedly, this dart contained an immense amount of energy. The moment it touched Zhang Shang's left shoulder, his golden core body was torn apart by brute force. Not only did his left shoulder and chest suffer heavy injuries, but his left arm was completely severed, and the broken forearm fell to the ground with a thud. Coughing up the residual blood in his lungs, Zhang Shang threw away the broken longsword in his right hand and used his spiritual energy to seal the wound. What kind of hidden weapon is this? It's terrifying. Turning his head to look beside him, five golden core cultivators were dead or injured. The military formation, which had lost the protection of the Golden Core Cultivators, didn't have time to merge with the other Golden Core Cultivators behind them and was instantly mowed down by a barrage of projectiles, claiming a large number of lives. However, the cavalry charge had no retreat. Once it began, it couldn't be stopped midway unless one side completely collapsed. In a short distance, at the cost of tens of thousands of soldiers' lives, they finally reached the end. The steel monster in front was now less than ten steps away. Heavy cavalry, follow me and kill. Just as Zhang Sheng finished shouting, the foundation establishment stage warhorse beneath him seemed to sense danger and jumped up. The chassis of the steel monster lit up with red lights, sweeping through the cavalry formation. The laser that was previously used by Zhao Qin to cut down trees in the mountains finally returned to its true purpose. The scorching light cut off the legs of the horses that it passed through. The unprepared cavalry fell to the ground, rolling forward a great distance due to the massive inertia. Some were cut to pieces by the red laser, while others were swept under the steel monster's tracks, causing the sound of shattered armor plates. Watching his elite soldiers being harvested without dignity, Zhang Shang could no longer suppress his anger. Die! Zhang Shang drew out another cleaver, and a dazzling crescent-shaped blade light slashed towards the steel monster in front of him. Finally sensing the threat from the enemy, the Qilin tank's ion shield unfolded. The stunning blade light of the golden core stage only produced a spark on the surface of the blue energy ball. Although the blue energy ball had dimmed considerably, it remained strong. To completely destroy the monster in front of him, at least three full-powered attacks from the golden core stage were needed. And there were dozens, if not hundreds, of such monsters behind it. The golden core stage. Protective spiritual energy. Seeing the ion shield, Zhan Shang finally realized that this was a charge that was destined to have no return. 50 killing machines equivalent to golden core cultivators had already locked in the victory. Then, he looked up at the sky, where dozens of black dots were slowly descending. The Kai Ling dynasty is finished. Ying Xianxiao, who had been tiptoeing the whole time, watched the entire battle in a daze as he sat on the imperial carriage. Zhao Venerable, this is not war. This is slaughter. Zhao Chen supported Ying Xianxiao's trembling hand and smiled, this is war, your majesty. This is technological warfare. On the battlefield of technology, ordinary soldiers can only die in despair. The tank's tracks rolled over the cavalry's armor, advancing towards the Kai Ling army formation. Everyone, if we don't take action now, then when? Seeing a cavalry unit completely wiped out, the Yuan Ing cultivators of the Kai Ling dynasty couldn't sit still anymore. Even if they didn't know the depth of the object in the sky, they had to make a move to test it. As 13 Yuan Ing cultivators rose into the air, a tremendous pressure covered the entire battlefield. Zhao Young Master, the Yuan Ing cultivators of the Kai Ling dynasty have made a move. Xin Xingxue, who was by his side, had unknowingly tightened her grip on her sleeve. It doesn't matter. Zhao Chen smiled and responded, hearing the voice of the Luan Bird Intelligence in his mind. Commander, detecting Yuan Ing stage cultivators, requesting saturation artillery fire to annihilate them. Since the incident of the mistaken attack on Anan City, Zhao Chen has urged Xuanxiu to quickly update the intelligence systems of the Federation. 
The updates have been effective, and the intelligences now have a thorough understanding of the cultivation world and can analyze the threat level and response strategies of cultivators on their own. Set friendly identification zone within Rongyang City. Outside the identification zone, open fire freely and grant all weapon permissions. At the same time as the nascent soul soared into the sky, beneath the steel island, square-shaped lights lit up one by one. The decks in the middle of the lights opened, revealing several deep openings, and cannon barrels slowly extended from the darkness. Geological proton impact cannon, ready for launch. Oh no, deal with the ones above first. Cultivators have a sixth sense that is different from ordinary people, and they immediately sense the ominous aura emanating from the cannon barrels. The level of killing intent on these barrels is unknown, as they have been tainted by countless killings. While the nascent soul cultivators rush towards the Luan Bird mothership, the proton impact cannon also locked onto them. It became a two-way chase between the cannonballs and the targets. Thirteen nascent soul cultivators mobilized together, and the surging spiritual energy disrupted the situation in Rongyang City. It was a rare sight to see so many powerful cultivators gathered in one place. Fortunately, they first targeted the Luan Bird mothership. If they had attacked Rongyang City at the same time, the city would have fallen within a short time. Feeling the immense pressure from the cultivators, Ying Shenxiu couldn't help but clench his fists nervously. Yun Shi stood at the edge of the imperial carriage, her protective spiritual energy surging. If the situation turned unfavorable, she would immediately break through the city's protective barrier and fight to the death. This was the first time Zhao Chen had such a close encounter with the protective spiritual energy of the nascent soul realm. Naturally, he wouldn't miss such a great opportunity. The nanobots quietly gathered into a miniature radar, hidden under the empress's skirt, analyzing the structure of Yun Shi's protective spiritual energy. However, the scanning results surprised Zhao Chen. Although there was a huge difference in combat power between the nascent soul and the golden core realms, there was no fundamental difference in the protective spiritual energy between the two. It was simply a cumulative quantitative change. Golden core cultivators had limited endurance and could only maintain a level of protective spiritual energy that ensured continuous combat. Only when they encountered a life-threatening crisis would they fully activate all their spiritual energy to protect themselves. On the other hand, when reaching the nascent soul realm, their spiritual energy became like an ocean, their divine consciousness turned into an infant, and they could mobilize even more spiritual energy than a golden core cultivator. The protective spiritual energy they condensed, with the support of a massive amount of spiritual energy, had reached the edge of a qualitative change. Of course, to achieve a true qualitative change, they would probably have to break through to the nascent divinity realm. At this moment, above Rongyang City, a nascent soul venerable figure rushed forward, heading straight for the Luan Bird mothership. He was Wan Taiha, the head of the Kai Ling dynasty's nascent soul offerings. With his late nascent soul cultivation, he had been a dominant figure in Qingzhou for hundreds of years, rarely finding opponents among the dynasties. To Wang Taiha's surprise, the attacks launched by the floating islands that gave him such a dangerous premonition seemed to have no power at all. As the golden light slowly condensed on the cannon barrels, tiny golden particles formed at the muzzle and quickly flew towards the powerful nascent soul cultivators. Seeing this, Wang Taiha couldn't help but sneer, what's the use of just speed? These tiny energy particles probably can't even break through the protective spiritual energy of a nascent soul venerable. Little did he know that this massive object, which seemed extraordinary, was just bluffing. Recalling his own intimidation by this massive object just now, Wang Taiha couldn't help but feel angry, playing tricks. With that, he waved his sleeves and unleashed an incredibly powerful palm print towards the Luan Bird mothership. The majestic spiritual energy palm print collided with the tiny particles of light protons trigger a fusion reaction as soon as they collide with the spiritual palm print. The energy generated by the fusion reaction between the spiritual energy far exceeds that of ordinary matter. In just a breath of time, the chain reaction spreads to the entire palm print. The entire spiritual palm print explodes in mid-air, releasing one after another hot golden halo. The process of fusion reaction is fast, even before the palm print has moved far from Wang Taiha. The hot golden halo comes towards him, and Wang Taiha feels the terrifying temperature contained within it. His face changes dramatically, not good. Who could have imagined that such tiny particles of light would possess such terrifying power? Unfortunately, he realizes this too late, obviously too late. A golden particle of light strikes Wang Taiha's protective spiritual energy. The density of the spiritual energy in the protective spiritual energy is even higher than that of the palm print just now, making the triggered localized chain reaction even more powerful. The terrifying high temperature and golden ripples spread out. 
Such power, even if he fully activates his protective spiritual energy, is enough to give Wang Taiha a hard time, let alone now, when the spiritual energy is the very source of this attack. Using the enemy's spiritual energy to attack the enemy itself, such a strange move has never been seen before, not to mention any countermeasures. Wang Taiha's body, without the protection of spiritual energy, is instantly engulfed by the golden ripples, and the left half of his body turns into powder. Before Wang Taiya can feel the pain of his body being crushed, another particle of light quietly arrives and engulfs his remaining body. Lu Qin had just betrayed Xin Qin, and now he is also the most diligent. He closely follows behind Wang Taiya. Now that he sees Wang Taiya's airspace explode, he is shocked and inexplicable. He just wanted to turn around, but in an instant, he is also affected by the golden ripples. The proton cannon does not give Lu Qin a chance to regret. With a scream, three golden particles of light fall on Lu Qin turning him into a golden firework. Seeing that both Yuaning powerhouses have been annihilated before their eyes, the other Yuaning still flying in the air are all horrified and turn to escape, but their speed of turning around is still slower than that of the particles of light. As each proton particle collides with the protective spiritual energy of the Yuaning, a golden smoke cloud bursts open above the allied forces' heads. These smoke clouds are born from the fall of one Yuaning after another. In the past, the Yuaning powerhouses were like meat grinders on the battlefield. With just one palm, they could flatten a large area of the battlefield. Just missing eight Yuaning powerhouses almost decided the rise and fall of a dynasty. Such powerful cultivators, at this moment, are like lambs to be slaughtered, exploding into one golden firework after another in the air. Ying Chenqiu feels his heart trembling violently. Everything happening now has already exceeded her understanding. Feeling the sideways gaze, Zhao Qin turns his head and meets Yun Shi's gaze. In her eyes, there is fear, dread, and deep shock. Seeing the last Yuaning powerhouse buried under the terrifying island's golden fire, the entire army no longer obeys the commander's orders and begins to scream and scatter. A great defeat begins. Zhao Chen's voice sounds faintly, Your Majesty, do we need to continue the slaughter? This is a million lives no. Ying Qianqiu says firmly, These people cannot be allowed to go back. Lord Zhao, if the price is not satisfactory, we can negotiate again, but the army of the Open Spirit Dynasty must be completely sacrificed under the walls of Rongyang City. Your Majesty, don't worry, Zhao will never go back on his promise, I just wanted to test Your Majesty's resolve. Zhao Chen smiles when he sees this, if Your Majesty only has compassion for women, then I will be worried about deepening our cooperation. It turns out that Ying Qianqiu gives Zhao Chen a good impression. Although she constantly claims that this is a massacre, when it comes to the crucial moment, she doesn't give the other side any chance Master Zhao, although you say so, if this million-strong army really scatters and flees. Xin Xingxiua looked at the scattered army outside the city, her eyes deep, it would be difficult to completely annihilate them. It doesn't matter. Zhao Qin picked up a cup of hot tea from the imperial carriage, not knowing if it was Xin Xingxiua's or Ying Xianxiu's, and drank it without hesitation, earning a disdainful look from Xin Xingxiua. In the next moment, accompanied by a loud rumbling sound, Ten black figures streaked across the sky above Rongyang City. Commander, Jin Wu is ready, awaiting orders. Zhao Chen smiled faintly, Chuanxiu, this time Jin Wu should be fully loaded, right? A slightly regretful voice came to his mind, I'm sorry, not yet, Captain, but it's already enough. What do you mean by enough? Zhao Chen frowned slightly. It means that it can completely crush the entire Ling army. This highly efficient war machine of the armored cluster is not something that ordinary armies in the era of cold weapons can withstand. The only reliance of the cultivation side's army to defeat the technological side's army is those extremely powerful cultivators. However, without the restraint of nascent soul cultivators, the robust physique of qi refining cultivators alone cannot withstand the scorching bullets. As the tank treads kept rolling, one killing machine after another broke into the army formation. The heavily armored cavalry at the forefront of the formation was the first to be impacted. The once invincible heavy cavalry became a joke in front of the tanks. A cavalryman tightly gripped his spear, about to charge, but saw his comrade next to him being crushed by invisible projectiles, as if a bucket of icy water was poured over his head in the middle of winter. His soaring fighting spirit instantly turned into nothingness, and his battle sword fell to the ground with a clang. Run! Run! Accompanied by a heart-wrenching cry, a major defeat of the elite cavalry began. The solemn formation became chaotic, and the coordinated attacks became disordered. The railguns on the turrets lit up time and time again, pouring out a barrage of bullets, causing a large number of cavalry to fall like harvested wheat. Finally, under the onslaught of the armored cluster, the vanguard cavalry completely collapsed. Their morale and fighting spirit had been completely destroyed by the dense bullets. 
They turned their horses around one after another, leaving behind a massive amount of armor, weapons, and corpses. Only lonely horses remained on the battlefield, standing helplessly in place, staring blankly as the treads rolled past them. Don't retreat! Don't retreat! Where is the command team? Push forward! The commanding general of the Ling army knew very well the principle that a defeated army is like a collapsing mountain. He was hysterically commanding in the central military tent, but unfortunately, the command team in the rear was unable to reach the front lines at this moment. After all, no one would have expected that the elite heavy cavalry would also have a day of fleeing. The troops in the central army only saw the scene of nascent soul cultivators falling, and they had no idea what had happened in the front line. They were being urged forward by the command team behind them. It was at this moment of panic that a commotion came from the front line. The fleeing heavily armored cavalry surged forward like a tide. Even though many cavalry had already taken off their armor, the armor on their warhorses couldn't be removed in time. The warhorses charged with all their might, carrying the heavy armor, and crashed into the slowly advancing Central Army formation, causing countless casualties. In the chaos, a personal guard of the commanding general rushed into the formation, General, please let me escort you to retreat first. The situation of the defeated army is already set. Inside Rongyang City, watching this situation, Ying Chencho couldn't help but frown, Master Zhao, it might not be easy to deal with the scattered army on the plains. Ying Chencho was afraid of letting them go. Zhao Chen sighed and then smiled faintly, it's alright. As soon as he finished speaking, two Jinwu aircraft broke away from the bomber formation, circled around the periphery of the dispersing army formation, and dropped incendiary bombs along the way. The black dots in the sky connected end to end, forming a visible long chain. At this moment, the rear army of the Ling army turned into the vanguard of a major retreat to foundation building guards escorted the leading general, who was riding ahead. The once prestigious and elite spirit iron armor, representing the elite guards, had been discarded on the ground to reduce weight. The leading general no longer cared about honor and dignity, repeatedly whipping the horse with the reins in his hand, galloping towards the vast plain. Commander, be careful! Suddenly, a guard shouted. The leading general followed the guard's gaze and saw a dark shadow flying overhead, accompanied by falling black dots. Although they didn't know what those black dots were, the two foundation building cultivators beside him felt a sense of danger. Fear flashed in their eyes as they tightly pulled the reins, trying to stop their warhorses immediately. But how could a charging warhorse be stopped so easily? In despair, the three warhorses charged directly beneath the black dots, and sharp sounds of breaking through the air rang out overhead. Boom, boom, boom. One huge fireball after another exploded, followed by a massive wall of fire rising from the ground. The black-orange flames mixed with toxic smoke, trapping the fleeing army within a huge ring of fire. Seeing the leading general and the two guards being engulfed by flames in an instant, and feeling the terrifying heat rushing towards them, the soldiers hurriedly stopped in their tracks. However, the heavily armored cavalry behind them did not stop in time like the infantry. The heavy iron hooves trampled forward, causing another disaster. With the encirclement formed by the towering wall of fire created by incendiary bombs, the army of the Ling army was completely trapped and became like lambs to the slaughter. Zhao Qin originally wanted to continue dropping incendiary bombs, but he was gently tugged at the corner of his clothes by Ying Chenxiu. Zhao Venerable, I have an unpleasant request. Zhao Qin looked at Ying Chenxiu, a playful smile appearing on his lips. Could it be? Is he showing mercy? Is he about to plead with me? The heavy cavalry of the Ling army uses spirit iron, which is extremely precious. It would be a pity to bury it in the sea of fire. I wonder if Zhao Venerable can use a different, um, method. Zhao Chen was clearly taken aback by such a request. It doesn't matter if the spirit iron is broken. Our dynasty still has the technology for recasting and forging. But if the spirit iron melts under normal conditions, it will be completely useless. Zhao Chen's lips twitched. Goodness, there are quite a few living bodhisattvas but this is the first time he has seen a living king of hell. It's not difficult, but you owe me another favor. Zhao Chen nodded slightly, then ordered the waiting flock of golden crows in the air, golden crows, switch to fragmentation personnel killing bombs and cover the entire area. Golden crows received, fragmentation personnel killing bombs are being deployed. In the air above the trapped army in the sea of fire, the air began to distort and fluctuate due to the scorching high temperature. Among the blurry sky and clouds, some soldiers of the Ling army witnessed eight dark figures. The fleeing army had already lost all their anti-aircraft measures, and the flock of golden crows had also deactivated their optical camouflage, no longer lingering at an altitude of 10,000 meters. Instead, they directly exposed themselves in front of the Ling army, sprinkling large black dots evenly above their heads. 
The dense black dots fell rapidly, unfolding into huge umbrellas several tens of meters above the army's formation, slowly suspending in the air. What is this again? Shoot it down. Where are the archers? Shoot it down quickly. They had already witnessed too many extraordinary scenes today, and the Ling soldiers had become extremely fearful. Any slight abnormality would plunge them into continuous fear, and their fear proved to be justified. The next moment, the suspended black projectiles exploded in midair, raining down a dense shower of steel needles, turning into a deadly iron rain that fell into the army's formation. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Under the explosive force, each sharp steel needle possessed terrifying speed, piercing through armor, flesh, and bone, and then deeply embedding themselves in the sandy ground the retreating soldiers within the range of the shrapnel were falling like wheat, leaving behind circular areas stained red with blood. As the floating shrapnel exploded one after another in midair, a torrential rain of death poured down, announcing the painful consequences of defeat. Soon, in the time it takes to burn an incense stick, the Golden Crow bomber had dropped a total of five rounds of shrapnel, and the shrapnel rain in airburst mode left no dead angles, sweeping every area of the battlefield. The Tianing Chinshio's hand had long gone cold, but she still held onto the teacup, staring intently at the battlefield outside the city, with a look of being lost in thought. Zhao Chen had stood up from the imperial carriage and lazily clapped his hands. Your Majesty, it was a pleasure working with you. After speaking, Zhao Chen turned to leave, but then turned back as if suddenly remembering something. Oh, by the way, your majesty, remember to send someone to clean up the battlefield later and bring me the storage rings of those several nascent soul cultivators sitting on the rooftop of a house in the Rongyang City Palace, Zhao Chen looked up at the starry sky. Captain, this time dealing with the Ling army, I used up half of the reserve ammunition I prepared. Unfortunately, Captain hasn't even obtained a single spirit stone yet. The voice of Chuanxiu sounded in his mind, forcing Zhao Chen to stop thinking about cosmic metaphysics. He had originally planned to discuss the matter of compensation with Empress Sing Chenxiu, but she hastily brushed it off. The reason given was that the post-war cleanup in Rongyang City was a big task, and she needed to personally take care of it. There's nothing I can do, Sister Chuanxiu. Empress Sing Chenxiu thinks that the scattered spirit armors on the ground are more important than this handsome man here. Stop calling me sister, it's disgusting. Zhao Chen no longer teased Chuanxiu and casually lifted up the tiles beside him. One tile, two tiles, three tiles, and soon a hole appeared in the roof. Below this hole, Xin Xingxua was changing clothes in the room, her exquisite figure fully exposed. TSK, what a view. Zhao Gongzi, if you want to see, why not come into the room and look openly? Xin Xingxua looked up from under the eaves and said softly, No, you don't understand. It's through this kind of peeping through a small hole that makes it particularly exciting. Zhao Chen said, leaning forward. If Zhao Gongzi wants to sit on the roof like this and bend over all night, that's fine too. Xin Xingxiu lightly nodded, changed into a thin silk nightgown, and lay on the bed, her jade body sprawled out, looking completely unconcerned. With a snap, Zhao Chen quickly appeared in the room and sat at the head of Xin Xingxiu's bed. What material is this nightgown of yours made of? I've never seen it before, let me touch it. Xin Xingxiu looked at Zhao Chen with her eyes open. You better touch the nightgown. Of course, Zhao Chen was just teasing and didn't actually do anything. According to the prompt from the terminal data, the two atomic bombs were ready, and as soon as Zhao Chen made a move, Xuanxiu would immediately send a second atomic bomb, and then send him to the second dimension. Xin Xingxiu looked at Zhao Chen's figure at the head of the bed and bit her lip. Zhao Gongzi, I'm sure you didn't come here just to study a little girl's nightgown, did you? Zhao Chen no longer beat around the bush and went straight to the point. That power secretly targeting you has quite a bit of background. Zhao Mao is a bit curious, so I came to investigate. Zhao Gongzi, it's not that I want to keep this information a secret. Xin Xingxua frowned her beautiful eyebrows. If you, as a non-allied person, know this information, it will only bring harm. Xiao Xingxue, you have to understand that so-called alliance relationships are all false, only spirit stones are eternal. Zhao Chen spoke with the tone of coaxing a child. As long as you keep giving me spirit stones, I will always be your solid support. Uh, why is Zhao Gongzi so obsessed with spirit stones? Xin Xingxue finally asked this question. Well, my ancestors have been farmers for generations, and they were always poor. Ah, uh, ignoring Xin Xingxue's bewildered expression, Zhao Chen spoke again. Besides, I have already helped you twice, and I'm afraid that person already sees me as your ally. Miss Qingxue, you wouldn't want me to die a miserable death on the streets because I don't understand the situation, right? No, this sentence is quite normal, but why does it sound so sleazy coming from Zhao Chen? Unable to comprehend what Zhao Chen was saying, Xin Qingxue pondered for a moment before speaking, I come from the Chamber of Commerce, and the person targeting me is my brother, 
the current young master of the Chamber of Commerce, Xin Qingheng, Zhao Chen suddenly interjected, Stop, let me guess, when it's time for your Chamber of Commerce to decide on the successor, your father wants to cultivate Gu, so he released all of you to see which one of you can manage a business association the best, and that person will be the future leader of the Chamber of Commerce, right? And among your siblings, your brother has the strongest influence and the most supporters, but he is wary of your development and has been targeting you, is that correct? Zhao Chen, you truly are clever, Xin Qingxue admired as she glanced at Zhao Chen. I wonder how you would handle a situation like mine. If it were me in this situation, it would be easy. Zhao Chen pondered for a moment. Xin Qingxue disregarded the revealing nature of her thin silk nightgown and sat up straight. Please, Zhao Chen, go on. I would arrange to meet my brother at the Xuanwu Gate, then I would kill him with a single sword strike and bring his head to my father. Xin Qingxue's mouth twitched. Zhao Chen, although my brother is several decades older than you, he is currently in the nascent soul realm, and he has many skilled guards around him. It would be difficult to kill him. Zhao Chen nodded. Indeed, with so many skilled individuals, it would be challenging to leave with his head intact. Zhao Chen, how can you calmly say such terrifying things? Suddenly, accompanied by a creaking sound, the door to the room was pushed open, and a fragrant breeze blew in as Zhao Chen felt a soft body rush into his embrace. Xing Xue, I'm so tired today. Sensing something amiss, Emperor Ying Qianxiu looked up and locked eyes with Zhao Chen. The words he was about to say abruptly stopped, and a blush quickly spread across his cheeks. Looking at the beauty who had collided into his arms, Zhao Chen's first reaction was, how delightful. His second reaction was, if you two don't have an affair, I'll eat the shiwa. Ying Qianxiu, after all, was not an ordinary naive girl. In the midst of embarrassment, she quickly pushed him away, straightened her attire, and adjusted her expression. Zhao Zuns, I didn't expect you to appear here in the middle of the night. It was impolite of me. Xin Qing Xue, who was enjoying the spectacle behind them, finally spoke up. Zhao Chen came to ask me some questions. I didn't expect your majesty to run into us. Zhao Chen took a deep breath, as if savoring the fragrance from earlier. Is the empress trying to negotiate with me by embracing me in the middle of the night? There's no need for that. My embrace is not worth that many spirit stones. If Zhao Zuns likes it, you can embrace me a few more times, Ying Qianxiu smiled and shook her head, regaining her composure and confidence as a ruler. Today, I was busy with post-event work and neglected my esteemed guest. I wonder if Zhao Zuns would be willing to depart tomorrow and accompany me to the imperial capital to discuss future matters? Zhao Qin pondered for a moment, considering that he had no other pressing matters recently, and nodded. That's fine. I also have some matters to discuss with your majesty. Having obtained the answer from Xin Qingxue and dealt with the sudden arrival of Ying Qianxiu, Zhao Chen looked at the two beauties in the room and smiled faintly. This night spring night is truly precious. I won't disturb you any longer. Goodbye. The next morning, there was no grand farewell ceremony or magnificent procession. Empress Xin Qin traveled lightly and returned to the imperial capital. Soon, rumors spread throughout the city of Xin Qin. Have you heard? A strange handsome man has arrived at the Phoenix Perch Palace. It is said that the venerable Zhao, who lifted the siege of Rongyang City, is going to be married to his majesty. I heard that in order to make the handsome Zhao laugh, his majesty ordered the entire imperial garden to be leveled for the enjoyment of the venerable Zhao. Oh, you guys are outdated. I heard that recently his majesty has been appearing at court with a rosy complexion and signs of fatigue. Yesterday, a servant found a child in the palace who bears a striking resemblance to his majesty and the venerable Zhao. Hey, that's outrageous. It's only been a few days and a child has already appeared. Zhao Chen's perspective, today is an extraordinary day. As the legitimate son of the Zhao family, I am accompanying my grandfather on a visit to the Shihao. It's tiring to be with my grandfather, as I have to constantly watch my words, posture, and behavior. Fortunately, the scenery along the way is very fascinating, the magnificent Third Star Harbor, the towering boarding cabins, the spectacular Shihao, and the diverse people. Finally, we arrive at the Shihao but it's not as interesting as I imagined. There are only a few officials accompanying my grandfather for the inspection. There are also children in the entourage, but I don't know any of them. Due to my family background, my grandfather doesn't allow me to establish friendships with children of ordinary status. Only the legitimate sons of a few major families can interact with me. Watching my grandfather and several officials discussing matters related to warships, it seems that their conversation won't end soon. While my grandfather is not paying attention to me, why not find something interesting? I think to myself and run towards a corridor on the side of the hall. Because of my short stature, the attendants don't notice me. I continue forward, amazed by the various sights along the way. 
It seems that my aesthetic taste was already formed at that time. Whether it's the corridors paved with metal, the orderly and sturdy pipes, or the intricate and sophisticated instruments, they all please my eyes. Soon, a huge space resembling a station appears at the end of the corridor. It's a train. Since I can remember, I have always traveled by my family's plane, escorted by federal fighter jets along the way. This kind of railway train has always been a dream I wanted to experience. The train I've been yearning for stops on the tracks, with its streamlined body and shiny metal shell, making me excited. I sit on one side near the door and notice a huge metal panel with place names I can't understand. Will my grandfather scold me for this? A bad premonition arises in my heart, but it is quickly overwhelmed by my desire to experience the train. I press a unfamiliar place name. With a slight buzzing sound, the train starts, and I feel a powerful force pressing me against the seat. Soon, I'm no longer satisfied with sitting in my seat. I stand up and lean against the window, watching the tunnel recede. Suddenly, a piercing sound rings out. I try to cover my ears, but a tremendous force pulls me towards the direction of travel, and I crash into the wall of the carriage with a loud bang. The train suddenly stops. It hurts, my head hurts. I hold my head and sit on the ground, feeling a burning pain on my forehead. When I look at my hand, it's sticky and covered in red. Are you okay, little child? A gentle female voice suddenly sounds on the train. I immediately stand up and scan the surroundings, searching for a place where a big sister could be hiding on the train. Don't bother looking, I'm not on the train. Little child, it's very dangerous to not fasten your seatbelt on a train. So that black strap on the seat is called a seatbelt. It seems to prevent people from crashing into the walls. Our family's plane doesn't have such a thing, and it wouldn't suddenly crash into a wall. Trains are scary, but also fun. Little child, what's your name and how old are you? The gentle female voice continues to ask. My name is Zhao Chen, and I'm eight years old. I answered truthfully, then changed hands to cover my forehead, because the other hand was completely covered in blood. Sorry, it was my negligence this time. My system is under maintenance, which caused the train here to suddenly stop. So it was you. I immediately glared at the speaker in the carriage. Don't be angry, Xiaochen, the gentle female voice said again, you sit back in your seat first, fasten your seatbelt, and I'll take you to the bridge. There is the most advanced medical cabin here. I know about the medical cabin, we have one at home. I used it when I injured my knee, just stayed inside and beep, the injury was healed. As for what this bridge is, I don't quite understand. Although I was very angry at her behavior, I seemed to have no resistance to this gentle voice. Under her guidance, I fastened my seatbelt and waited for the train to reach its destination. Chirp accompanied by the slow opening of the carriage door, the gentle voice sounded again, Xiaochun, we're here. After you come out, go straight ahead, I will open the door for you. Following her instructions, I arrived at Shihao's bridge. Opening the door, a holographic figure appeared in front of me. Ah! I exclaimed, immediately covering my eyes, why aren't you wearing clothes? I am an artificial intelligence, why should I wear clothes? The gentle voice retorted. I secretly opened a gap between my fingers and looked at her figure. Nonsense, you are clearly a girl, girls can't not wear clothes. Before I could finish speaking, liquid flowed onto my hand covering my eyes, and blood continued to flow from my forehead. Alright, alright, go to the medical cabin and treat yourself first. The capsule-shaped door beside me slowly opened, indicating for me to enter. I looked at the holographic projection next to me, feeling a bit embarrassed, but the throbbing pain on my forehead kept urging me. Finally, under the torment of the pain, I gave up the so-called sense of shame. Under the gaze of gentle sister, I stripped myself naked and then entered the cabin. The warm light shone on my whole body, and the place where my head hurt just now felt a bit itchy, making me want to scratch it. Just as I was about to reach out, I heard the voice of that sister, Don't scratch, the wound is healing. Strange, how can she see everything? Soon, the medical cabin reminded me that the treatment was complete. I crawled out of the medical cabin and immediately put on the clothes on the ground. Looking up at her, she had already changed into an elegant white dress, adorned with purple patterns in just the right places, appearing fresh and elegant. The light skirt floated above her ankles like white clouds, and her light gray hair was elegantly tied up, gently swaying with her movements. On top of her gray bun was a simple and elegant hairpin, with cloud patterns and deep purple flowers, and below was a light purple moon pendant. Bright and clear eyes looked at me like two clear springs, moist lips with a slight curl, as if a sweet smile was about to overflow at any moment. My heart skipped a beat, because I had never seen such a beautiful girl before. You just used the medical cabin of my future captain, she looked at me triumphantly and said, when I say the word captain, it sounds especially sweet. Zhang? Could it be a word similar to husband? She saw me staring blankly, turned around in front of me, 
and her white dress fluttered with her movements, do you like my dress? It's, it's not bad, I said with a stiff neck. My grandfather told me that as the future heir, I must always consider my words. Criticism should not be too harsh, and praise should not be too excessive. But what I actually wanted to say was, you are the most beautiful person I have ever seen. Upon receiving my praise, she suddenly became very happy. Right, right. I've been designing for a long time, but the chief engineer never appreciates the clothes I design. She approached me like a cheerful little sparrow and said, look, look, isn't the pattern on this collar beautiful? Being so close to her, I could only feel my face getting hot and my heart suddenly speeding up, making up for the missed beats when we first met. Suddenly, she jumped up like a cat with its tail stepped on, saying, not good, not good, the chief engineer is coming, you need to go back quickly. I hesitated for a moment and asked, sister, what's your name? I'm called Chuenshio, she said with a smile. Can I become your future captain? I asked cautiously. I didn't know what a captain was, but I presumed it was someone important to her, and I wanted to be important to her. After my father died, my grandfather and my family suddenly became strict with me. Although I could bear it, I occasionally felt very sad. It had been a long time since I met someone as gentle to me as she was. Sure. She smiled, her eyes and eyebrows curved. If you become the captain, the medical cabin we just used won't be considered secretly used by someone else. I didn't know how I got home, it was as if I was wrapped in her white dress, floating in soft clouds, feeling intoxicated. Grandfather, I want to become a captain. When my grandfather heard my words, he clearly paused. He turned to look at me. I want to become Chuenchio's captain. Chuenchio? My grandfather furrowed his brows in confusion, then unfolded them in surprise. You're talking about the Shihua battleship, right? This was the first time I became interested in military matters, and my grandfather's delight was evident. Good. This is the seat of our Zhao family. As long as you work hard enough, grandfather will definitely send you to that position. Great. I smiled happily, but I emphasized, not Shihua, but Chuenchio's captain. Chuenchio's perspective, every time I wake up from the darkness, a large amount of data floods into my mind, and the world changes from black to colorful. I know it's the chief engineer who awakened me. Chief engineer is the person who created me. In the information I've accessed, people generally call the man who created them father, but when I call the chief engineer that, he gets angry. He says I'm an artificial intelligence and I belong to the federation. I hate that term. Today, the chief engineer gave me a day off, no need to test various functions. Probably because someone is inspecting Shihua today, and I'm always clumsy, afraid I'll cause trouble. But I still want to try. Today, let's practice controlling the traffic pipeline. As long as I do well, the chief engineer will be happy, right? Unfortunately, I failed again. Not only that, I accidentally injured a child. Although he forgot to fasten his seatbelt, it's still my responsibility. Xiao Chen is interesting. He's different from the chief engineer and other researchers. As soon as he arrived on the bridge, he covered his eyes and said things like girls shouldn't be naked. He sees me as a girl. That's nice. I secretly used the captain's exclusive medical cabin to heal his injuries. Although it's not right, the future captain won't know, right? Xiao Chen praised the clothes I designed. I showed them to the chief engineer before, but they never seemed interested. Only Xiao Chen praised my clothes. The chief engineer is coming. I have to send him back. This guy suddenly said he wants to be my captain. I don't know why, but I feel very happy. If he's my captain, does that mean I won't be considered misusing the medical cabin? Can I design many clothes for him? Yes, design clothes. I can design a captain's uniform for him. When he entered the medical cabin earlier, I already recorded his body data. A day passes quickly for me. The holiday is over, and I have to cooperate with the chief engineer again. He's very angry today. Xuanxiao, perhaps we made you too perfect. You have emotions, self-awareness, and even your own hobbies. So you started slacking off, you started being lazy, and you didn't care about your job. You are the intelligent core of this warship, if you make a mistake, one day, you will be the one to kill your captain. I was stunned. Kill. My captain? I thought of Xiaochen. Would I kill him? I hate this kind of thing. My world still occasionally falls into darkness, occasionally regaining light. When I fall into darkness, the chief engineer is treating me, making me more perfect. And during the bright times, I train and design the captain's uniform for Shaochen. Gradually, I am no longer a reckless artificial intelligence, but the most outstanding shipborne corps. In the star battle simulation, I easily defeated hundreds of warships composed of intelligent forces. This way, I can protect Shaochen, right? I wonder how he's doing. The chief engineer came to see me again, his tone was gentle this time, saying it was the last time he would see me, 
and that he would hand me over to the space army. He said a lot to me, and then turned and left. Goodbye, father, I said. His shoulders trembled, he didn't look back at me, but my camera had no blind spots, I clearly saw him crying. The next day, with an indescribable mood, I looked forward to the first crew member, the captain, boarding the ship. If possible, I really want to hack into the port's cameras and see who the captain is. It's easy for me, but the chief engineer just left, and I don't want to break the rules and make him sad. Soon, an access card touched the information slot at the ship's door. If it's confirmed to be the captain's access card, I will open the door for him. Beep, information being read, Captain Shea, codename XH001, welcome aboard. Mr. Zhao Chen. When I saw Xiao Chen appear in the monitoring area for the first time, my excitement was overshadowed by another emotion. Xiao Chen has grown up. He has become tall and handsome. I forgot, children grow up. But I have been designing for him all this time. What about the outfit he wore when he was eight? I watched him come to the bridge door, then took something out of his suitcase. It was a set of pure white dress. It was the one I showed him before. This guy actually had a tailor make a physical dress. Xuanxiu, this is a gift for you, he smiled, then scratched his head, long time no see. Xiaochen, long time no see. Captain, wake up. A gentle female voice sounded, waking Zhao Chen from his sleep. Captain, you are currently earning precious 2 billion spirit stones for me. Sleeping in is not allowed. Please adjust your attitude. Just as he woke up, the slightly annoyed voice of Chuanxiu echoed in his mind, as if she didn't say those gentle words that woke him up just now. Zhao Chen rubbed his eyes. Hey, where did you hide that gentle Chuanxiu? Chuanxiu playfully laughed. I hit her. Oh, if the captain behaves well, I might consider letting her make a limited time appearance. All right, then I'll work hard. Zhao Chen pretended to be helpless, controlling the nanobots on his body, quickly tidying up his instruments and robes, and walked towards the back garden of Fingchi Palace. At this moment, outside the back garden of Fingchi Palace, there were rows of heavily guarded soldiers, as well as Yun Shur and another Yuan Ng elder guarding the area. Since Yun Shur was present, it meant that Ng Qianqiu must be inside. Thinking this, Zhao Chen stepped into the courtyard and indeed saw Ng Qianqiu's figure. She was leaning next to a missile module, curiously exploring something. Ahem. Zhao Chen coughed loudly twice, and Ng Qianqiu finally reacted, immediately transforming back into the dignified and solemn empress. Is Zhao Zun's planning to use these to destroy the imperial capital of the Ling dynasty? In this vast world of cultivation, the concept of missiles has never appeared before, and a hint of doubt arises in Ng Qianqiu's heart. There are a total of 12 cylindrical objects called missiles in the room. They are chubby and round, neatly placed on the shelf, giving a sense of cuteness, without any hint of threat. Rest assured, this is a treasure called Dongfeng. Once the target is determined, unleashing this object can instantly bring devastation and destruction for miles. Zhao Chen's tone is full of confidence. If your majesty is ready, I can activate the magic weapon at any time. Ying Qianqiu frowned and asked, Venerable Zhao, this mission is to destroy an entire city, and there are many civilians in the city. Do you have any psychological burden or potential inner demons because of this? What do I have to do with the civilians in the city? Zhao Chen sneered, besides, who said anything about innocence? Your majesty, let me ask you. If the Xianqin dynasty is destroyed, these vast territories, resources, wealth, and the prosperity brought by the annexation of the Kaling dynasty, will only benefit the ruling class? Zhao Chen stared into Ying Qianqiu's eyes, his gaze so cold that Ying Qianqiu felt a sense of unfamiliarity. Once the aggression is successful, the aggressor country will enjoy the benefits stained with blood. And once the aggression fails, so-called innocent people will appear. Only a few scapegoats will be punished, how ridiculous. Most of the time, Zhao Chen is always carefree and playful, but only when he is serious like this, Ying Chenxiu realizes that the person in front of him is a ruthless individual who has killed 13 nascent soul cultivators and annihilated a million soldiers. Since the other party has already initiated the aggression, the scale and intensity of the war are no longer bound by any moral constraints. To counterattack, the enemy country, tit for tat, is the only way for the aggressed to regain their dignity. As a martially virtuous federal soldier, Zhao Chen naturally has his own code of conduct. Just a few accusations of massacre and innocence cannot influence Zhao Chen's decision at all. I was originally worried that this action would bring bad karma to Venerable Zhao's cultivation path, Ying Shenzhou took a deep breath, but now it seems that Venerable Zhao's vision and perspective are far beyond ordinary people. If Venerable Zhao is so decisive, wouldn't it be a joke if I still hesitate? Tonight at midnight, please activate the magic weapon, Venerable Zhou. Upon hearing this, Zhao Chen was also taken aback. Midnight? Why choose the late night? What is your majesty's intention? Ying Qianqiu blinked. During the day, 
People are always busy running around, but at night, they should all be sleeping in the city, right? It would be better to catch them all at once during this time, wouldn't it? Wow, this is really like the Lord of the Underworld, isn't it? Zhao Chen sighed, suddenly remembering something that Chuanxiu had been reminding him about. Your Majesty, I mentioned before. About the matter of blood essence, please don't forget. Upon hearing this, a hint of indescribable emotion flashed in Ying Chenqiu's eyes, then he turned and left. I await your majesty's good news. Zhao Chen smiled and turned back to the side hall. At this moment, the Xianqin dynasty had just defeated the Kaling army and reclaimed the devastated city. It was a time of recovery and reconstruction. However, a strange decree was issued from the Phoenix Perching Palace, spreading to the major cities of the Xianqin dynasty. By the decree of the heavens chosen, the great emperor of Xianqin, all cultivators belonging to the Xianqin dynasty must immediately go to the city lord's mansion of each city and offer a drop of blood essence. Cultivators who do not belong to the dynasty can also offer a drop of blood essence in exchange for a medium grade spirit stone. Although blood essence is precious to cultivators, just one drop is far from being a serious sacrifice. Coupled with the generous reward of a medium-grade spirit stone, many cultivators went to the city lord's mansion with the mentality of not letting go of free benefits, exchanging their blood essence for rewards although this decree seems out of place among the many post-war reconstruction and military dispatch orders, as long as the reward is sufficient, many cultivators have no reason to oppose or question it. On this night, the candles still flickered in the side hall behind the phoenix perching palace. This is the place where Zhao Qinsheng lives, not only under strict guard, but also not allowing anyone to enter or leave. Of course, the emperor himself is an exception. Ying Qinqiu stepped into the side hall wearing a pair of cloud-patterned embroidered shoes and a black dress. A huge machine came into view, with a large transparent tank and a neatly arranged pipeline on one side, forming a spiral shape like a seashell, giving a sense of profound mystery. Your majesty, it's inappropriate for you to come so far. Ying Xianqiu turned his head and saw a young man in a white robe standing beside the machine, speaking polite words but without any sincere expression on his face. I dare not let the esteemed elder welcome me. Ying Xianqiu reached out and took out a storage ring. This is the collected essence blood of cultivators. Zhao Chen's eyes lit up at the words and he reached out to take it. Your majesty, you look very beautiful today. Ying Xianqiu snorted coldly and withdrew his hand holding the storage ring. You only know how to flatter me when there are benefits involved, huh? No, no. Ying Xianqiu's tone became serious, although this is a favor I owe you, I still have to ask. What is your purpose in collecting this essence blood? Will it harm the cultivators of my Xianqin dynasty? Zhao Chen suddenly smiled sinisterly at the words, of course, it is to awaken the ancient evil gods and then destroy this world. When the time comes, I will capture you and turn you into a plush ball, and then let you watch your dynasty be destroyed, he he he. Smack! The storage ring flew and hit Zhao Chen's face, and then he hurriedly caught it. Looking up, he saw a look of disdain in the eyes of the empress, I didn't ask, Zhao Elder, please don't speak like that, it tarnishes the image of the nascent soul elder. Ha, huh? shouldn't this be very villainous? Captain, is it possible that villainous and sleazy are two different things? After being sarcastically criticized by Chuanxiu, Zhao Chen finally changed his sleazy demeanor and began to focus on his research. The machine in front of Zhao Chen was the Nuo Jin module, which was currently analyzing the essence blood in the storage ring. With the experience from last time, this gene module directly excluded all mundane genes and focused on analyzing immortal genes, greatly improving efficiency. However, due to the large number of cultivators, it still took three days. After researching for a long time, Zhao Qin turned his head and found that Ying Qinxiu was still standing beside him, watching him. Your Majesty, it's getting late. But if you want to stay overnight with me, you can I remember someone saying this morning that they would use their magic weapon at night to retaliate. Tooth for tooth. Ying Qianqiao spoke leisurely. Ah, uh, sorry, I was busy and forgot for a moment. Zhao Chen smiled awkwardly, turned around, and walked towards the back garden. At this moment, in the flattened back garden, 12 Dongfeng missiles were all standing upright, ready to be launched. Your Majesty, do you know what a MIRV is? Zhao Chen smiled. There is a poem that describes the MIRV penetrating the enemy's airspace. The east wind scatters flowers in the night, and more stars fall like rain. With Zhao Chen's words, the shining tail flames soared into the sky, leaving a bright golden trail in the night sky.